Eight minutes past the hour. Welcome into the Rick and Bubba Show. The number 866 We Be Big. We start a brand new week together, and we thank you so much for joining us, making us part of your day, getting things kicked off. It's the kickoff hour. That's what that's why we call it the kickoff hour. We're kicking off things for a brand new day. Rick and Bubba join us for the main show an hour from now, as well as Adler. So we'll uh, look into this crazy world. We'll look back at a very busy weekend. Uh, that included a time change, uh, and we'll discuss that. Uh, tons of sports and a whole lot more. The number again, 866-WE-BE-BIG. Blazing Silverman, your intern today. He's got show prep ready, and he'll screen you up as well if you want to join in the conversation. Well, over to my left is Greg Burgess. To my right is Michael Helms. What's up, guys? How are you? Good. 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 Laughing because you mentioned the time change and something happened this morning, so – I uh, got out of the shower and got ready and was w- went and grabbed my things, and I, and I walked in the living room area, and Amanda's sitting there with a cup of coffee. And I said, what are you doing up? And I noticed she was gone from the bed when I got up, so I thought, well, she's either taking the dogs out or she's let, something's going on with Maddie, and she's mm-hmm. laying in there with her. Mm-hmm. And I go in there, she got her a cup of coffee. Dogs are laid around her. She got her a book. And I said, what are you doing up? And she goes, well, I mean, you know, I get up at this time anyway. I said, I leave at this time every day, and you're not you're up. She goes, well, I got an extra hour. And yeah. I said, that's one day. Yeah. One day. Yeah. Really, last night to this morning. Really I wasn't mean, it. If I go to bed at 9, right. I'd usually go to bed at 9. Mm-hmm. I know. It's no different. It's now, a, it's a one-night thing. I may feel thing. different. Yeah. Weird little, but as far as hours slept, it's the same. Yeah. Now, yeah. the first night, no. Right, right. The first night, get an extra hour sleep, and it felt weird yesterday evening. That that's that's, and then you adjust, you know. But yeah, that first night, she went to bed a little earlier than usual. That's mm-hmm. um, and I, but I, I thought, so is this gonna be my? Is this gonna be your, your new routine here? And I'm gonna, I'm my, why See can't I just last? why can't I have some coffee with you? Right, you know, it's one of those things. Yeah, kind of caught off guard by the whole thing. It did help me Saturday evening when uh, some of the uh, ball games went went a little late. Yes, uh, for me, it, it, I me mean, too. It's funny. Couldn't I, believe I was up that late. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm old now. It's like if yeah. it's nine thirty, I'm like, what Same am I way. what am I doing? Same up? way, you know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so it helped me a little bit. And then sa- Sunday morning, um, it wasn't just a church day; it was a <laughs> serve day too for for running sound and everything. And so, I, I you know you have to wake up a little early. You have to be there uh, real early for rehearsal and stuff like that to get dialed in. And I had the alarm, uh, the alarm set uh, for like six fifteen. Well, I wake up at like five fifteen, you know, and, yeah. and I'm just I'm thrown off a uh-huh. little bit, and I, and I go, oh look, I, well, I got another hour, and then I just laid there and sh- stared at the ceiling because now it was in my head, that gummit. Uh, yeah. But and then yesterday evening uh, around five twenty five, I guess uh, Central Time. Uh, we're talking Central. That's where we we are. We're in the Central Time Zone. I looked at Terry. I said, 525 right now. We're, we're watching TV, and it's just dark as yeah. 8 p.m. out there. Yeah, it was weird. And I said, yeah, it threw me off a little bit. You know, the night seemed a little longer, and then we'll get adjusted. But the first day, the yeah. first day yeah. is always weird, isn't it? Our stove it is. is the only clock that doesn't change on its own. Mm-hmm. And it threw me for a loop yeah. yesterday afternoon. I was walking by it, and I just happened to look at it, and I'm like, wait a minute. It's not that late right. because it was an hour. Mm-hmm. I hadn't changed it. Yeah. So. Whispering. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to start screaming. Yeah, early on. but Ooh, the uh, the oven to your point, yeah. the stove. I mean, and then the um, the uh, microwave are the two for yeah. us. And so I have to change them out. But yeah. yeah, it'll throw you off a little bit if you don't. And then the car. Yeah, I, I, Reese was. He was funny. He goes. I didn't even look this morning. I, I'm, I'm assuming mine probably changes. So, some of the probably the later models yeah. change, and then some don't. And yeah. Reese's truck doesn't. And he's like, Yeah. At one point, Dad, I was looking at three different times. <laughs> uh, it's like all my, all my clocks are off, and yeah. it, was, it was pretty funny. Uh, so anyway, we have that. We'll discuss that. Uh, I'm sure the guys will be agitated with that. I know it was a busy weekend for Rick speaking and everything. We'll we'll kind of get an update from him. Uh, it was a really crazy sports weekend. We have a uh, World Series winner uh, with the Astros. Uh, we have college football craziness. We even have NFL madness last night in overtime. The Chiefs beat the Titans. You talking about torn. <clears throat> Here I am, my childhood team, the Chiefs, and then I worked with the Titans for yeah, about eight years. True. I was like, oh, my gosh. And I got to tell you, I kind of found myself, when the when the Titans would score, I kind of find myself excited about okay. it. And I'm like, well, okay. Because Terry said, "What are you? How, how you feeling over there? And I was like, well, I don't know. And then I found myself kind of rooting for the Titans a little bit. Uh, that didn't last long because I went to bed and just woke up and see who won. <laughs> yeah. I understand it was pretty crazy there. Uh, and, and Joey Logano wins uh, his second NASCAR Cup title. 
Uh, so we just have a lot to break down and discuss. Uh, Twitter's as crazy as ever uh, with Elon Musk. Uh, a lot of crazy moves over the weekend. And if you're listening live and it's the seventh, we have midterm elections tomorrow. Oh the wow, 8th. forgot all about that. So about that? so that's there for you. I guess it's a good thing that I forgot all about it. Yeah. If you would have been <clears> with <throat> me Saturday night and been forced to sit on the couch and watch television with me, you yeah. would have been. Fr- y'all two would have been as frustrated as can be. I had, I think, six different things I was going between, and I was changing every 30 to 45 seconds. Okay. You had Astros. Yeah. You had Auburn. You had Alabama. You had, uh, at one point, Bo Nix was going nuts. Clemson, uh, I had, Notre Dame. I had Clemson, Notre Dame. I had a tennis match that I found myself interested you in. You tennis in there. Yes, I did. It was, hey, I had, and I was every, I mean, I, I didn't know I could work a remote this well. <laughs> I was going all over the place. <laughs> Amanda was like, I said, listen, before we, before I start this mess, yeah, you're good. Like you're reading your book. You're not really worried about what's up there. Right. I'm about to really frustrate you. Yeah. And I would have, if you'd have been watching, you'd have been like, would you please turn it back? Right. Constantly. Well, after I finally got home, uh, UAB, uh, I can't lost a that. double overtime oh, um, day. game with the uh, old drizzle. You. UTSA, uh, who is, um, leading that, that league, the conference USA leading that conference. They, uh, they're they're really good, uh, and um, UAB came back and, and, and tied it, and uh, anyway went to overtime, lost in double overtime. Once I finally got home and got settled in, um, bitch been in spitting rain all day. Yeah. It was one of those things where it's just <clears throat> annoying rain. Okay, now you know either drizzle hard or get get to raining. But I'm raining, I'm stopping. I'm raining, I'm stopping. I'm raining, yeah. I'm stopping. Oh, I'm a I'm a uh, now I'm a sprinkle. You know, and you're like, okay, let's let's get something going. Especially there. if you're driving, you don't know what's yeah, going to be wild. Yeah. But really can't complain. The game, it wasn't like a downpour or anything. But um, once I finally got home and dialed in, I had a couple of games going at the same time. Just, uh, you know, ESPN Plus, it was whoever was on ESPN. And then it was – so it was mainly Alabama, LSU, and then um, – Auburn, Mississippi State. Auburn, Mississippi State. So I would kind of go back and forth with that and – my gracious, uh, you come out two games. <laughs> Couldn't believe what I was yeah, watching. Wow, 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 yeah. wow. And then it, it helped me a little bit because I was, I was, I was like, man, I hate I'm missing the Tennessee Georgia game, but I followed the score while I was at the UAB game, and yeah, it you didn't just, miss it. Didn't really you, seem nah, like you didn't miss that thing. There was much to it. Uh, no, Georgia right. went ahead and said, "I tell you what." Now, and here's what's so weird about college football. If that's played in Knoxville, ain't no telling what the deal is. You just don't know. Don't know. But Georgia, it was and, their day. And, and you they, look at the score. They let everybody know. The game, the score makes it look closer than yeah. it was. I agree. Tennessee was never in it. Right. Never. Yeah. Right. Never so we, threatened. We got a lot to break down. Uh, and something else happened this past weekend. We'll discuss it coming up, too. Don't go anywhere. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. If you've thought about protecting your home with security, but you've been waiting for the right time, you want to listen up. Right now, listeners of this show can get 40% off Simply Safe's award winning home security system. We use and trust Simply Safe to protect our home and family because at Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. Get 40% off your order when you visit simplysafebubba.com today. Customize the perfect system in just a few minutes. That's simplysafebubba.com or rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Our friends at Lear Capital sent us one of those free Kennedy silver half dollars that they're offering for free to our listeners. Now, with the price of silver going up, this free silver half dollar has value. It's a smart time to invest in precious metals, and Lear Capital has 25 years' experience, an exceptional trust pilot rating, and a risk-free investor's pledge. There's no purchase necessary. Just chat with a Lear specialist about investing in precious metals and get your free Kennedy silver half dollar. Visit LearBubba.com. That's LearBubba.com. Folks, in Dalton, Georgia, our friends at WizKid Clean Pods make smarter cleaning products where you bring the water and their cleaning pods bring the clean. A lot of you are already loving their glass cleaners, their bathroom cleaners, floor cleaners, and the very popular pet cleanup urine blast. These cleaners defend surfaces against the buildup of dirt and grime, which reduces cleaning frequency and saves you time. Get 10% off any purchase plus free shipping with code Bubba at cleanpods.com slash Bubba. Cleanpods.com slash Bubba. Well, if 
we're being totally honest, maybe we don't always make the best food choices. The CDC says we should eat up to six cups of fruit and veggies a day. Now, there's zero chance of that happening. So that's where Field of Greens comes in. With Field of Greens, you have more energy, you feel healthier, and it can help you lose weight, too. Join us and take Field of Greens, too. To get you started, we got you a 15% discount on your first order and another 10% off when you subscribe for recurring orders at fieldofgreens.com with promo code Bubba. Fieldofgreens.com or go to rickandbubba.com. Fall is the tastiest time of year, and HelloFresh makes it easy to savor all the season has to offer with 35 weekly recipes and fresh ingredients delivered right to your door. Not only does HelloFresh spice up your cooking routine while saving you time with fewer trips to the store, it saves you money too. HelloFresh is actually cheaper than grocery shopping or takeout. Get 65% off plus free shipping with the code Bubba at HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. That's the code Bubba at HelloFresh.com slash Bubba or RickandBubba.com. If you need a new sofa or chair and you want to update your living space, look no further than Allform. We have an Allform sofa. And, folks, the Allform sofa pieces are made in America. They're easy to assemble, and they're scratch and stain resistant. They come in a wide variety of shapes and configurations, and they ship right to your front door with a 100-day risk-free trial. If you don't love it, they'll pick it up for free and give you a full refund. Allform is offering 20% off all orders if you go to allform.com slash Bubba. That's allform.com slash Bubba for 20% off or rickandbubba.com for a link. All right, folks, you've heard us talking about what Relief Factor can do for your pain for several years now. If you struggle with occasional aches and pains due to aging, exercise, everyday living, consider this. Relief Factor is 100% drug-free. It's made up of ingredients that simply help your own body deal with its natural inflammatory response. And we kid you not, Relief Factor is for real. And the majority of people who order the three-week quick start for just $19.95 go on to order more. Try it at relieffactor.com or rickandbubba.com under the sponsor. Helix Sleep mattresses are made right here in the USA, and, folks, they ship right to your door for free. If you don't love it after 100 days of sleeping on it, they'll pick it up for a full refund. But based on how we feel about our mattress and what the 12,000 five-star reviews say on Helix Sleep mattresses, we know you'll love yours, too. Head to helixsleep.com slash bubba for $350 off all mattress orders. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. That's helixsleep.com slash bubba for $350. $150 $150 off or visit rickandbubba.com under sponsors. Knock out holiday gift shopping early and snag some of the best deals of the season on Raycon. Raycon's wireless earbuds, headphones, and speakers offer premium sound, a comfortable fit, and up to 54 hours of battery life, perfect for anyone on your gift list. Just go to buyraycon.com slash bubba and use the code early, YBF, to get 20% off site-wide or save even bigger and get 30% off Raycon's holiday bundles. That code is early, YBF at buyraycon.com slash Bubba or rickandbubba.com. Our friends at Lear Capital sent us one of those free Kennedy silver half dollars that they're offering for free to our listeners. Now, with the price of silver going up, this free silver half dollar has value. It's a smart time to invest in precious metals, and Lear Capital has 25 years' experience, an exceptional trust pilot rating, and a risk-free investor's pledge. There's no purchase necessary. Just chat with a Lear specialist about investing in precious metals and get your free Kennedy silver half dollar visit learbubba.com that's learbubba.com the gravy please Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. i can't start another Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. day without a mother <laughs> he won minutes past the hour. <laughs> Sorry. That was Greg yawning. Uh, but we're ready. We're fired up to be here. Uh, look, this show's real. We're just like y'all. We're getting going for the day. We, uh, we've we got a lot of, uh, lot to talk about. Rick and Bubba join us. Adler join us right after top of the hour, so don't go anywhere. We'll uh, kick things off, kind of skim the surface of a lot of stories, let you know how our week, uh, weekends went. We've kind of started doing that here uh, on the show. Um, I saw a story uh, where... Um, uh, Ashton, is it Ashton Kutcher? Yeah, uh, I believe I'm saying that correctly. He has raised more than one million dollars for charity as he crossed the finish line of the New York City Marathon. And the reason why I bring that up, he ran it, and I see where Chelsea Clinton ran it, and some other ones. A uh, good friend of the show, former intern Scott Laney, who uh, we called Hobie here, uh, and uh, we tried to do a little bit better with him, and and still stay connected with him. He uh, he ran the New York City Marathon yesterday, yep. 
And um, so you could have downloaded their app, the New York City Marathon app, and uh, clicked on whoever you wanted to track, and you could track him running and the map, like, you know, when they go through Harlem and they go through uh, Central Park and all yeah. this kind of stuff. It was pretty cool. But what, what the coolest part was is he was like, you know, texting us during the marathon, uh, <laughs> and it was kind of it was kind of neat. A long run. Yeah, it's a long run. I uh, cannot believe how how long that run is. Hey, that's a marathon. Uh, but but watching him and going through the process and what he was he was experiencing uh, was was pretty cool. I know for us, not for him. <laughs> what he say? He got a leg cramp about uh, ten miles in. I, I his can't knee his knee started hurting that. about fifteen in. Um, I just can't imagine. But uh, but there's a lot of stories from the New York City I Marathon. I was watching. Well, I say watching. I flipped by and I yeah. seen it said the marathon on. And so I clicked on it. Yeah. And there's this guy and he was in the lead. Uh huh. Okay. Th- these were the professionals. Yeah. Okay. And then the next thing I look, he's laying in the middle of the yeah. road. Yeah. Yeah. He collapsed. He's, <laughs> like he's out there. And, he, <laughs> and then the other guy went on and run off and left everybody. And it was unseasonably warm. <laughs> oh, he also there. he stopped at a portal at first. Okay. And he was uh, in there for about 18 seconds. I and, get that. And then he came back out, and they were saying how – because I think at that point he was getting between 15 and 20 miles, mm-hmm. and that your legs are are used to this, and then you stop. Yeah. and Because uh, oh, he was yeah. like trying to get – and then finally, eventually, you look, and he's piled up in the middle of the road. Well, you know what the liberal media is blaming that on? The headline, okay, heat has caused it. Oh, but it was so. 72. I mean, Guys, I, you know, look. come on. I mean, I understand it was – it was it, it's, it's normally warm. really cold during the marathon. But, but I bet you look back, there's probably been one round yeah. before that was in the 70s. Right. I, I doubt this say, is the first yeah. time that's ever happened. Guys, well, I, right. as long as I've lived, there's chances of where in the, in the south where it may snow on Christmas Day mm-hmm. and we may have 80-degree weather on Christmas Day. That's just the that's way it goes. That's been going on it? our whole life. Yeah. yeah. I can f- remember not too long ago, I say within the past 10, 15 years, the last day of deer season was January 31st then, and it was hot. I remember we were hunting, and we were like, this is miserable. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just never know. You never yeah. know. You don't. Uh, well, it was a clean uh, Kenyan sweep. Uh, I think oh, the yeah, winner the of it will, they'll, ran they'll it. run. Uh, yeah, they they'll ran run in like the heat. Two hours and eight minutes, 41 seconds. That was the, the winning time. Can you believe that? Mm. Uh, if, you, if you looked at the tracking on that, I mean, they're running, you know, four <laughs> minute and some change miles. Just, uh, <laughs> I mean, good night. But uh, Ashton and some others um, crossed the finish line. He said, uh, he's, I think he lost, um, what he said, he, he lost a lot. He lost 12 pounds while training and said he felt like he might have started a little too early in, his, in the training. And, you know, Hobie was even saying that, that uh, some of the guys, there was a little group of them that was going up. Some of them couldn't make it because they actually got hurt during the training because yeah. you have to run so much to train for the marathon. Uh, half I the just... battle is just showing up and not being hurt. Yeah, I don't know how you get started. And you look. Okay, I don't. I got twenty more miles. I, don't I saw that map, and I'm like, how do you even? I'm sure, and I could tell by his times of his miles because you could follow it. Uh, he had sent us the the uh, the app link to that and said, hey, y'all can follow if you want. The the times you can tell the adrenaline of starting oh, yeah, where they are. Too high. He even said, "Do you remember?" Yeah, he replied to us, "Too fast." Mm-hmm. In other words, started way too fast. Uh, this is not going to be you. good. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, there's that. All right, so uh, we, we talked about Joey Logano uh, winning NASCAR, his second title. Uh, back to football real quick. So on uh, college game day. Uh, I didn't watch any of it. I, I didn't get a whole lot a of it. a little bit of it. Yeah, uh, but it, it seemed uh, pretty chaotic. Of course, uh, I flipped back and forth, and I can't tell. Did I see on. where, because I, I only saw it briefly, Did was Lee Corso not there again? I, 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 know, he I know he's I been struggling with that. some health problems. I, I don't think he was. I was up and gone at 7.30 and got back about 11.30, so I, I, I didn't watch any of Yeah. Wow. I, I, don't, I don't think he was there. I can't remember. Hmm. I know Luke Bryan was the picker, and he was now kissing Ugga, and so he made the right okay. pick. Okay. All right. He's a big Georgia Bulldog. Right. Was everybody boycotting him? or? Yeah, they let him get out there. They actually and, let him get out there. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't care well he didn't he, have DeSantis yeah. with him, so I guess that's okay. <laughs> I guess he's good. Yeah, I guess so. I I don't know. Um, I didn't get to see much of it, but but what I did see, I saw the panel, and it just didn't. Cause, but sometimes <clears throat> Corso would would get down, yeah. and somebody else would jump up. But I didn't I didn't see him at all, so I, I wasn't sure. So that's uh, hopefully hopefully he's all right. Um, yeah. But who knows? I got got to see a little bit of it, and then like I said, I was off to the UAB game, <clears throat> and uh, it was a uh, quite the afternoon there for that uh, rain and. 
and uh, double overtime loss, you know, it was kind of a big loser. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, according to this, uh, he's he was not there. He's still recu- recuperating. Mm. Um, evidently, Reese Davis said this was from one day ago. Said Reese Davis shares latest on Lee Corso during college game day absence. So Lee, Lee Corso is still recuperating. Looking forward to getting him back. Um. So, so he was out. Hmm. Yeah. That's 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 uh, I hate that. Um, I saw this too, and I know the guys are going to want to break this down. Um, NBC silent after retracting Paul Pelosi report under mysterious circumstances. So there's a news report from an NBC affiliate or someone there. It's a guy. He's a stand-up reporter, and he's basically saying, "Hey, here's the details that we know." And he starts talking about the details, and then he pitches it like to himself, kind of doing the reporting and all this kind of stuff, police reports and all this. And and it basically said that uh, when the police got there, Paul Pelosi opened the door himself, uh, and as the the police walked in, stepped back and, and kind of walked back over towards the uh, intruder or attacker or whatever, and stood there. And then at that point. Uh, that's when the the guy attacked Paul Pelosi with the hammer real quick like, and then the cops jumped on him and got him off or whatever. But anyway, the the story is this guy, and I, I wouldn't say it makes Paul look bad or whatever. It just it the the story made it seem like when the cops arrived, there was no hysteria or 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 anything. It just seemed everything seemed very calm, you uh-huh. know. And then all of a sudden NBC pulls down the story, retracts it and tries to grab it off social media, uh, almost like they didn't want that report out there. It's kind of weird, but there's a story on it today that I know the main show will want to break down. We actually have the report that we can play. But that, I thought that was a weird twist yeah. over the weekend. Uh, and the headline is so NBC silent after retracting the Paul Pelosi story. Hmm. We'll be right back. More of the kickoff hour continues Rick after this. Bubba, Rick and Bubba. From pumpkin spice to apple cider, fall is the tastiest time of year, and HelloFresh makes it deliciously easy to savor all that the season has to offer. With mouth-watering recipes delivered to your door, right now you can treat yourself to gourmet meals and pick up some cooking skills along the way with their new limited-time Harvest Dinner Series, complete with easy-to-follow videos, and HelloFresh Market makes hosting your next tailgate or party easier than ever with fall flavors, a rotating selection of fall inspired brunch kits, dessert boards, and more available for a limited time this season. With more than 35 weekly recipes to choose from and the ingredients delivered right to your door, HelloFresh helps spice up the cooking routine with fewer trips to the store, and it even saves you money too. HelloFresh is actually 25% cheaper than grocery shopping. Sign up today for 65% off plus free shipping with the code Bubba at HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. The code Bubba. HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. Folks, a big welcome to our new friends at WizKid Clean Pods. You're going to love these cleaning products. First, they've developed formulas that defend surfaces against the buildup of dirt and grime in between cleanings, reducing cleaning frequency, saving you time. And of course, this reduces the amount of chemicals used in our spaces. You bring the water, Clean Pods bring the clean. These are concentrated cleaning products in water-soluble pods. And you're getting your homes clean with a smarter, cleaner system, which means less plastics in our oceans, rivers, and landfills. These are high-quality spray bottles with high-quality cleaning pods that get the job done. So get yourself some WizKid clean pods and embrace the smarter, clean philosophy. Get 10% off any purchase plus free shipping with code Bubba at cleanpods.com slash Bubba. That's cleanpods.com slash Bubba. Use the code Bubba or find a link at rickandbubba.com. There's nothing worse than the mall in the months leading up to the holidays. You got children screaming and take forever to find parking. The list goes on and on. Now, right now you can shop early, skip the stress, and snag some of the best deals of the season on something everyone will love premium audio products from raycon raycon's wireless earbuds headphones and speakers offer premium sound useful features and almost custom comfortable fit and up to 54 hours of battery life and they start at half the price of other premium audio brands plus raycon makes gifting easy with holiday gift guides for everyone in your life 
or knock that list out all at once and get 30% off by shopping Raycon's holiday bundles. Just go to buyraycon.com slash Bubba and use the code early YBF to get 20% off site-wide. That's 20% off and save even bigger and get 30% off Raycon's exclusive holiday bundles. That's code early YBF at buyraycon.com slash Bubba or rickandbubba.com. Our friends at TheraBreath have some good news if you have bad breath. Try TheraBreath Fresh Breath Oral Rinse. TheraBreath is dentist formulated by Dr. Katz himself. TheraBreath doesn't mask bad breath like those burning alcohol mouthwashes that can actually irritate sensitive mouths. It's alcohol-free and free of gluten with no added dyes or colors. Find TheraBreath in all your favorite retail and drug stores. Look for the bright orange cap or online at therabreath.com. You can find a direct link at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors therabreath confidence in every capful attention all you coffee drinkers there's a brand new brew that you definitely want to make part of your daily ritual if you enjoy delicious good coffee like us my coffee needs to be your new drink it's organic which is so important because if not then it contains chemicals banned in this country decades ago you've heard us talk about my pillow for years on this show and now they've got my coffee direct from the mystore.com website go to mystore.com enter the code bubba to save 25 percent off your order of my coffee or find a link at rickandbubba.com. Prices on just about everything are still rising, but thanks to CarShield, you don't have to worry about how much it will cost to fix your car when it breaks down. Their price will never go up, and they help handle everything. Here's why we love them. CarShield offers protection plans for around 100 bucks a month that cover more parts than ever before. When you need a repair, you don't have to deal with the paperwork or the headaches. You can also count on CarShield to help take care of you when your car breaks down and you're stuck on the side of the road. Every protection plan comes with coast-to-coast, roadside assistance, courtesy towing, and rental car options at no extra cost. So as long as your car is covered, no matter how old it is, you're protected from the rising cost of parts and repairs. Get coverage today. Go to carshield.com slash Bubba or call 1-800-391-8888 to save 10% on your plan. That's carshield.com slash Bubba or call 800-391-8888. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't stop. 25 enough. minutes until top of the hour. Thank you so much for um, tuning in to the kickoff hour. Well, the college football uh, poll rankings will come out on Tuesday evening. Uh, if memory serves me correct, they go now it's every Tuesday evening. Uh, they have the college football. Yeah. Uh, poll uh, show on ESPN, and they will reveal the top four. If the AP poll has any reflection or if the, it kind of mirrors a little bit of that, and sometimes it would be a little off, but most of the time it's pretty accurate. Uh, the new AP poll for this week is out, and as predicted, Georgia number one, Ohio State has slid up to number two, Michigan number three, and TCU four. If the poll you know, now the college football rankings might come out and it might be off just a little bit, but I do believe George will be number one uh, in that poll as well. But we'll have to see. Just on the outside looking in, um, your um, uh, Tennessee Vols are at five, Oregon uh, and Bo Nix at six, uh, LSU seven, uh, USC eight, and UCLA nine with Alabama at 10 and Ole Miss at 11. And with Clemson's loss, they moved down to 12. Uh, Alabama, Ole Miss this weekend, and Mississippi State hosts Georgia. Hey, uh, now. So that uh, it's going to be interesting. Did y'all did y'all see the video of Leach? Uh, he, you know, he was so disgusted. Uh, I think it's almost like something happened. Somebody came in and and like took all the um, the energy out of every Mississippi State player about eight minutes before halftime, <laughs> and then with about two minutes left in the game, it's like they got it back. Yeah. Uh, it's just it was bizarre. Uh, at one point, Leach went and took all the folding chairs that the team gets to go sit down at, at the offense, folded them up, threw them down the chair, wouldn't let them sit wouldn't back down. Say so y'all funny. don't deserve to sit down. That was just bizarre. Oh. That was crazy. <laughs> I, I, I have a public service announcement I want to make. Oh, boy. To Whispering all, again. To all the deer population out deer. there. Yes, oh, to the deer? To the deer population. And it has something to do with college football, too. Listening? So this is why I'm bringing it up. All right. um, I, I think it has I'm, that, something to do with that monster. I'm too. worried about the deer population in the state of Alabama. 
from this day until the end of hunting season. And we can get our buddy director of everything wildlife in the state of Alabama, Chuck Sykes, to, to deliver the news at the end of the year on the numbers. But the fact that Alabama and Auburn are where they are football-wise at this point, deer beware, because there is no reason for anybody to be watching a football game the rest of the, the, rest of the year. <laughs> Alabama's right. out of the playoffs. Yeah. Okay, That's something that we have not seen at this time so of year in quite some time. Going, the, and you on, normally wait to hunt and, when the season's and, over. And, and Auburn in complete shambles until yeah. they get it turned around. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of camouflage entering the woods You're probably right. that has not in quite some time during a certain period of time. And so mm -hmm. deer beware. That's yeah. all deer I want. Beware. Hey, look, deer beware. Deer beware. People going to be in there moving, getting there early. Yep. Yeah. If you're on a manager, Wear right? your orange. <laughs> if you're on a manager, Wear your yeah. orange. Yeah. Gonna be a lot of you out there. Um, that's a good point because a lot of people wait. Hey, I gotta wait the playoffs to die. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't happen this year. Yeah. I, uh, uh, there's just there's so much to discuss. I did see. Um, we got to do something about. Um, Fans rushing the field. You know, we've talked about this. Yeah, that's right. There's going to be a big incident that happens, and I know there's been small ones out there. Uh, I saw where uh, some drunk LSU fans tried to go after um, an Alabama staffer um, who um, who I guess they didn't want to mess with because apparently he's former military and, and pretty decorated, uh, but he was trying to get out and, and get to where he needed to be. Uh, and there's other there's – other, uh, Stadiums it's and, a bad and field mix. rush. It, it's a bad. Well, well here's the what two you, that stick out are LSU and Notre Dame this yeah, weekend. Yeah, and, that, and to it, me, there may be others, but those were the two that stick out in regards yeah. to what he's talking yeah. about. And, and here's what happened. Got, Did got Notre nuts. Dame rush the field. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we and we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Rushing the field is now watered down a little bit. It is. Yeah. Uh, it used to be reserved for really, 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 really big moments. That's three reallys. Yeah. But the, but <laughs> well, it, it he, here's where here's 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 the bad combination. You have fans, not all fans, okay. And I'm just I'm just gonna be in general now here. I'm not talking about a particular school, but you have fans, and a lot of them have been drinking. Yeah. Okay. Some haven't that go onto the field. Some are very sober and very alert of what's going on, and some you know might just be buzzing. I have no idea. <laughs> But you got you got somebody drinking. You got somebody drinking, so they had a sip of courage. Yeah. All right, and then you and have excited about their team. Right, winning. and then you have football players who and are, staff who are extremely frustrated because they yes, just lost. They just lost. Now they're trying to get off the field, right. and we can't because I got a bunch of people in my face going. Yeah. That combination. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's is bad. that's a bad combination and something. And there's been stories over the last couple of weeks, but something really bad is going to happen if they don't get it's a hold that, of this. It's coming. And and I hope it doesn't. I'm I'm not saying oh I want it. To, and I'm just saying it just does. This recipe is not a good one. I'm it, like you. And I don't know what you do about yeah, it. I really don't. How you don't. keep a, I, I don't, people from I don't getting know, on the field? I, I don't know that you can hire enough security for that. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, if well, they're if they're coming, they're coming. Uh, I don't know that you can stop them. Right. Hey, by the way, he was at the UAB game. I was. <laughs> Speedy. Hey, hey, buddy. I got this. How you cover. doing? I got this over here. Um. Uh, anyway, that's right. just, that's I don't just, know what they're gonna do about it. I don't either. I don't either. But it's defining them doesn't matter. They don't care no. about. I mean, no. you can't. Uh, honestly, you can't arrest everybody. No, you and, can't. unless unless you had unless you go back and look at everybody's ticket that was there and, and filter it out that way. And you can't have enough security to keep people. You can't. No, no. there's no many. room for it. Yeah. No, and and you can't. We're gonna bring National Guard in. You can't that. politely on the PA go. You know. Please let the team leave before rushing the field. Are they gonna, what are they going to do? Okay, that yes, sir. Well, they always Thank say, you. please do not rush the field because they right. have to. Yeah. But they know it's going to happen. Right. And, and it could be that the fans aren't aren't drunk or hadn't been drinking. It could just be that. So you that, said they're that, all drunk. No, that they're just excited and and You think and wanna, rude, they wouldn't run. And want to let up. everybody have, know about it. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. So the, there's a combination of, of it all. And, and then on the other side, you've got frustration and stuff. It's just a bad mix, man. I, I'm a football player. I've been out there busting my tail. And yeah. I'm disappointed. And then some punk's going to come get in my face that's been sitting up there, ain't never done nothing a day of his life. He's right. going to come tell me, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's a bad combination. It's a, it's a bad, bad combination, man. Um, but I, I don't know what they're—I don't know what they're going to do about it. Uh, you know, because uh, security and you can't—you can't put fences up. Uh, you know, and because I mean, how are you going to do that? You know what what I mean? if you had a? What if you had a? Uh, this? What if we de developed some new technology <laughs> that we and we we owned it. We put it in all stadiums and around. We created a barrier around that you hit one button and electric fence came up at the very end. <laughs> 
just or came up yeah. right at the end. And you or had to make, hit it at the right time because, like, in, you can't bring out a bunch of security guards, uh, bodyguards it with, mm-hmm. like, I don't know, what, if you're in an overtime game because you don't know how it's going to yeah, end and it. you don't want to jinx the situation by bringing them out there thinking you've won. I know. Mm-hmm. It's true. So, I, I don't know. What have you I, seen the highway patrol officers, two of them, getting Saban off the field? No, they'll do that. Hey, let me tell you something. I don't not, mess they, with them. They're not going to put up with anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. No, I'm talking about, like, if you even get close – yeah. You're going down is what sure. you're doing, and uh, there. Anyway, I just um, and I'm I'm well, talking about that game, but I know Notre Dame, Clemson. It's just any game, not necessarily well, that. It's just it's getting the last it's getting few a weeks. Little, it's been it's getting it's a little bit nuts. more chippy. Yeah. What if we re- require everyone to wear a, cho- a shot collar, <laughs> and then we have like the invisible fence on the field when they try to go on it hammers? Them. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Well, and to your point, let's let's talk about this. Let's <laughs> enter this into it too. <laughs> what happened after the? Uh, what happened with Michigan and Michigan State Michigan. It last week or two weeks ago could have easily happened on the field. Yeah. And if something like that breaks out on the field, yeah. why you have fans out there, then it's going to be, a then it's gonna be nasty. Yeah. yeah. You're right. So y'all are talking about uh, <clears throat> like an invisible fence kind of yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like a, it's just, it, so well, like, it's not, tick- it can't be invisible because not everybody's wearing collars. Right, like that's our what dogs. I was wondering. Yeah. How are we doing that? It, we'll, we'll, I we'll got one to, in buying collars. That's going to be tough to do. Yeah. We'll embed a system in the gar- in the rails that go around the stadium. <laughs> okay. And then it just it just comes up. Razor wire button and pops just, up. Razor wire pops And you have to give everybody now, hey, 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 30 seconds from now, if so-and-so happens, the razor wire will go up and it is electrified. <laughs> yeah. So, Say what we're saying yeah. now. So yeah. look out. I, I'll be honest with you. I think a lot of them would chance it. And probably. Try probably. And, right. probably. Well, they got to get out there, Greg. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, there you go. I just, I'm sorry. I had that observation and I'm sorry, but it is it, yeah, it's a real just, thing. Y'all yeah. remember this discussion and it, we're not, we're not the only ones making it. Well, and think uh, about but, this too. It, this doesn't happen. It happens in basketball, mm-hmm, but yeah. it doesn't happen in any other sport. Yeah. Well, and a lot of that has to do with there's not as big a crowds in any other sport. There's always but NFL. You're not storming the field. No. Right. There's always Never been some chippiness that. when this happens, but I don't know. Maybe it's just I don't know. Things have changed. I don't know if people have changed. It, it used to be that if when you rushed the field, it was more just to celebrate. About now, it's I'm yeah. I'm out there and I'm gonna let the other people have it too, and it's just a bad combination. Think about what I don't Greg know that that's always said. happened or something. I don't know. Think it just seems like it's a, there's a little bit more of chippiness out there yeah. now. But I don't know. Think about what you just said, and this is true. It's a different mindset than pro because I've never seen anybody. Maybe it's happened, but I've never seen anybody storm a basketball court in the NBA. No, I've never seen so. it in the NFL. Yeah, and the pros is I, <clears throat> you'll have an individual go out there and try to be sure. Cute, but as sure. far as like it's a victory, let's get on the let's field and all tear the celebrate. Goal posts down. Yeah, fans did not storm the field in the Houston the other day when they won the World Series. Well, but I, you know, I do yeah. think that that that's <laughs> college athletics. That that's one thing that makes it so special. Sure, is that there are things. I mean, because you, you're you're mentioning professional athletes that, you know, it's a business. And I know that college athletes In some are, parts have, of our country, though, that that's all they horses, have. Oh, is big to them. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. That may be bigger. Yeah. But, one but thing they that, still don't rush the field. Right. Um, there's certain things that make college football sports special oh, uh, and separate from professional sports. But uh, this whole rush in the field thing is going to get out of hand. It is. You just got to be careful. I we'll think right we're there. Now. Yeah. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I'll second guest dinners with friends because they can be interrupted by diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or oily stools. It turns out I have EPI, or exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, which means I'm missing the enzymes needed to digest food. My doctor prescribed Creon Pancrelipase, an oral prescription medication that replaces pancreatic digestive enzymes. Creon treats EPI due to cystic fibrosis, chronic pancreatitis, pancreatectomy, or other conditions. Creon may increase your chance of fibrosing colonopathy, a rare bowel disorder. Tell your doctor if you have a history of intestinal blockage or scarring or thickening of your bowel wall. If you're allergic to pork or if you have gout, kidney problems, or worsening of painful swollen joints, call your doctor if you have any unusual or severe gastrointestinal symptoms or allergic reactions. Take Creon as directed by your doctor and always with food. Do not chew capsules as this may cause mouth irritation. Other side effects may include blood sugar changes, gas, dizziness, sore throat, and cough. These are not all the side effects of Creon. Creon is the number one prescribed EPI treatment. Ask your doctor about Creon for EPI and visit creoninfo.com or call 800-633-9110 to learn more. That's C-R-E-O-N info.com. Provember is back at Lowe's and so are the savings. Power the possibilities with savings on the DeWalt tools you trust to get the job done. Like the DeWalt 16-piece reciprocating saw blade set was $29.98, now $19.98. 
and the DeWalt 14-piece assorted drill bit set was $16.98, now $9.98. These deals are tough to beat, and so are the tools. It always pays to be a pro at Lowe's. Offer ends 12-28, while supplies last. Selection varies by location. Today on Hey Culligan, soft water, cleaner environment. What do you say, Greg? Hey Culligan. Are you saying if I have a Culligan high-efficiency water softener, I'm also helping the environment? It sounds like you're saying it, Greg, and yes, you are, because with the Culligan high-efficiency water softener, you'll use less detergent, soap, and harsh chemicals, and that's good for the planet. Now you're saying it. You bet I am, Greg. Soft water and a cleaner environment is already on the way. Let us help you out with a free in-home water test from a local Culligan water expert at Culligan.com. Yellowstone, television's number one show, returns on Paramount Network. I, John Dutton, do solemnly swear to uphold the Constitution of the state of Montana against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Featuring an all-star cast led by Academy Award winner Kevin Costner. The invasion is over. They will fight you dirty. Is there any other way? As the Dutton family fights to protect their legacy, they'll learn power has a price. Signing this is a declaration of war. We're already at war. Yellowstone returns Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern for an epic two-hour premiere event exclusively on Paramount Network. What's your least favorite season? Now, if you're like me, it's cold and flu season. So get relief from it this year with Mucinex DM. With cough and chest congestion relief for 12 hours in just one dose. That's three times longer than four-hour products. Mucinex DM makes any season comeback season, even cold and flu season. Get three times the relief in just one dose with Mucinex DM. It couldn't be simpler. Nothing lasts longer among over-the-counter cough and cold remedies. Mucinex DM provides 12 hours of relief for chest congestion and cough, day or night. Uses direct. Well, if we're being totally honest, we, we, we don't always make the best food choices. The CDC says we should eat up to six cups of fruit and veggies a day. But if you're like us, we don't always have the time or energy to make that happen. So that's where Field of Greens comes in. With Field of Greens, you'll have more energy, you'll feel healthier, and it can help you lose weight. We all want a simple nutrition plan with results so powerful that when we take our next physical, the doctor compares our old lab work to the new lab work, and he says, hey, keep doing what you're doing. This wonderful product is powered with a full spectrum of essential vegetables and fruits plus science-backed herbs and prebiotics. It can help you stay healthy, plus it's organic. So join us and take Field of Greens, too. To get you started, we got you a 15% discount on your first order and another 10% off when you subscribe for recurring orders at fieldofgreens.com with the promo code Bubba. That's fieldofgreens.com. Use the promo code Bubba. Folks, a big welcome to our new friends at WizKid Clean Pods. You're going to love these cleaning products. First, they've developed formulas that defend surfaces against the build up of dirt and grime in between cleanings, reducing cleaning frequency, saving you time. And of course, this reduces the amount of chemicals used in our spaces. You bring the water, clean pods bring the clean. These are concentrated cleaning products in water-soluble pods. And you're getting your homes clean with a smarter, cleaner system, which means less plastics in our oceans, rivers, and landfills. These are high-quality spray bottles with high-quality cleaning pods that get the job done. So get yourself some WizKid clean pods and embrace the smarter clean philosophy. Get 10% off any purchase plus free shipping with code Bubba at cleanpods.com slash Bubba. That's cleanpods.com slash Bubba. Use the code Bubba or find a link at rickandbubba.com. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't stop. Just, uh, what, nine minutes till top of the hour? Yeah. Welcome to the uh, kickoff hour. If you're just joining us, about nine uh, minutes away from the main show starting, Rick and Bubba will join us then as well as Adler. Uh, get the week started, but until then, we're just going to continue hanging out, getting things going for the day. This portion of the show is made possible by LinkedIn.com slash Bubba. You know, uh, right now, you know, trying to find the right person uh, to hire can be complicated, uh, and that's where LinkedIn can come in and make things easier. Uh, you look, you're making a big investment on the person that you want to hire to be 100% certain that you have uh, access to the best qualified candidate is important to you. 
And that's where LinkedIn Jobs at linkedin.com slash Bubba uh, can uh, really, really help you. This service helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Just add your job and the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates uh, and just the right skills uh, that make things better for you and that hire knowing that you've got the right person. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in uh, like delivering qualifying uh, hires and leading com- competitors are sitting there going, wow, so w- I wish we could do that. When LinkedIn jobs, got, hey, they got it going on, guys. Uh, and right now you can join and post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Bubba. You can also find a link at RickandBubba.com under the sponsors button. Free, folks. Uh, we're talking about like free, especially uh, nowadays when you're trying to find that right person, uh, when you can get that first job posting for free, that's big. Uh, check them out. Check them out. LinkedIn.com slash Bubba or RickandBubba.com under the sponsors button. All right. So, Helmsy, I know we've been Sorry. jumping around a little bit, uh, but the audience has weighed in oh, yeah. on uh, what do you call it? QFTAs, questions from the audience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Adam, Adam checks in. Hey, Adam. Hey, Adam. What's up? What are the first couple things you guys do when you arrive at the studio each morning? Do you have a routine, or does each one have a different responsibility before the show starts? Yeah. yeah. Good question, Adam. First thing I do is get uh, cussed out by Greg, which that kind of starts true. my day. I love that. Let's let's start here. Greg gets here earlier than yeah. anybody else. Then yeah. you come in, yeah. and then I straggle in about 10, 15 minutes before the show starts. There you mm-hmm. go. Yeah. Um, I, I get, first thing ahead. I do when I get here is I go make coffee. There you go. So well, is it because see this is helping us because I didn't know that because yeah. I'm never here at that time. Mm-hmm. And then I come in and I count the breaks with the commercials to make sure that I haven't scheduled too many or not enough. Right. And then I call Denver, who handles our satellite system, and then once I get all that, who run, do you talk to at Denver when you call them? Is it different people different or people. is it, okay? Yeah. Different. Do you ever just dis- got any relationships Not with really. them or you, you know, kind of like hang the out? We talk? had in New York. Uh, That's why I asked. Remember, was it? Yeah. Was Steve. Guy? Steve. That yeah. was the umpire. Yeah. Now these are nice guys. He had guys, a great personality. I, one guy the other day kind of reached out. Normally it's just, hey, I'm, this is Greg. Okay, send them blood and I'm done. But the other day a guy got to talk to me. He's a big Denver Bronco fan. Oh. And he was excited they won because he said it was about time. Yeah. That's the only really interaction I've had. Okay. These guys are pretty much all business. Yeah. Yeah, normally it's, hey, Rick and Bubba, oh, here's the bad, got it, see ya. And yeah. you've done all that from uh, before four, Speedy gets here. So when, when Speedy walks in, you dog him, make fun of him. Yeah, right I'm usually scheduling stuff well, normally, for yeah, later he's in the week. Yeah, he's still in there. Yeah. Schedule stuff for later in the week, okay. yeah. something like that. Uh, it, it, we have two computer monitors. Uh, one handles that, and then you can slide over to the other one. It handles the commercial load, which in, in, in radio we call traffic, so don't confuse yeah. that with, like, road traffic. Yeah. Uh, it's computer uh, commercials that log I everything up. I just make sure everything's sitting Stacked on up, go, ready, ready to, to go. be boom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'm and I'm uh, a lot of times I do um, a lot of my show prep before I ever get here. Uh, I try to work 24 hours in advance. That way, the morning of it's not so hectic, especially when it comes to like guests. Um, you know, one pagers on the guest. You know, bios, uh, websites, links, whatever. But I get here and. And I have a one pager that I create that that basically says, "All right, guys, when you look at it, here's what we got. If there's any commercial or not commercials, any guest, here's what time they hit, and and then like here's the news stories, entertainment stories, sports stories, uh, uh, political stories, some of the top of it. So when they look at that page, they can see what's in the stack of a lot of paper. Uh, they can look down and go, oh, okay, I see that. And then if they want it, they could go dig for it. Yeah. Um, so I'm getting all that print, printed and ready. And, and most of the time uh, on Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, Blazing Silverman's here. So when he gets here, he, start, he goes straight to the printer and starts pulling all that, stapling it up into two stacks, one for Rick and one for Bubba. I saw him have to get the – he was he was nervous as can be. He had to ask Greg this morning, could he borrow the stapler? Yeah. And he and, and Greg gave it to him, but Greg, you know, of course, gave him a hard time before yeah. he just well, actually got, gave it to him. Yeah. Is it, uh, the no no more one's not working? We got no like more? four. What's wrong with I it? Think one works. Something stuck in it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, He's yeah. just. Uh, sometimes I don't know if he can talk. He just gives me <laughs> signals. But I've learned into signals. No, I'm kidding. Um, okay, so we'll have to look at it. So that's kind of what we yeah. do. And, it, and a lot of it's multitasking and, and just getting ready. And one thing about about here is that 
even though we all have responsibilities, we jump in if we sure, have to. Sure. That time could also be for I've got to cut a commercial. Yeah. I've got yeah. to cut breaks for something uh, or whatever. And I say I, I mean any of us. We use that time getting here to get that done if it has to be on the air that day. Yeah. And we got maybe a late notice after we were gone yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, and what are you doing over there? Well, I used to – I figured out that I have about six things that I have to get done <clears throat> between – Friday and Monday before we start the show. Mm-hmm. This is six checklists. It takes about 30 minutes to do all those six things. Mm-hmm. So what I realized is you can do all these from the house. Why are you waiting until Monday morning to do these? Mm-hmm. Why don't you just do them sporadically throughout the weekend and then sleep 30 extra minutes? Oh. So that's what I've been doing. Okay. So. Getting the podcast as far as, you know, like the dates and the, the, the sponsors and all those things lined up. Mm-hmm. So I can knock that out Saturday morning over coffee while I'm putting the social media out for mm-hmm. the RBU. Mm-hmm. So that's off my plate. And then I have to create a every day, and I wish it wasn't like this, but every day I have to create a, a website page. We've, I've showed you how to do this in, mm-hmm. for in my absence, but um, to kind of put the show notes. Yeah. So that has to be done. Um, got to make sure tune ins run in the way this is supposed to be. Um, and then I go, I have to, this is a fresh, this is one of those things I wish I didn't have to do. There's, we have to do timestamps for certain sponsors. So I have to go through the podcast mm-hmm. and when I'm listening to RBU, you have to mark those mm-hmm. and then they want them done at a certain time. So mm-hmm. you can't, they don't want it like a right. week to go by. Yeah. So I try to knock out all that kind of stuff before I get in here. And so I've got to where I will. My routine once I get here now is just simply to mix me a spark with some field of greens. Greg comes in my mm. office. The, about four minutes, I can always count, three or four minutes after I walk in, Greg walks in, and first thing he does is make fun of me. Today it was about my earbuds I was wearing. No, I said you were looking uh, sharp. Hey, looking sharp in your earbuds. Because I was right. listening to a podcast in my ears this morning. And uh, – and then I grab my computer and come in here, and we yeah. go. And, and what I meant by most of my stuff's already done, I'll email me myself articles yeah. uh, throughout the weekend or the day prior. So when I show up, I might have 20 <laughs> emails from myself that are stories that we need. And well, then, which and, is and, smart. And Adler and I are always DMing yeah. videos that we play to each other. It's direct messaging for the yeah. older crowd like so, me. So the videos match up with some of the stories we sure. have. Bubba, we'll be back. Bubba. I, well, the scope's off. Something's happened. Gun's off. Scope's off. I've lost it. I can't hit the broadside of a barn. V- v- phone's blowing yeah, up Yeah, because when here. somebody you shoots, know. the whole place goes crazy. <laughs> what happened? So, Rick, <laughs> I look. That's the fun of it all. Yeah. Rick, I have one bullet left. My gosh. And I am two minutes from cutoff time. I go, and they're still standing. I go, well, this, this, this is i got to try one more time, and then this is it. I guess I'll well, go down. If they're going to stand I, there and not move? If, if nothing else, I'm going to go down there and throw a rock at them after that, I guess. So I put the bullet in, I get ready, I get set up, and I go, I know. I, I mean, I'm doing my checklist here. What am I missing? What What's happening here? So I get right on him. <laughs> Through the scope, I see him fall. Finally. Four shots, one hit. He yelled about time. Tom is almost there, and I, I text him. I said, hey, i got to have some help over here. <laughs> well... I'll tell you the rest of it. Oh, it, it no. Believe it or not, it's not totally over yet. What? what? Not over yet. Shooter McGee in that picture smiling like it was like it was just a normal situation. <laughs> uh, he's been at war. Look at him. I have. <laughs> what are we going to do with McGee? <laughs> Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. All right, so Shooter McGee, better known as Bill Bubba Bussy. But has shot at the deer four times. <laughs> yeah, I shot four times, one hit. All right, and now, <laughs> now everybody's coming to you because you've got the deer down, right. and it's 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 and we shoot, go to shoot, get it. It's shooting light over. Everybody coming your yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, it's it's we're done now. We're going to get it, and uh, wasn't wasn't the best kill shot. A little high, mm. and uh, you're, so you're we, out. You're we out had of to finish, You, you got to get rid of this. Had new to thing. finish it off. Uh, oh, I, it but wasn't. I, I was out of bullets. Did you say I had to finish it off? Whoa. Yeah, I was out of bullets. Oh, no. and, wait, stop. Uh, Not a flopper. Stop. <laughs> so wait a minute, wait a minute. So you mean the help comes, Tom, yeah. and and y'all go out to retrieve the deer. Right. That's Tom in, that's in the greenfield. Yeah, Tom has a pistol, but I don't. 
and you go to get yeah, it, and not. it's still alive. Uh, it's still, it's not, it's not ready to be picked up yet. Now. Oh my goodness! So, oh my gosh. Tom had to shoot it four times with his pistol. So, I mean, what? Four times. What, what, is, what is this, Gary and the donkey? Yeah, I know. I, know. I don't know if we should. Well, be it, it was. A, it was. Should a we be gun. talking about this? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's that's standard. You got to it's finish them all. Eight times to kill a deer? Well, it was eight shots. It, uh, technically, only five. Hey. hey. It's standard. Yeah. Shot him five it's times. standard for Shooter McGee. Yeah, yeah. Shooter so, McGee gonna shoot the place up. Now you know that. Somebody Let said. Them fly. Somebody said this deer when they make summer sausage out of it, it'll be Swiss summer well, sausage. Yes. Well, we. Yes. We let the, so good. We let the processor know we might all check for lead before he <laughs> runs that thing through the machine. I tell you what, we're gonna donate this one. <laughs> so anyway, got the, got our first buck of the year. And, uh, <laughs> took a little work. It. Took a little work. Yeah, worked hard, hard for it. Yeah. yeah. Look, that, that deer got up and said, if, uh, today is my last day on earth. He tried so I'm hard. I'm tired. It's cold. Yeah. I'm well, we, 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 may, uh, we may let that gun scope rest for a week or two. and uh, Please. Spend a little range time with it. I, it must be I've seen this thing bit. go out twice, and it, it, ain't, it ain't been nothing but well, chaos. Well, again, you got to take good shots, and hopefully in the position where, you know, you, you maximize your chances, you know, butt shots are not – not good. What is what is your deal with this? I've anyway? never I've never really dealt with deer running away from me until this year, and it's happened last two times out. But why would you fire on that shot? That doesn't. I mean, I mean, it's, it's not it's not a good. Well, one. I didn't want to fire on it at Dream Ranch, right? And and you know I got ridiculed for that, so I shot this time. Yeah. But it's still it's a very it's a small yeah, target. Sure it is. And uh, you know I need all I can get apparently. Oh McGee, <laughs> Shooter McGee's gonna give it a shot. He don't mind. Yeah. Get rid of that rubber thing on your scope if it's going to jam up in your bowl. Yeah, yeah wow. really. I can't believe I'm that. I'm going to try to replace it. too much junk. Well, it, it wasn't that part that got it. in the gun. It's the shell that was coming out bumped it and went back in. I want you to, oh, okay. I want you to it, take it. It knocked it back in. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. do what you're going to let it fly out. Yeah. Like I'm going to do what Bubba's hunting gear Phil allowed me the way people do with hoarders. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go in there and start throwing stuff out. <laughs> yeah. Right. We're, we're going to get down to the base. Yeah. No, I, I'm I'm gonna go back to old standard. I think for this week. So. Uh, Do you think? Yeah. I think he's going back to iron yeah. sight. <laughs> I, I got to get some range time, just to you know. So, and I'm gonna go watch the movie Shooter today. Get, <laughs> get fired up. <laughs> Do you again. think the six point went back to the buddies and said, "Y'all don't know how tough he was." No, I think he went back and said, uh, "Y'all, I've he never did all he could do. Could nobody kill him?" Listen, <laughs> I've seen I've seen Mexican standoffs by deer. I've never seen it. After you shoot, and they not even move, don't even move. Well, there's a big lesson here. Keep in mind, I know some of you who don't know much about this hunting thing, but there's a huge lesson. If you have a teenage boy anywhere mm-hmm. near, there's a great lesson here. I wish I'd have videoed it. The reason why that deer just ignored the fact that a high powered rifle was yeah. firing all yeah. around him was because there was a doe there in heat, and he wouldn't leave her. Yeah. That's why he's dead. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, that is the bottom. That line. is the bottom line. Sad story. They get real stupid when that happens. They're very, they're very cunning up to that point. Oh yeah, it's over that, then. That, that seemed to be something maybe you could preach on. Remind you. Yeah, I kind of well, you do see the similarities in no deer and question, humans. no question, especially in, in this particular behavior. Yes, yes, very similar. Yeah, the uh, yeah. If you're gonna take one of these, Rick, I mean, didn't even flint, didn't move an ear, didn't didn't twitch a head to see where it came from, because I'm in standoff. Mm-hmm. Dominant, dominant. You would think even if, <laughs> even if you know shooting, how you see dogs yeah, yeah. will do that. <laughs> even if Shooter oh, McGee yeah. had basically shot straight up in the air, right? The noise should have been enough. Yeah. Right. How about the noise? Right. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. But all's well that ends well. <laughs> it's obvious McGee is shooting high. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Well, McGee made a slight adjustment off the range. It is six minutes past the hour. Hello and welcome back. To another hour on another day on another week in Rick and Bubba history. Still here. 28 years. Uh, nearly wrapping all that up at the end of another one. We start this hour with our national anthem.
is seven and a half minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler, all here, ready to go for a brand new hour. A kickoff hour has been done, already been established for you. If you missed that, catch it on the archives today. Uh, Blazing Silverman is our Rick and Bubba intern. He's earning his degree in common sense, that now a superpower. As we unpack another day, we'll look back over the active weekend, and we will chat with you as well. Uh, we've got everybody spoken for. I be Rick. How about you? And over here be the silver tongue one, the man with a golden voice, professional lunch eaters, man of the year, the inventor of pizza and a cup, Shakespeare's worst nightmare, and the master of the Kang's English. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Bill Bubba Bursi! Howdy, Bubba. How about it, Rick Burgess? Friends, neighbors, associates everywhere, welcome in to the Rick and Bubba Fun Zone. Eat up. Sitting here, show as I'm sitting here. That's right, here we are. Great dog knife for those of you not watching on YouTube. So, uh, Bubba, how was your weekend, sir? Rick, I had a great weekend, very relaxing, uh, enjoyed it, got refreshed a little bit, uh, glad to be here. I've got a little video I'll show you Can't some wait. of my weekend activities Can't wait. a little later in the show today, but uh, we're doing good, some great ball games on this weekend, yep. and uh, very exciting. I know we have a lot of disappointed folks in the audience today. Uh, when you have those kind of big games, somebody's going, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose, and you're going to have some some sad people. Let me tell you who's not disappointed today because I just came from there moments ago. Hey, Georgia Bulldogs! Who? <laughs> oh, I was in I was in South Georgia. They're just fine. Oh yeah, okay. I bet they are. They, They're they, good. They were having a very rocky good... top, not so much. Yeah, no, no, rocky top, rocky, rocky, rocky down. Well, yeah. look, so, it uh, was uh, rocky it, bottom. It, it was riding high, but it, it was uh, it was an outstanding what five days at number one. Yeah. yeah, well, and and their team is turning around, and that's where you. Yeah, you, the program is headed in a great direction. As we said on this program, and if they in, went out, they yeah. yeah. Anybody, anybody doesn't mean your team's not on. Where you still should be celebrating because. Anybody that is handed the task of beating current Alabama and current Georgia in the same season is it, it's a tough order yeah, on, on anybody. Very hard. You know, and right. even if you get one of them, you've really done something. And uh, uh, today we asked the question: How did Brian Kelly walk out of Tiger Stadium? <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet I bet he's got some chafing uh, because a quote last night from one guy he said uh, he said they mu they must be as big as a truck tire. <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't even – I mean, he had 12 he, on the field, had to call a timeout, no, and everything still no, went well. That's the part that got me. You could see where he goes, Alabama's not going to expect me just to go for two. No, everything calmed down. And everybody settled, and he still went yeah. for two. I mean, he had, yeah. called he had 12 men on the field. He was, well, so, you know, he he was were, so committed to two. Yeah. That's what he was going to do. And he's like, I'm not going to sit here with Bryce Young and let him score five no. times, and me got to score five times. Yeah, I'm two yeah. yards from it. Right. I'm, two, like I'm two yards to win this game. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about And I'll go to a freshman, it, by the way. Uh, yeah. Watching the game, and I said – and I, I even said, I said, he ought to go for it. Yeah. I mean, they got, go. they got uh, momentum right now. Yeah. Uh, I think the the more traditional thinking is that if you're at home, you play it safe. On the road, you go for it, right? Wasn't that what they used to say? I don't know. Uh, I, I know that he was asked about it, and the re the reporter said, you know, if you didn't make it, you lose. He said, yeah, but if we make it, we win. And right. he felt good about the play he had. <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in that, other words, yeah. he had a play. He <clears throat> knew, he felt pretty confident they could execute. Look, when you've got freshmen like the Taylor kid, and I can't even remember number 19's name from Georgia. Wow. Uh, by, by one, of the, one, Bowers. one of the best football players I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And when he was a freshman, when those two are freshmen, you really got to throw the freshman thing out. 
I mean, yeah. they're elite <laughs> yeah. players. It doesn't right. matter whether they're freshmen. They're the or not. few that come along. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or somebody said last night on uh, on Team Man Church, we were traveling. They're going. I, I know all this about the freshman Taylor thing. His dad's an NFL Hall of Famer. I right. mean, that, that, yeah. I mean that has. Yeah. He's not a typical freshman. Right. Right. And his right. uncle right. Zach Taylor. Yeah, and his uncle Zach uh, Thomas. Thomas. I'm yeah. Sorry. But anyway. Yeah. Um, but what you don't forget now, he also got him in the situation. Oh, yeah, well, great catch. He made the catch to to get him in the situation yeah. and gets the catch for the right, two. Right. And um, it was an incredible game. I got to see with the wedding, I got to see the a lot of the first half of Alabama, Tennessee. No, no, Georgia, Tennessee. And then I saw from about six minutes in the third quarter to the end of LSU, Alabama. So I still got to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because let's face it, Georgia had already said – you know it's over today, right? <laughs> By the time I left, okay, it was twenty four. It was twenty four six before I could get out of there. Yeah, and, well, uh, it and, was fourteen three pretty quick. Yeah, right? and so uh, so I thought, okay, I'm not really leaving. It was never in doubt. I'm not really leaving behind a game that's in doubt, <laughs> right? And then the and then when I got home, really just in time for the LSU Alabama game mm-hmm. to to be to get into that that one of those games that you'll remember. You know, in in college football history, so I thought I really kind of got what I needed to. I yeah. think, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Clemson, uh, uh, Clemson, yeah, wow, yeah, well, that boy. wow, wow, wow. Uh, hello, whipping, um, <laughs> spanking. We'll, we'll talk spank. about that. The college football playoff rankings won't be out what till Tuesday night, but yeah. we have kind of a forerunner with the AP poll, and we'll look. Tennessee not punished that bad, just down to number five, mm-hmm. so still in the running. If they follow suit with the college football playoffs. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll unpack it for you today, and uh, talk about some fun stuff from the weekend. Hey, Liberty. Yeah, Liberty. Yep. Oh. Sitting at number nineteen now. I was at the wedding at the reception. Somebody walked by and said, "By the way, Liberty just beat Arkansas." Uh, and I was like, "Okay, wow." That added what about a million dollars a year to Hugh Freeze's <laughs> next <laughs> offer? <laughs> Probably. Yep. Fifteen minutes past. More of the Rick and Bubba show coming up. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Just to compensate for that. But right. I'm going to go to the range before I carry that one back out again. Mm-hmm. The, look, there's some guns and setups that just work with you, and there's yeah. some that you struggle with. Well, and this one has been the a The caliber learning. you're using, though, is kind of me, is the Primo deer rifle. Right. Well, it's a, look, it, it is if you hit the deer. Right. That's the key. What's the brand? It's Weatherby. Oh, well, you got to probably scope. You got to get that. At all, all that. It looked like something out of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, and when you, when, when you pulled it, the first time I saw it, I thought it's, to myself. It's augmented reality. I, right? thought, you, you, I saw that same gun, you know, who was holding it, a stormtrooper. Yeah, right. You know, you've got to get rid of that thing. It's, uh, it, it's, it's been a little learning curve. Mm-hmm. You know what you're trying to be, sharp? Well, no, just, hmm? just, just branch out. Right. Well, this is your version of the notebook that you got. Absolutely. That's all this is. This might as well be a, yeah. cur- a Colonel Littleton. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scope. <laughs> you know, Bubba, do you have footage of this? Uh, this uh, no, I, I don't. I'm sad, to, I'm sad to say I was so put off that I, I quit playing with all the buttons and tried <laughs> to just hit the deer. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, this is horrible. Uh, uh, Eight cool. shots. Don't forget. <laughs> and it was still alive when he got to it. The good news, while while Tom was shooting it, I got to fill out my game check. So, uh, <laughs> we, we laugh. Bubba, how about this? You did every. You, how about this? You did everything within the perfect way of handling. Unfortunately, you may be charged with animal cruelty. Yeah, right. We'll, right. We'll, we'll be back. Top of the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Bubba, how are you, sir? Glad to be here. Well, if you missed last hour, Bubba Head gave us range. yeah gave us the, the trials and tribulations of uh, deer hunting this past weekend, but eventually it did uh, bring in a nice eight-point buck. So congratulations yeah. on that. Yeah, uh, look good on the wall. You definitely took the uh, the long road there, but you got yeah. it done. Well, we'll always have a story when we got that Well, one. We, we will, so McGee. that one right there. No doubt about that. Shooter oh, McGee oh, had to work McGee. on that one. So, um, you know, I was kind of in the um, – and this is the great thing about, and I'm, I'll enjoy having it. Not that it's some great deer hunting place, but I like having a place, you know, to hunt that that is your own, and that way you can be a little more fluid on. Yeah. Ah, we may go, may not. Hey, let's go. So anyway, and and Speedy has documented this, and so have I. That if you've ever had, if you have sons, they reach this age. It starts about 13, and it lasts till they get in their 20s. Hmm. Is this this you know bizarre? They, they get to where they can't talk clearly, and they don't talk in full. <laughs> and it's just kind of, it's kind of like this. Hey, man, how's the team look? Good. 
That's it? It's almost Y'all ready the for the game? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Um, how was how was how was going to the peak of Mount Everest? It was all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so good. and it's so good. and so now, so my my sixteen year old who now has entered into that world, yeah, uh, says, um, "Hey, Dan, yeah, man, I'm gonna bring some guys down hunt this afternoon." Okay, that sounds good. Go say that in front of your mom. <laughs> you know it, and, and so uh, you know because they're they're responsible. He certainly could could light, but but I'm I'm not really to the yeah. point where I would say high powered rifles. Go down there with some of your buddies. You know, right. of course they need supervision. Yeah, sure. And sure they do, Rick. And uh, and that might mean that I may go out and hunt as well. Sure. You know what I mean? So so we get there. While I'm there. Yeah, and then, that. yeah, and then I discover. That we we have one, of course, that I was just around at practice that week. Who's supposed to be coming? I get the first word. He can't come. He's got the flu. Mm-hmm. Oh, and all I can remember is the last time I was with him, which yeah. was only yeah. a few days. And then uh, I find out late, late that one who's actually hunting is sick, which I didn't know to 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 after it was over. But what I gathered, I got the word. Hey, hey, he, 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 he ain't never shot a deer. I said, do you know? So you never did? And he said he knew how to he hunt, but he just never had been. And I said, well, we're going to solve that today. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm thinking about, we, you know, I love, I love, I never, it never gets old, somebody getting their first <clears> year. <throat> uh, and so, um, Bubba, I will tell you this. I was able to just give him one of our rifles. To which he killed a deer with one shot. That's great. You know what I mean. And uh, and 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 it was. Uh, and it, well, it, technically, it, I killed it with one shot. <laughs> so, uh, good point. If you don't count the three, it didn't hit him. I'll, I'll say that he hit him with one shot right, the first right, time, right. or her. So anyway, so I and I, you know how. And what's cool is, is if you got to play. And I said, you know, I, this is where I think you'll have the best shot to see some deer. And I talked to him about what you don't want to shoot and what you do. And you know, and he he seemed to be pretty savvy with the rifle, which was good. And we walked through all the safety stuff and how it operated and what that whatever. So um, so he uh, we went out. Twenty minutes now past the hour. We're Rick and Bubba's show. A brand new Rick and Bubba University the podcast. Yeah, uh, it it dropped over the weekend. Got great emails already from it. Uh, I actually saw Tom Messer yesterday, and I, I walked in and said, "Hey, I'm a podcast star." And but he was he was he was shining like a new dime. And uh, anyway, Tom Messer spent many years as an air traffic controller, uh, still a pilot, and has been for 20 plus years. Uh, it's maybe more than that. I mean, I think it's a low number. Uh, but anyway, he um, he talks about some of the um, more interesting topics when we talk about Sully landing in the Hudson. Uh, we talked about John uh, JFK Jr. and his crash, and uh, the Malaysian. Uh, where uh, where is this uh, plane? And hey, you know what he told us? If you haven't watched or listened to it yet, if we had today's technology, we would have found it. Uh, so they they made a technological move forward that should keep that from happening again. Uh, unless uh, he said the only thing that you wouldn't be able to find one now is if the pilot didn't want you to find it. Well, that may have been what happened with this one. And and he said that's not. That's not completely out of the question. but It, it just seems like with our mm-hmm. Defense Department satellites, I mean, we can tell if the Chinese drop a crescent wrench over there at an ICBM site. seems like we could have we could have found out. By the way, I've noticed was. you've used a, a whole line of analogies about how well we look at China. The crescent wrench is brand new. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I mean that, that, did that just come to you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a Monday morning special. One time Rick. I think you said sneeze. If somebody right, sneezed right, over there, right. break Our, wind, I think, right, one time. Right, I heard that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. crescent wrench. Wrench is brand new. Yeah, well, it's yeah. you know it's something I'm trying. Okay. I'm testing. It well, it's good. Like it. I liked it. Do you I, like crescent wrench or adjustable wrench better? I, go crescent. Is, I, yeah. I like crescent yeah. wrench. I know what it is, yeah. but it's just it, you got a crescent, you got mm-hmm. dogs, and you got pliers. That's your three. Here they dog? go. Mm-hmm. We're not none of, the, dogs. none of us even exist right huh? now. Channel lock. Oh, channel lock. Yeah. All right. And pliers so, are just your nine inch clients. <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer yellow or orange handle plastic on there? Blue. Oh, you like? Oh, really? You like blue? Okay. Um, all right, so uh, we have the AP poll, uh, and it's, I guess you could say it's somewhat of an indicator of what may happen yeah, tomorrow night. Yeah, I, I think it, it's, it's uh, you know, it's an early indicator. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they're not bound to follow it by any stretch, but you have Georgia at number one, well-deserved, Ohio State number two, Michigan three, TCU at the coveted number four spot. There they are. Uh, they finally have got there. 
Tennessee five, Oregon six. Look out, Bo Nix is making his way there. LSU hey. seven, uh, USC eight, UCLA nine, Alabama ten. Boy, I, you, you just don't see that much, do you? That's mm. a that's a strange look. Mm-hmm. Uh, number eleven, Ole Miss, Clemson at twelve, Utah, Penn State, North Carolina at fifteen, Tulane, North Carolina State, Texas at sixteen. I'm sorry, at eighteen, Liberty at nineteen. Notre Dame at number 20. Um, and then we finish out with Illinois, uh, Central Florida, Kansas State, Washington, and Florida State at 25. How odd is it to look and see Texas at 18, Liberty at 19, and Notre Dame at 20? That's just strange well, to me because Liberty's mm-hmm. such a newcomer to Division One, mm-hmm. yeah. And, of course, Hugh Freeze is doing a great job, just to ask anybody at Auburn. Right. But – um, to see them ahead of Notre Dame, which has always been such a traditional power when we were growing up, Wait, that boy, that hey, just looks weird. But, Bubba, it? you know this as well as I know it. You have been vocal about this for decades on the show, okay? I'm telling you, when I saw how bad Notre Dame beat Clemson. I figured they put them in the top five. That's tonight. That's tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah. uh, tom- tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, I want you to know that Notre Dame goes to four. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Let me tell you, it, when we were growing up, Notre Dame could lose three games of being top ten. It yeah, used to no, beat it, anything right. I ever seen. Uh, and, and it was just the voters. And, and the new Notre Dame is Ohio State. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Now, they look, yeah. I know they're undefeated. It's going to take Mm-hmm. I know they're undefeated right now, but I, I feel like they get preferential treatment, and, and they have for a long time. <clears throat> they should, uh, now, from what I gather, I didn't watch it. Test your mic, Hems. Testing, okay, one, good. two, okay. testing. Check, the, check, the, check. The, from what I, I didn't get to see it, but I saw the commentators talking about it, and then I think they pulled away at the end. But did they struggle with Northwestern, Ohio State Saturday? Uh, Twenty-one to seven. It was, the weather yeah. was real bad. No, it was, wind okay. was whipping okay. like yes. crazy. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. okay. very, very badly. But yeah. Rick, I just, and I just don't feel like they play the, there. They okay. play the schedule yeah. that the SEC plays, um, especially the SEC West. Good gracious. Yeah, especially the, you. You want to play Ole Miss, Alabama, LSU? You know, weekend Mississippi State, weekend week out. You know, versus, but in their defense, they play who they have to play, right. and they win 11, 12 games about every year. Yeah. yeah. They're so pretty you, good. You have to put them in no, there. No, I'm I mean, not they have saying to be they're, not, the they're not good. Unlike and, Notre Dame. Like, I think Notre, Notre Dame, Dame was good to, when we were growing up, but they it seems like they always – they outperform their field performance in the polls. Let me put it that way. Well, I don't have to deal with conference championship or anything like that. Yeah, so and I, I get your Notre Dame argument and agree 100%. Uh, but I do think Ohio State, of, uh, I don't like it, and I wish we could put four SEC teams in there, but you have to put other conferences, and they're really, really good. But, I, I, if but, them or Michigan, one needs to be in it. Well, if well, they went out. Well, here's I mean, what, yeah. And they, game, I know right. the score was lopsided, but there was a moment for about two quarters where they struggled with Rutgers the other night. I know. You're right. I heard that, too. Okay, do you rather play Rutgers or Ole Miss? Uh, it's not even a – I'm with you. Know, I mean, <laughs> right. you rather play Northwestern or LSU? No. I mean, you know I, what no, I'm I, saying. No, I it's do, just, 100%. Oh, yeah, weak. Well, I'll tell you what's it's so dangerous weak about – and, weak, weak, weak. and I do see the SEC working its way back into prominence where, like we said the day, that's better top to bottom, and it really hasn't been in, in the last few years, but it is now again. And here's a perfect example. What what also makes the SEC difficult is you'll look over and see Brian Kelly come into LSU and go, well, th- not this year. Right. They're struggling. They were struggling mm-hmm. early on. Mississippi State beats them badly. Yeah. I mean, they're not even in it. Yeah. Okay, Alabama beats Mississippi State like Mississippi State shouldn't even be on the field. Right. Okay, right. and then LSU comes back and beats Alabama. But what I'm talking about is the teams get better, and as all this, of them it, beat all of them beat Auburn. You're right, but the teams get better. <laughs> As the year goes on, so you would have thought early in the year, well, LSU, this isn't their year. I believe in Brian Kelly, but he's got a lot to turn around. And a lot of you are saying, well, they won the national championship a couple of years ago. Yeah, but that team was, what did they, they lose? Thirty nine players off oh, that yeah. team. Yeah, and and then you saw what was happening the year after. They they pulled like an Auburn in twenty ten. They Tank. won the championship and then they tanked real and quick. All of a sudden, and then the program gets into turmoil and Brian Kelly the gets there. And you say, well, look at them early on, man. And then all of a sudden you turn around and LSU's like. Hey, they're forced to be reckoned with. Guys, on and, October the eighth, Tennessee yeah, beat well. LSU forty to thirteen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The fans were leaving forty early. to thirteen, and you're right. Yeah, and and Mississippi State beat them. What? No, no Mississippi, Mississippi State, State lost. lost, but Speedy has said that they should have. Oh, that's right. That it was, was a close, the close one. They yeah. lost well, the other one. It was Florida Tennessee State. that ran them out of the state. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah, when we went, yeah. um, 
I don't know what happened in the second quarter of the Auburn game this past weekend, but it reminded me of the LSU game when we jumped out on LSU no, that and was all it. of a sudden yeah, just you're right. stopped playing with the energy and looked like we were moving in slow motion. Then yeah. finally woke up about two minutes left in this past weekend's game. But, no, you're uh, right. Mississippi State jumped out on them, and LSU came back and won at the very end, but they didn't look like – they were going to beat no, Alabama State, or whatever. And then no. Tennessee beats them, what, 40 to 13? Yes. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, LSU's making a turn. That that makes the SEC even harder because you have a team you think is not going to be very good. Then they'll start getting better. Yeah. And uh, and then they'll grow. But The quarterback's uh, playing a lot better than he yes, did. Oh, is. my goodness. Yeah. And, and I agree with everybody who keeps saying this same thing about him. He doesn't look like he's running as fast as he is. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and you look, and he goes off and leaves people, and you're like, yeah. I thought that guy was catching him. Yeah. The first snap yeah. of overtime? Oh, yeah. He took off. Oh, man. LSU so, had they're at Arkansas, then they host UAB, and then they're at Texas A and M. Well, now let's talk about Arkansas, the other end, the other end of the spectrum. Spectrum. We love that coach. We love how they look. Now they've just gone to pot. Yeah. And I mean, they they look terrible now. They had a big win over Auburn, Rick. Well, <laughs> the beating Auburn right now doesn't count. <laughs> Okay, because it's just kind of a place <laughs> thriller, right, right? Hey, by the way, Auburn yeah, fans, Auburn that's, fans, that's listen horrible. to me. Auburn fans, hey, look, appreciate the energy from Carnell Williams. And the situation he was put in, man, what the, the team got out there, they played hard. That's something that we all – enthusiasm. Those of you that are claiming he's now made himself a candidate to be the next coach at Auburn, that's ridiculous. A little quick. Uh, okay. Guys, look, first, hey, that, I, that, I, that, I hate that, to – I want to remind down. everybody they still <laughs> lost. <laughs> right. Yeah, they didn't win. Right. No, it's not, not I, like they won the game. Can you know I what? tell you the highlight of the game was watching him and Zach Etheridge running to give a timeout, how fast they ran down the sidelines. Mm. Of course, Zach pulled a – Hammy doing it, but yeah. uh, and that was kind of funny. But, but sorry, Zach. But but, funny. but really, all you really had it looked like was an enthusiastic player that told everybody to play hard. <laughs> this is not a head football coach at Auburn. No, I, I mean that, that, he's not the next <laughs> coach. Start there, yeah, right? Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. And uh, just like what Bubba was talking about is, um, you know, he 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 puts a, a doe down, kills his first deer early. Good and uh, well, you know, like about four o'clock, which is great, and uh, took a what rifle. A great experience. Took a rifle, you know, with just a basic scope he never had before, and killed a deer with one. Oh, right. Hit it the first shot on it. <laughs> but anyway, so um, what gun was it? Uh, it was a the seven millimeter 08. Oh right. And uh, so um, good scope on it, but I mean, just you know, didn't have any thermal stuff or any way to videotape. But it, right. it did, it did knock it right down, or a plastic right. thing to get hung up in it. Right. But anyway, well, I'm gonna so, fix that part. So right. anyway, um, I'm gonna solve that. So so then you know you're like okay. Tell me what happened. And he said, you know, deer went down. Good job. Struggled, got up, obviously hit, but did leave the field. Okay, we'll remember where it went out, and then we'll come, you know, I'm sure it's not far in there, but just remember where it went out. I said, no, really important. Remember where it went out. Hmm. And uh, but you know you know how it is. That, yeah. I, look, I've, I've become more. We've talked about this before. You know, eyewitness things are the, the way we oh, see yeah. things is yeah. just never like it really is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I've never been so thankful for a fence that helped us realize that there's no way it went where you said it did because yeah. she could not have got through there. You know what I mean? And so we went to where the fence was down. And and so when we're going, it's so funny because my son knows I'm going to mess with people. I mean, he knows that. You know what <laughs> I mean? A, yeah. That's a given. But then, and he he wants to think. So anyway, you know, the coyotes get the yipping. You know, they're they're rolling. Uh, and of course, Do all of yours Jordan, start that just when it, it's it's soon say, as it gets dark. Yeah, say it's hunting time is over soon as and you're back. Here we and go. Yeah, it's yeah. So what I of course what do I really immediately do with somebody that's kind of new to it all? I said, boy, we got to get to that deer. <laughs> Here they come. And all of a sudden, <laughs> sir, mm-hmm. I said, these coyotes are coming for it, <laughs> and uh, we may have a standoff. Mm-hmm. And and so it's I, I was so convincing <laughs> that all of a sudden I hear from the back my kid. You serious, Dad? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Clark, you serious? <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> well done, Rick. <laughs> That's a great delivery then. You, 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 you serious, Dad? Well, and you, so, you, so, you could, theoretically. Right. And so anyway, I, I, I said, uh, and this is where it always works really yeah. good. And we're, we're, you know, we're, we're trailing there and I think we're about to, you know, and the boys are doing a good job doing that. I'm letting them kind of do all that. And they absolutely going to pull the deer out. You know what I mean? Because they got to learn. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, so we we're getting there, and you know they're crank. I hear them cranking, and they're really not where we are. I can tell. Right. Know, I, but it and, sounds uh, like they are. And all of a sudden, I said, "Boy, here they come!" <laughs> and so, boom, quick, quick. So, so quick. everybody's like, and I and I said, "They're not really dangerous." 
Unless, of course, they're in a pack. <laughs> and then you hear, <laughs> <laughs> like that. And I, and I said, boy, that sounds like a bunch of them. <laughs> I said, that's the only time they can be dangerous. Yep. When they, I said, boys, if they get here, just let them have it. From, let them have it. <laughs> for, for in the darkness, I hear again. You, you, you serious, Dan? <laughs> Because now, you know, he's over there where, there where you can't really see him. It's just yeah. a voice out of the yeah. dark. Yeah. You just see that, that headlight. <laughs> you, you, you see what you're <laughs> <Dead. laughs> Boys, we better hurry. So, uh, so anyway, but I tell you, it, it, it was good to uh, – and, and so I felt bad for the dad of the kid because I knew that this kid's the same age and is in that mode. The dad's all fired up. I said, hey, let me put you on the phone with him. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, it's good. Very exciting. I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, and I thought, you know, the dad, you can hear the dad. Hey, words. Man, that's it, yeah. Congratulations. Hey, man, that's good. Get a picture. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, hey, did you give my answer? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> that was it. Good. You know, like that. Oh, okay, yeah. well, let's get a few pictures and. <laughs> And uh, bloody face up, and then here we go. And I don't do the full blood face. I just do the Indian thing. Cause, you okay. know, War paint. Yeah, and then, yeah. We, then make them eat the heart. So after that, <laughs> <it's>, uh, <laughs> that's always, I enjoy that moment so much. All right, let's put a little on your face here and get a picture. All right, now let me cut that heart out, and you consume it so you can be one with the deer. <laughs> Sir? Yeah, well, you have to eat the heart right in front of us. But, you know, just hold it like an apple. Take a bite. <laughs> you serious, Dad? <laughs> you going to make him do that? <laughs> Dad, you serious? <laughs> Curse them, Brody got up Sunday sick. So everybody, we all sick now. <laughs> all right. Everybody uh, sick. We all gonna be sick. Uh, mm. so, now, speaking of this, talking about college football a little bit. Obviously, we have the national championship tonight, and we're going to talk about that a little more. But it, now, what time does that start? I've heard seven so many our time, times. right? Seven right. our time. Yes. Seven Central, eight Eastern. And adjust if you're out. Somewhere. That'll still yeah. be a little tough. Uh, so it'll go, it'll go a little late tonight, but um, it will be. my fear, and this is the thing, we've all fallen asleep during games uh-huh. that were not that good. But my fear is that I could be sleepy, and because it's late and it's a work night, we're not going to get to have a group over and have a party to watch it uh-huh. like you normally uh-huh. would. Yeah, I get you to mind. And so you know, my fear is dozing off during a game. Thirty-five minutes. 35 minutes past the hour, the Rick and Bubba show, we're back. Well, town, it is, seems so hopeless. All right, so we're looking back over the uh, the weekend, college football we're talking about right now, because it was a wild, wild day in college football. And uh, Georgia uh, defeats uh, Tennessee handedly. Uh, Ohio State struggles with Northwestern, but gets it done. Uh, uh, Clemson is uh, completely pounded by Notre Dame, uh, so that was uh, that was a big one. A- Alabama loses to LSU, and Brian Kelly goes for two in the first round wow. of overtime uh, after uh, he uh, uh, he scores. And you would think, well, he's going to tie it up, and we'll go to the next round of overtime. He goes for two, and LSU wins it. Uh, so those are kind of the big stories from over the weekend. But home got- field advantage is big. It is. And uh, this time of year, it's even bigger. A uh, couple of quick highlights and funny scenes from the weekend. Um, I mentioned to you going into the break, Carnell Williams, who is a former running back, NFL great, and Zach Etheridge, uh, who is also a very celebrated Auburn uh, uh, former player um, and coaching. They take off down the sideline, Rick, to get a timeout, and I'm telling you, they are digging, both of them together. And you see the orange streak from their their uh, their their tops they have on go across. Zach Etheridge ended up pulling up and, and pulling a muscle, but it was kind of So, funny, look, they're you know? at the 45 yard line for those of you that are watching on YouTube. Look at them digging. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just look. Right One of them knocked <laughs> somebody over. Rushed in to get the timeout, ran timeout. <laughs> <laughs> look at Zach Etheridge. This is the first this charge timeout of the half. And Ike Hilliard may have pulled a hammy. Is that Ike Hilliard? Hilliard. Uh, I don't think it is. I I thought it was Zach Etheridge. I did too. Hilliard is on the staff, though. It may have been him. So I don't know which one. Okay, so well, I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know if you're a rider, the announcer. Look look at them running. But they are digging. That's that's really the funny part. Yeah. And they're they're moving. Well, I mean that's pretty good speed. You know. I told 
as it rushed in to get the time. Might be Ike. I think it is Ike, according to some of these articles under you. Yeah. Well, he could play back in the day. Yeah, he could. Look, look, what's funny, the funny thing I saw, because everybody was talking about the energy the staff tried to bring to the team and how they played with more energy and all that, and that, and that is to be complimented. The, the, the situation this staff was put in, and the fact that they were competitive in the game and had a chance to win it, it you have to give them some props for that. But uh, but what was funny, they said, you know your staff's getting after it when one pulls a hamstring trying to call a timeout. Yes. <laughs> and, I mean, I'm impressed with the speed they still got. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah sure. Um, and on the other sideline, mm. um, <laughs> uh, our friend, he – he was upset with the players, and he he took their chairs away. Yeah, Mike Leach. yeah. Mike Leach, um, a video twelve Adler. So they blew a three scored lead, and the offensive line is is looking terrible. Now Leach has been mad at his, at his receivers all year. Look, yeah. look, they, Rick, they, look. They, look. So yeah, I saw that he he's now taking the offensive That's chairs hilarious. away and says they're going to stand <clears throat> and not even sit down if they can't do any better now. That's That's right. Look, one guy's coming behind him trying to put the chairs back up because he's like, "Well, we still kind of need these, yeah. coach." Yeah, but look, they, Leach is like, "I'm done with this." And uh, and how about this? No no chairs, no <laughs> chairs. Got that shirt on. No yeah, chairs. He's got his call sheet in his left hand. Look 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 look. They're, yeah. they're, they're, look. So he says, hey, they will not sit I, down I'll again. I'll tell you no. that. Is, that is, <laughs> both of those are very funny. <laughs> that's, 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 off the field <laughs> action this weekend. Right. See, that's what makes college football. It really does. See, that that's somebody disgusted and mad because his offense has blown this large lead and 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 have stopped scoring and moving the ball, and he's done with it. You know, that's that that mm-hmm. I think sends a message more than hollering at somebody. You know, he could have been screaming up and down sidelines. No, I'm just going to take your chairs up. Right. right. But when they come down. over, when they come over to sit down, are they going to go, "Hey, where's our chairs?" Right. Right. Bubba, yes, in so. your defense, okay, I have pulled up Saturday Down South, which we all believe that's a that's a great little college football website, mm-hmm. and then you pull up Outkick. Yeah. Okay, which we all agree with is is great. I'm going to read you two headlines. Okay. Saturday Down South, Zach Etheridge, Auburn assistant. Offer status update following injury suffered during timeout. You go to Outkick, it says, Auburn assistant coach hilariously pulls hammy while sprinting to call timeout, and it's I kill you. So, I, I, I don't, know, one, I don't one. know which one it is. Well, I, I, but whoever was running with Cornell, they were digging. Okay? I agree. Mm-hmm. And, and I have to give them props on that yeah. for getting down there. Um, I think oh, you were right all along. I think whoever is saying it's Hilliard is is wrong. Can I ask you? Can I'm going to say this? If I'm talking about former players at Auburn, I'm going with Bubba over anybody else. One hundred percent. He he knows it more than anybody else. And and of course, Blake played on the same team as Zach Etheridge, but I either saw him in a helmet or as a young man. That's been several yeah, years. Yeah, I, I just saw so, there was really a, a good documentary uh, mm-hmm. piece about him not too long ago. Uh, so outsta- outstanding guy. Uh, so anyway, and, and Zach Etheridge actually put something out on Twitter um, about his injury. Okay, so I think it is Zach. Etheridge. He said, Etheridge. "He said I'll continue to give everything I have to serve this team. <laughs> they fight, I fight. I'm all good. No hammy pulled. That's what I get for feeling young. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll be a hundred percent for next Saturday night." And um, and he said, Auburn "At first, I didn't know if it was a, a muscle pull. He hits the umpire, or the, they the hit side, somebody the side, when yeah. they run by the, the side judge. Maybe or whatever. Charlie Horse. Who needs and, to get out of the way? And <laughs> yeah, and I, I didn't, I couldn't tell if they hit kneecaps or what. It just seemed kind of odd, yeah. but." I don't know. All right, now we got well, we Saban. we all know what it's like to take off running and to come up lame. No, no, how about so this? I, I don't explode on sprints anymore because the last time, every time, time I've tried it in my old age, I pull something. Yeah. So I ease even into a sprint now. The and, last and, time and, I tried it, Hams had to stuff me in the right, Jeep. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so now. <laughs> Never forget that day. <laughs> me neither. No, I, no. I'm sorry you got the bad end of the deal. Yeah, I, I had say. the pain, but you got the bad end. I think on that particular injury and Helmsley's role in it to help you, I believe the odds of one of you two forgetting it lies really with you. I think you'll forget it for, before Helms will. You know, Rick, the, I've never had to drive home with my left foot. And let me tell you something. And busy that's highway. dangerous. Yeah, it's busy. But if you're right, when you can't pick it up. What do you do? Anytime a commentator uses this phrase, I, and now you can, you're with me now because I caught Bubba when he when he grayed out because he, he won't say he uh-huh. passed out when he grayed out. I took his entire <laughs> and low his low center of gravity <laughs> is unbelievable. And so every time I'm watching football, somebody says, you know what makes him great is his low center of gravity. I said, you darn right it does. <laughs> I said, them bowling balls are hard to handle. You know, there, yeah. was somebody, yeah. there was somebody this weekend. They just weekend, bounce off people. And was it the LSU player that was about 5'8", 
running the ball? You know what? That might have been who they used low center of gravity on this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, there was somebody I heard them use that It term. was, by the way. It, it was 27 yeah, running through tackles. Yeah, it, it was. Because I, I knew I just heard it this weekend. And I was flipping around mm-hmm. trying to watch four games, it, and it was getting a little confusing. So. Yeah. Uh, by the way, d- d- tackling on defenses right now with all the new rules, I mean, you've got defensive players. They're not really allowed to tackle anybody. No wonder these people keep running through tackles because nobody's allowed to tackle. Right. Uh, but anyway, uh, so now Nick Saban, after the overtime loss to LSU, uh, we have him leaving the field, and and then we have another staffer uh, who needs a police escort off the field because of LSU fans. But notice if Nick Saban's coming off the field, his security team is going to be sure he gets off the field. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and so so, so watch, watch this here. Look, look, look. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, don't, yeah. don't. Approach yeah, it, the coach. No, do not approach the coach. Him coming off the field. Look, look there you go. Somebody tried to give him a yeah, yeah, and it, and and how about the Alabama State the officer Trooper? Officer was not putting Alabama that. State Trooper says you, that this ain't gonna happen. He's coming in there with his issue <laughs> shirt on. Yeah, and he's with his phone no. up, of course. Yeah, yeah, so that that's that's the end of that. Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, he's giving yeah. him a thumbs up. Look, yeah, right. two thumbs yeah. up. Double yeah. thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> All well, right, and they're they're still look, they're still a little sore at saving it. <clears throat> right. Well, but I will say for the Alabama State Trooper, when you're in these chaotic situations, when someone's approaching from the other team, you don't know what they're going to do. No, you, right. don't. Yeah. you nope. don't know. If you, you don't. Don't, if you don't believe that, ask the Tennessee fan up there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so then so the they, next they're so, doing their job. I don't. I don't. No, they have to do their job. They're, look, he's lucky he didn't get more than that. Uh, so now Saban, we got that, and then the staffer. What is this in in eleven B? Uh, uh, this is a this is a uh, Alabama staffer that needs a uh, police escort off the field after LSU, LSU fans started getting in his face. Of course, the staffer uh, is a a uh, Purple Heart veteran uh, who is the Alabama assistant director of player development. So the, the LSU fan probably doesn't want to mess with him, but. He, uh, he asked for an escort to get off the field. And this is what we were talking about during the kickoff hour. These uh, rushing the field moments, they're, they're, I mean, there's already been some stories, but it's about to get real bad when you have drunk fans or really, oh, yeah. really And this hi- guy's hi- obviously who, drunk in the yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who uh, really it? hyped up fans. I'm confused, too. Who, who's the staffer? Right, You see him walking right there okay. with the escort. Right I see there. him right there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, you just have them. You, you just—it's just, it's just a, a recipe for disaster <laughs> because you got frustrated players and staff trying to get off, and then you have excited or you know drunk well, fans if you want on to the celebrate field. your team. That's fine, but don't go engage the other team. No, no, no. no you need you I mean, need to see now. Watch Sheriff down here in the green. He really gets after him after yeah. the staffer source escorted off the right. field. So he watch got, watch he, this security guy here, the sheriff. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is when they get him off the field. See this guy. This fan of LSU is doing the right thing. He's telling Yellow Shirt, "Come on, man, let's just celebrate the win." He's trying mm-hmm. to keep him out of trouble, but he keeps wanting to come after the staffer, which is there, Bubba. You see him now with yeah, the short haircut. Yeah, yeah. Now, now when they go by, watch the sheriff in the bulletproof vest. He really goes after uh, Yellow Shirt and it, right here. See, look. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, yeah. It, you see. And you can tell he's drunk by the way. Everybody's saying, I got him. He's yeah. good. He's I got good. him. He's I got good. him. He's good. Yeah. I got him. But, but again, I know, when, and that's the problem with alcohol. When people are in the influence of alcohol, you don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. Rick, uh, you think they were drinking at LSU? <laughs> I know, Greg. No not, way. Not, a, not a night game. <laughs> <laughs> when the, I love when somebody said the other day, somebody said, well, you know, it might have been Tennessee. It was during the day. Yeah, he goes, well, you know, when Tennessee came here, frankly, that was 11 o'clock game. It's 11 o'clock game. <laughs> LSU at 11 o'clock in the morning is a different LSU. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, phone calls next. There's old Blazing Silverman. Your comments on the, on the weekend, 866-WE-BE-BIG. All ten lines available. Blazing Silverman taking your calls now. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Really want to be awake and watch. You ever do that? That's a legitimate fear. I've woke up and they're giving the trophy. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's legit. What happened? That's legit. Uh-huh. When you get up the time of day we do, it, it, it gets you. you just mm-hmm. It's hard to hang yeah. in there. Yeah, and I'm, I'm already starting to think to myself, all right, they say seven. Does that mean we're going to kick at seven? Probably or? not. It'll oh, probably be more like seven twenty. 15. Yeah. But, but if you're having a party or you're to get together and you're shoveling cheese in, you can stay awake. Yeah. yeah. But if you bring people over, you can't you can't go to sleep. You're going you no. got to ride to the end. The worst case scenario is go to bed thinking it's over mm. and uh-huh. wake up during the trophy 
presentation, and they're giving the trophy to the team that you had no idea was going to win. That's the worst. Something case. miraculous right. happened. Yeah, that's the they worst. Talk about a great comeback, and you yeah. missed it. Yeah, you see the notification when you wake up three overtimes, <laughs> and, blah, and you're like, "Good night, I, I missed it." Well, you, you could have some overtimes. There's tonight. no worse thing to go headlines of the day. Get your phone to get started, and the first headline says, "Wow, what a game!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll tell you Our this. game of the century. <laughs> I, uh, I cannot believe they're letting Beth Moen do it. No, Greg. Oh, I, I, I doubt you, Dan. That's good, Greg. Jammer Cox. No. Oh, you better what not. she said. <laughs> Welcome to Mercedes Benz Stadium. Oh, my gosh. I, the, I, don't look, I did I, that just for you, Greg. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Welcome to Mercedes Benz Stadium. Beth Mullins, I'm authoritative. Big, I'm as good as any guy. <laughs> I tell you what's going to have to have. Georgia's going to have to get a few touches. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, you want to go ahead and talk about new predictions? Yeah, let's do. Let's just do all right, so, oh, right now. So, yeah, oh, let's go ahead. All right, we oh, saw wow. the sports czar trophy is up for What? What is? We always get confused. Where did the trophy oh, go? Here we by go. The way? It was it's in, in your here. office. You see my your office? Yeah, yeah. you I put, won it last. Week. When I was cleaning up over the holiday, it was in here. Yeah. yeah. When I was cleaning up over the holidays, I put it in your office. Where is it, my office? I don't know. I put it on the floor with everything else. Okay. Oh, well, you know what? I went in there a minute ago. You can't see it. You got some scope covering it up. Got all kinds of stuff on it. So anyway, the, uh, <laughs> the latest and greatest. All right, so we're going with the. Are we looking? I know. We I know. We hadn't done it. Why is it uh, point spread or the exact score? Oh boy. Um. Well, it's as close, close to the exact score. Without yeah, every number you're off either I don't side. Remember, it's right. you, you add those mm-hmm. up, and whoever has the least <laughs> wins, right? Right. right. So we're going to try to predict the actual score. Yeah. Whomever it's and closest. And then we'll have a tie break, and it can be. Oh, and, and the tie break is all over oh, the road. Good. I don't no, think I, we're ever going to tie, but whatever. No. I hate our tie yeah, breaker. you just have one anyway. So our tie breaker will be who? Everybody's got running backs galore. Here we go. How about so, the, the total yards uh, by offense. the two Georgia running backs? So I, like I, like I like that. I like that. I like that. I like That's that. That's good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Combined Hansen. yardage. Adler, you get started. You ready? Just rushing yards, right? Yeah. Not all purpose. Just rush. Because it, it, we just have to start somewhere. I don't like this either. I, I have to go sit- second. As a sitting czar, I get to be last, right? Yeah, you do. Okay. You've bumped me to the last spot today. <laughs> of course, Dickie now We've never done that before, class. but yeah. yeah. Oh, really? We don't yeah. No, we never. No, we've stayed never. with the same but, order look, the you whole wanted time. To, to have some I thought fun. we did that. No, we've no, never done never that. Bubba wins it one time. He starts changing rules. But I think he should. Yeah, let you go run it. No, that wouldn't bother me. Go ahead, Adler. I want you to. The combination of the two Georgia running backs. That's the, the tiebreaker. That's just the tiebreaker. Which That's not, not a big deal. Okay, all right. I'm going to go Georgia 23, Bama 20, and the tiebreak uh, one, 150. Ooh. Dang, right. 75 apiece. What was his score, by the way? It's 23. Are you writing 20, 20, Georgia? Okay. Yeah, 23, 20, Georgia. Mm-hmm. All right. Elms? 31 to 10, Georgia. 31 the tide. Good night. The yeah. tide in a walk is what you say. Uh, the running backs will have a hun- have a bad night. Combined, a hundred and thirty-seven yards. Mm-hmm. I don't look for them to ramble. Yeah. They're gonna do a little bit, but yeah. not. I can I ask that's a good. question? That's, that's pretty good. How, how many? Well, I shouldn't ask that, should I? You can ask what you want. Well, you're the winner, dog. Winner. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I'm not gonna say anything. Go ahead. Who's next? Greg. Hmm. George is not gonna be able to run. Quarterback's going to throw. Damn, Bama's defense will at least get one touchdown. All right, I'm going to go Bama. Bama, 17-6. That's Low a score. Low score. What, what's the combo of the two backs? 85. Wow. wow. That gummit. They're shutting them down. Yeah, it's a good call. It is. I like, your, I like that. Up. All right, Speedy? Uh, let's see, Bama, uh, 31. That's no, just crazy, I know. Uh, and um, let's go. Georgia is going to be uh, ten. And that's what he said. That's that's Elms' guess. Is it? Is it exactly? Oh crap! Well, that's crazy. this is like ordering be. food at a restaurant. It is. No, I'll go. What did Greg? Tw- I'll go. Bama get? twenty-seven. <laughs> I'll go. Bama twenty-seven. Uh, Georgia six. And I'll go. The, re- the total yardage is. Um, uh, seven, uh, 75. Rick and Bubba's in Ohio! Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Here we go. It's uh, nine minutes to the top of the hour. Finishing up some of the bigger sports stories. Also, um, Houston Astros. World Series champions. And we'll talk about Mattress King Guy or Mattress, whatever he's called. Mattress Mike. Mattress Mike has done it again. 
So the Houston Astros, Mac, Mattress Mac, uh, world champions, and uh, saw Dusty Baker getting interviewed. I didn't realize of all. I'm not a big better. I don't keep up with that stuff, but it is a crazy story. It is. Uh, All that he has been, the times he's coached, I didn't realize that Dusty Baker had never coached a World Series. A champion. I would have yeah, thought I, Dusty Baker yeah. had about three of them. Seems yeah. like he's played in a bunch of them. Pretty cool to see him in his 70s yeah. and, and the emotion of it and his wife there. coming out there and all that. Yeah. That was a really yeah. cool thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, always liked Dusty Baker as a player and, and a coach. I don't know him personally, but I, I've always just kind of liked him. Uh, we remember when he played, don't we? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. For, for the Braves, the Bravos. Bolton County Stadium. Right. <laughs> Braves were good then. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Bobby uh, in Tuscaloosa. Bobby, welcome to the Rick and Bubba Show. Go ahead. Good morning, man. Hey, Love brother. the show. Thank you. Uh, one one thing I have to say about fans rushing the field, I think this could be settled really. Automatic bowl band for the team that rushes the field. Uh, that's my opinion. Wow. I don't yeah. know how y'all feel about it. I would, well, that would stop. I, I can stop. tell you how I feel about it. I, I would have to respect, respectfully disagree with you. I, I don't think you should punish a football team that's bled – sweated, broken bones. They go out there every day and bust their tail. They run the heels, and then they're going to be punished because their fans don't know how to act. I totally disagree with that. Well, and, yeah, I I don't like punishing players uh, for the actions of people who, you know, they have no control over. We've talked about this. Even back Mm -hmm. when the NCAA would put people on probation for something a booster did. Right. Uh, And the booster's long gone. They never get punished. They punish the kids, and Mm -hmm. I've always thought that was ridiculous. Yeah. But I understand your, uh, your sentiment on that, that we've got to stop this because it's dangerous. People are getting hurt. Now the the SEC fines people when they when they rush the field or the court, and I think it starts at two fifty and goes up. Yeah, right. You're gonna have to raise that. Uh, you're gonna have to make yeah. some exception. I mean, examples out of both students, whether it's kick them out of school and arrest. You're not gonna get them all. There's no way to police that. But right. you're gonna have to make an example out of folks before people take it serious. Yeah, yeah but, because they they've paid their 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 price and they think, hey, I can do whatever I want to yeah. do. But even if they if they cost their university a million dollars, they don't care. No, they don't. Mm-hmm. So until you make the people, and this goes back to crime or anything else, you have to make the people doing the offense pay the price yeah. for it. That's when it stops. Absolutely. Yeah. But don't punish the football team no. and the coaches because uh, you mean tell me you want to or sit there. Or even the athletic department. I want you to picture it being your, your team, not some team you don't like, but your team. Yeah. You've got you have grinded through what a, to, through a season. You're undefeated. This is a game nobody thinks you can win. You beat the team maybe you hadn't beat in decades, and your team has accomplished this incredible accomplishment. And you want to take away their playoff appearance or their bowl game because their fans ran on the field? No way. I'm not for that at all. No. Yeah, punish the people who are doing the crime. Right. Or uh, the offense, and that's going to be tough. Joe, well, look, put nets down there, grab them. Well, yeah. you heard, you heard my. We need to create this technology that goes around a border, and you hit a button, and an electric fence comes up. <laughs> yeah. Well, we saw Rick and I were at a game, and we saw a guy get on the field tr- that kind of tried to start everybody rushing the mm-hmm. field, and they tackled him and hogtied him. Yeah. Now, yeah. if you don't know what hog tying is, that yeah. means ankles and wrist yes. all strapped together, mm-hmm. and then it's easy Tough to bring posture. out a bring a pole out and you mm-hmm. pick them up and carry them off with. <laughs> yeah. it. They hog tied a guy, set him on the twenty yard line, and everybody else went back to their seats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the, what, what made that one work though is this guy ran on the field before the game was right. completely right. over. Right. He, got, he and, got out there on yeah. his own. And, it's and hard it, to stop that wave. Yeah, that wave's you, tough. Yeah. Now, yeah. hey, yeah. Notre Dame, y'all gonna rush the field for beating Clemson? Really? Then they rush it. Well, now they I, did. They I will. Did. I will say this: now people are rushing the field. It's just like standing ovations. Standing ovations mean nothing now because we give things a standing ovation that frankly don't warrant it. Yeah. <clears throat> and so now we're storming the field on games that really don't warrant a storming. Well, and to, we it, talked about this briefly in the kickoff hour, but you're going to have incidents like uh, Michigan and Michigan State that actually happens on the field. Yeah, that fight. And then, then you're going to really have an issue. Yeah. I think it was uh, Missouri and Kentucky that got in a little scuffle this weekend. No, you're right. So you're going to have something like that happen, and it's going to go really, really bad. Joe in South Carolina. Well, look at the LSU drunk that was yeah. just – imagine yeah, if something had happened somebody. right there in front of the players, yeah. and he would have jumped in. Oh, no. no, we're, We've had some minor things happen. we got a major coming. Yeah, yeah something ain't done. Yeah. Uh, Joe in South Carolina. Hey, guys. Uh, great show this morning, as usual. Thank you. I just wanted to know, uh, if possible, is there any intake for Mr. Uh, 
Admire, and can you include the word uh, crescent wrench, please, Rick? <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, we, I don't know when we're going to talk to Dickie, but it will happen again Woo! and probably in the next uh, day or so. Mm. Uh, let's go to mm-hmm. uh, Seth out of uh, Alabama. Seth, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I don't think you're going to be able to punish, you know, the 100,000 fans. Sorry, I got my kids in the car. Taking their daycare. Sure. Uh, you're not going to be able to punish the 100,000 fans, but why not increase the fine that the university has to pay? I think they have to pay like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. If you up that to say a million, yeah. you know, then the then the universities will then be incentivized. Yeah. To, yeah. You know, have well, Seth, security it, and keep. The, I can there. shed a little light on that. It is. It goes up at every offense. It goes up to like five hundred, oh. and then a million. And they count basketball and football. Mm-hmm. So your okay. offenses pile up, and every time the athletic departments have to pay it. But you, you think a, a drunk on the sideline uh, cares about that? Well, he I think what care. he's saying is maybe if the fine gets high enough, the university will care and do a the better job. Yeah, you security. have to increase the fines. Yeah, you're sure. right. It ain't going to affect yeah. the fans yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to. It's just you're going to have to decide you're going to stop. You're going to have a, to have to have electrified bushes down yeah. there. Uh, <laughs> Brandon, it will make you want to spend more money on somehow keeping them off field. It may be electric bush. Brandon and Troy. Boy, said he's done security before. That you did the NFL though, right? Yes, sir. Both college and NFL. Okay, good. All right. So, so shed some light on this. So, you know, typically, like when I did the Berkeley, Cal Berkeley, when they'd have a big game, and I tell you, I mean, that was a terrible place to work. But it's still, there was you could see when the crowd was wanted to come and storm the field. And typically there's like one guy that is your, you know, initiating this whole thing and getting that crowd riled up. Well, you know, if they start taking these people and throwing their ass butt in jail, sorry, you would have a lot less problem. You know, it's just like anything else. I mean, if you start arresting people for just walking into Walmart and walking out with their big screen TV, we just don't do anything to these people anymore. We just tell them it's okay. Yeah. You got to make an example. You got to make an example. You're right. Yeah. Well, you've got to do something that makes people go, you know, I just don't think it's worth it. And I don't think we're there yet. Uh, something's got to happen where you go, yeah, run on the field. But if that happens, uh, this happens, I'm not sure it's worth it. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. All right, so has everybody seen uh, the latest inflation numbers? Uh, well, we have to show show it on shows like this because if not, uh, then you, you almost get the feeling from the Biden administration it isn't happening. Uh, and, and so <laughs> well, they're the, telling you it ain't happening, and some, right? some of the statements from whoever is uh, running the country, uh, it really is bizarre. And, and by the way, I do not think that's President Biden anymore. Uh, I saw the other day saying whoever's putting the content on the uh, – uh, on the teleprompter, that's the, whoever's running the country because that's the messaging they're trying to throw out. He's just trying to read it. But, but let me tell you this: uh, diversifying with gold and silver now is a good is a great idea. Uh, and then you're like, well, well, who do I need to talk to? Well, let's say Allegiance Gold, uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the folks at Allegiance Gold can help protect your IRA or 401k with physical gold and silver. Now, if you prefer it, uh, you can have it delivered securely right to your front door. That, that is an option. Uh, their approach is different. They're going to focus on educating you. They, wanna, they want you to educate them on your financial setup and the, the plan that you currently have. And then they design the diversi- uh, how to diversify based on your situation and not uh, maybe somebody else's. Uh, so they customize, and it's long-term strategy, not short-term. Uh, so uh, talk to Allegiance Gold today. They have some of the highest ratings in the industry, and you can get their best offer yet, which is up to $2,500 of free silver, on a qualifying purchase, if you tell them Rick and Bubba told you to contact them, or you just simply go to the URL protectwithrickbubba.com. That's the best offer yet. Call them, 844-790-9191 if you prefer, and mention Rick and Bubba. Again, protectwithrickbubba.com. And, 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 you know, Georgia, you know. They're magical. 
both <laughs> both of them both of them in a bizarre game against Auburn showed showed us they're not they weren't as good as we thought they were. Yeah. They, just they, for a second. Just for a second, they looked bad, both of them. And I'm, but Alabama had a lot of injuries on defense. The defensive line obviously looks healthy, but their linebackers are still kind of banged up. You yeah. know, they get 33 yeah. back, and then he gets hurt again. So we can't forget that, that 33 is not playing. Um, so that's got to factor in a little bit. But uh, Georgia's good, but they're good if they can run it, like Greg said, and Alabama's very good against the run. Uh, so I will say Alabama will win the game. I think they win it uh, 27-17. Uh, and I think that uh, the the backs will rush for 92 yards combined. All right. That's a good guess. It's a good guess. All of these are good guesses mm-hmm. with their logic. So if you play the odds, I should pick Georgia because that makes me the – because Ad- everybody's – Adler. Adler's Adler's what was Georgia. his? 23-20 oh, Georgia. I was say, yeah. So yeah. That's right. Never mind. That's at Auburn. Scratch that. Uh, <laughs> that's at Auburn in it. <laughs> Yeah, he he hates the tide where she does Georgia. It's it's a it's a push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's standard. If you're an Auburn fan, this is the the game of two people you hate. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I guess it, it 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 is weird because you beat both of them, mm-hmm. and then one come back pretty and got handily, you, but one came back and got you. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, will that how big of how big of a oh home goodness. field advantage will that be for Georgia? None, none. It seemed to help them in the SEC championship game. It seemed to be a big difference. Yeah, or the fact that uh, Alabama, they also, that they also were playing yeah. something hey, that hey, what you're not getting. This is home field for the yes. Alabama Crimson. The Tide, Tide. has <laughs> owned They've Atlanta. played more games in there than the Falcons. <laughs> that, that's a fact. More big games, uh, absolutely. I, I, think, uh, I think Alabama will win. It will be 27 to 23. Or has anybody said that yet? Mm, I have They're not, all I real see close. That. We're yeah. close. I'm 27-17. And I think the two backs combined will have 125. So that's good. Um. Yeah. I, here's the weird thing if, in the Big Iron Bowl rivalry: if you're Auburn, you really probably helped Alabama win the national championship. Yeah. Yeah. Because they got sick. Because right. I, they didn't have to you, go to the SEC listen, championship. Game. You helped Alabama win by beating them. Figure that one I know. out. See that? It, that's a. And I'm not saying because Alabama, yay or nay, but it's just. That that needs to be fixed. You can't you can't be rewarded by not going to your conference. Here we go. Mm. Hey, with or anybody, Eagle. with anybody. <laughs> but if Auburn had just won the championship, they would have gone. Yeah, I know. I'm not saying it has nothing to do. And with if Auburn, Auburn had, Alabama, but, I just mean yeah. from a concept. If you're in the meeting, figuring it all out, you got You got to fix that part I, of it. Well, I, it's rare it's going to happen. But I don't think that if you're truly trying to get the four best teams, right. if there's a conference that has a lot of good teams in it, you're going to eliminate them by not. Taking it yeah. it's because they didn't win the championship. It's going to be rare, but I don't think you should take the option off the table. It should not be required. You have to win your conference. Yeah, you're going to leave out a lot of years like this year. You're going to probably leave the best. And I think it's also how how teams look in games too. It's not just where they win or lose them. How they how they look in yeah. them. And it's rare, but and it's going to be rare. But I agree. But you have to feel that way even if your team gets in though. You know, because if Auburn had beat LSU, and had beaten Clemson, and, yeah, and, and, and only lost, or maybe just beat LSU, and and uh, or maybe just LSU. They they might have been afforded the Alabama spot. Yeah. Well, I. I just think you got to fix that problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. No matter who the team is. Right. So uh, we'll be back. But they did get the four best teams in there. Which is what the playoffs are supposed to be. So there's uh, there's all the sports our predictions. We'll be back. More of the Rick and Bubba show coming up. Hanging it. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. minutes past the hour uh the rick and bubba show from the no-name studio out of here on the bleeding edge of technology uh, from sweet home alabama to the world thank you for being with us today uh, speedy the real greg burgess helmsy eddie van adler and rick and bubba intern blazing silverman taking your phone calls all here today and welcome back bill bubba bus Rick, glad to be here, and thank all of you for joining us here at the little party we call Rick and Bubba. So, Bubba, uh, let's talk weekend. 
uh, up, update us on, on what, how you weekend Well, went. We, we had a great weekend, Rick, but I, I did get out and do something that uh, a lot of people are calling dangerous. Uh-oh. And, uh, you know, I, I went into this knowing there were certain risks. Yeah. Uh, I weighed those. I tried to be prepared. Yeah. But um, I, I had to go ahead and, and try to get the job done. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are not aware how dangerous it is to water trees. Oh, my goodness. Water trees. Yes, watering trees. And we have video. If you'll oh roll it God. with audio, please. Oh, my goodness. You got the audio up? Oh, yeah. Right. Oh here I am walking up the hill. Uh, we have three little trees here that we uh, oh, Bubba. have in the backyard that will, you know, kind of give a little privacy as mm-hmm. the neighborhood develops. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. And I'm out here watering it and uh, well, getting ready to go. Please and tell me you're about. There's a lot of pine straw out oh here. Right. And y'all know pine straw oh, can be very oh, slick. Oh, Boy, can it. And yeah. you got to really watch where you step yeah. when you uh, are important. doing this. Uh, some uh, rocks uh, down there, too. Getting a little fast. He's down. Down goes Bob. Down goes Buzz. He's looking he's about as bad as, listen, this is, this is uh, maybe worse trying to see Bubba get up. <laughs> Bubba. Oh, oh, no. Oh, my it, goodness. Oh, it's oh, much no. Worse. Oh, 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 no. Oh, 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 my you gotta goodness. Get this, oh, oh my. wait. I'm worried about those rocks right there. <laughs> I know. He's uh, using them as leverage. Bubba, y'all. when did the video dawn on you that you've probably got this on video? <laughs> well, I, as I was Oh, he can't, still can't get up. He's still not up. There, come on up, big man. Come on you up, do it. big hog. There he goes. Hey. Oh. Hey. You know we got to see it again. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I mean, Rick, yeah. three times. I mean, come on, we got and Rick, as I'm walking back to the house, dusting myself off, I realize, hey, there's a camera looking right at me. Oh, I forgot right. about. Look, I mean, you serious about it right now? You going? You going? We going? We going on the trees? They gonna check on these trees? They I'm got a little plastic. Right around. A little water. I'm gonna water this. You got now, some green giants or now, big cypress? I don't know what they are. Now, but, you your, know, they'll get big. What are you doing right here? Just laying the hose yeah, down to run the, down? Yeah, I'm laying the hose, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go cut the hose off. Okay. I'm oh, done. I've done my water. Oh, I see. He's I'm stepping done. pretty lively. <laughs> yeah. right well, he's slick over there. You yeah, know, that that, pine yeah. Yeah. Wear golf well, shoes from uh, Oh, my goodness. Oh, right. oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and look, while I'm down, now I think, can I break a hip? Yeah. yeah you feeling that. everything? That's good to josh you the old liver around a little bit. <laughs> hey, uh, get up. Will somebody call the king's horses and all the king's men? <laughs> Hump is down. Hey, look, I'm trying to find... <laughs> I'm trying to find leverage <laughs> with my foot right, right buddy, against the tree. Yeah. So I can... <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Adler. Yeah, Adler's oh, got better. it now. He can give it to us as many times as we want it. What's that? <laughs> oh, what's you hit that, pretty hard. Dude. What's that music they put <laughs> the Castro Falls in? I checked my hip to be sure it's all right. I got that hip. I got that hip. I got that hip. I'm putting this on TikTok. I'll get a million views. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't lean up against the tree, Bob. Well, I did. Push he's pushing off right the tree. To... Oh, oh, that's wow. so good. Oh it's my much gracious. easier to get up if you have something to hold on to. Oh, that's so good. But I, I'm still in the pine straw. I'm thinking I could go down again. Uh-huh. Is your hip okay? You hit on yeah. that hip pretty yeah. hard. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. 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 The good news oh, is that your calcium must be okay. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that head jump. Yeah. That head go down too. Yeah. Well, you know yeah. what? I, no. <laughs> did it hit the ground? <laughs> did, the head, did my head I don't think your head hit. No, nah, but you, you just okay. whiplashed a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. If it had been, it'd been concussion. <laughs> <laughs> How about the sound? <laughs> that's a big deer coming. That is. That's a, that's your big boy right there. Oh. Hey, Mike, get ready. He's a shooter. Oh, my goodness. Wow, bro. Oh, oh, my goodness. Now, let me know when this happens so I can think about what I was doing. Uh, well, let's see. <laughs> so I can think about that's a great, what I was that's a good doing. <laughs> it was at... Uh, We'll see, uh, see it, it was it? yesterday. Four twelve, four eleven. Yesterday after. Uh, okay, four eleven. Oh, right before dark. God <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm Sun sta- was nearly down. I'm yeah. standing on stage talking to uh, to the uh, to the sound crew, saying, "I thought we were Ooh. starting at four. <laughs> oh man, that's. <laughs> <laughs> he was falling. Oh, we are twenty five minutes behind. Hey, be, oh, and I, let me tell you what's even. Make it's not. Hard. It's not funnier. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But but one of the things that uh, why this is is, is kind of odd, right? And uh, Greg Greg knows my my she's deceased now. My aunt Bessie, because uh, he actually God, lives on yeah. part of her old property. Me and Bessie were neighbors. Mm-hmm. And uh, but when I was a little kid, I was walking with my aunt 
from her sister's house. They lived next door to each other. And we were walking down, and my aunt slipped in pine straw and mm. broke her leg. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. I mean, she hit, and, oh, and it, was a, it was kind of— Pine straw's dangerous. It was bad. It was obvious this ain't And uh, she she was holding it together, and oh, uh, but wow. she said, hey, I'm hurt bad. Go get help. And yeah. I, I, mean, I was a little bitty guy. Oh, no. Bye and bye I had to rescue. run. I had to run back through the neighborhood <laughs> up to the sister's house to get help. And uh, so, you know, anytime you, you hit the pine it. straw now, I think, uh-oh, is anything yeah. broke? Well, uh, you, you laid there for a minute. I, was, yeah. I thought you was down. Right. Last two falls I've had have been in that backyard. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that's uh, one not time designed I had for a, us. I had a rock. There's a rock step. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, that's not designed for us at, this, at our age now. <laughs> but I'm sorry. That's, that's a bad design. I'm going to start wearing cleats out the there. Sound, the the sound sound yeah. makes golf shoes. It's, well, no, let me tell you, the last time I felt there's there's big rocks that you walk on, like for a step. Right. And sometimes. Sometimes they'll get a little slick, get a little yeah. moss on them or something. <laughs> can I buddy, I mean, copy? both feet went straight out. I, can I, watch this. Copy I didn't know we were going to be presented with this joy <laughs> yeah. today. Let me, when, yeah. when I came in and Bubba said, I got a video, I felt pretty good about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you this, it exceeded my expectations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I went and looked at the camera and saw it, I was mm-hmm. dying laughing. I couldn't hardly oh, yeah. believe oh, it. Yeah. You know what you did? You said, I'm not a friend if I don't share this. Well, no, it's yeah. not even me. It's just some fat guy falling <laughs> in the book. You know what I mean? What I love is is that you love us so much. You 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 gifted it I, absolutely because yeah. right. you, cause you could have buried that. And we oh, didn't I never respect know. That. Never know. Yeah, we didn't ever. You get props for that. Yeah. Yeah. Should yeah. I should I put it on reels or something? Yeah. yeah. There's oh, no, no telling yeah. how many views you get. Yeah. Hey, Fat let me tell man you, falls. Oh, Fat Man Falling. We all Fat love Man it. Falls in Woods. How about <laughs> Fat Man Falling? Even Fat People love that. <laughs> look, 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 trying, look, to, trying get to get up. I'm on all fours. But you're really thinking it's maybe my favorite part. You you remember Rick? Me and you, me and you both still not up. Fell in pine straw a few years ago. Oh, that's a bad. And we up. liked to never got up. Mm. I oh, mean, yeah. every time we got up, we fell again. And I thought, I don't need this to, to be an ongoing no, thing. Some of that. Oh, yeah. Adler, yeah. I've got a. Uh, when we do some more stories <laughs> from the weekend, can can you tell me the name of this so I can be ready? Because this is reminding me of it right here. Mm. Watching Bubba try to get up. <laughs> What's the name of the of the clamp that guitar players put on their on the neck of their guitar? Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm what? Capo. Oh, Capo. Okay. I, I'll need that for the story. Okay. How uh, in the world did they come I, up with Capo for that? That's oh, a good no. question. Yeah, I couldn't think of what the name of that to save clamp? my life. Yeah. There you yeah. go. How yeah. about yeah. Clamp? A little so, guitar clamp. When you both fell in pine straw, talking about what Bubba just mentioned, it's the best of. Mm-hmm. Y'all start talking about how your body starts communicating with your brain and everybody starts checking in. Oh, yeah. You know, like yeah. ankles to brain. Yeah. I'm good down here. Uh, hip with <laughs> hip. Yeah. Uh, hip. How are we doing? I, I, uh, I don't. A pretty remember. good hit there. <laughs> yeah, we took a pretty good hit. I think we're all right. Uh, we're going to come up slow. Uh, it wouldn't mind if you wouldn't uh, tell the legs to help us a bit here. <laughs> right. You know, I don't remember the legs. We the, both went the same way. We're good. <laughs> we're good. Well, none of us went the wrong way. <laughs> I don't remember the exact of that bit. I remember us falling. Mm-hmm. And, and it was like we knew the wood could get up. But I think you went down the hill and fell first. And for some reason, I thought, I can conquer I this. I followed you right down the same path. I can't. That's the first time that you and I have said, I don't think we can get up. Yeah. We fell so many times. Arms, how you doing? Well, we, we wish we were a little stronger for the weight we're pushing up. But uh, we're getting up. We're up go. We're up good. Look mm-hmm. how, oh, Adler, I like that. You can see the slide. Yeah, oh. boom. Oh. You see the vibration? I know. When well, of course there's vibration. Big man's down. <laughs> Bubba, can you put, can what if you, you look and there was a big that, wave came that, out of the bank? That made my liver quiver. <laughs> <laughs> what if any guys were rolling and ended up in the water? Yeah. I think that's how we got out of that fall we were in. We just rolled to the, to the asphalt to, to the get asphalt, out of it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Donnie. Donnie. Welcome Donnie. to the program, Donnie. Hey. Hey, how's it going? We're great. We're How are good. You? Donnie, be good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I just want uh, your opinion about how close you think the game's going to be tonight. Well, in well, Alabama versus Georgia. Well, we've got some predictions here. Here's, off the wire. here's what. Uh, here's, Hot off the wire. Here's what the boys say. You ready? Rick Burgess yeah. says Bama twenty-seven, Georgia seventeen. Bubba says Bama twenty-seven, Georgia twenty-three. Speedy says Bama twenty-seven, Georgia six. Greg says Bama seventeen, Georgia six. Helmsy says Bama 31, Georgia 10. And Adler says Georgia 23, Bama 20. Oh, my goodness. I'm thinking like 27-24. Who do you think is going to win? Alabama. Uh, of course, I'm roll tight. I, I always. <laughs> <laughs> so, are, can you – I mean, <laughs> you, I mean, would you ever think they weren't going to win, ever? 
No, I I, 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 mean, I believe Georgia have a great, I mean, a wonderful coach now because I mean they turn around in one year. He did it in one year, and that's just so much, so much is amazing that he did that just like Saban did. And I just to me, it's just like wow. I, I can't wait to watch it. Be honest with you, because I'd like to really know how this going. Well, really, out. Bama wins tonight either way. Because Kirby's one. They, <laughs> Georgia couldn't win until they got a Bama yeah. boy. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I it doesn't you. matter because that's the team's going to win it regardless. That's now. right. <laughs> Amen. Roll Tide. Thank you. Roll Tide. See you, buddy. <laughs> I wanted to know which way it was turning, left or right. I heard hear the blinker in the background. <laughs> I did hear that's that. That's all I could think of. <laughs> Bill Bubba Bussy. Everybody. All right. We have a good update, Everybody. we think. <laughs> the, re- the reporter from Texas A&M has been found. Yes. And that's she a, she good. is alive, and they say yeah. unharmed. Uh, and they found her in that area they were looking. No more details. She's being evaluated. And because of being around Greg for the last eight years of my life, all I can think about now is she faked the whole thing. Now, yeah. Helms. I, I, that, I mean, that is, I mean, don't be like Greg. You're not, not going to believe me. I'm not. I, y'all get on to me about it. But when we were telling the story, and I thought it might have been a little quick. <laughs> When she was describing, oh, a guy followed me, pulled in behind me. I thought that sounds like she's setting something up. I let it Greg. go. Greg, you I'll don't know. We go. don't. We well, still that's could, why I didn't say she it. She could have still been abducted, and just the guy let hey, her go. I say I'm just too. saying. I first thought that's easy. It's pretty convenient. I text somebody and go, "Hey, somebody." The range me. of emotions in this room, because when <laughs> yep. we first Sad. did the story over an hour ago, or probably two hours ago, Listen. it really bothered me. Yeah. Like that was a story that as somebody that's got daughters and what that yeah. bothered me. Yeah. And yeah. so then when I hear she's unharmed. And safe, I immediately go to your thinking. What is wrong with me? Guys, <laughs> I, honest, I'm not kidding. I just, I, I said, Greg, don't be that guy. But Did when you? I heard you, her describe. You, you must not say that a lot. Though. I don't. Oh. Let's see, I, or you don't listen. But right. I'm just saying. I thought, okay, it's a little soon. Let's give it time. But think about what I'm telling you. No, I you hear know? you. But I, but I'm saying it is. It is possible. That she also following me, pulling behind me. That she's off, also. Gotta, she's it's like I'm setting up. So when I do disappear, I go. You know, she said somebody was following. I know we live in times where that is not outlandish. And, and, and let me go ahead and say another one then, since we're on that note. We also found it over the weekend. Y'all know the Judge Roy Moore story and all that election and the Senate and all that in Alabama. And, of course, uh, to show our disapproval of Roy Moore, we showed them by sending a liberal Democrat to Washington to now vote against us. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, that'll the show um, that'll, that'll, that'll show them. Yep. Uh, but anyway, so, so Roy Moore – had you know all these allegations and whatever, and none of it was proven, and and of course you know there it, it cost him the election. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But um, over the weekend, one of the accusers' house burned down, and uh, so because of Greg, well, I mean, my Greg- first thought was one of these crazy Roy Moore people. Yeah, and that's that th- a possibility. Is a possibility thought she cost Roy the election and burned her house down, and they do think it's arson, by the way. Wow. But then there's that side of Greg oh, thanks, that yes. crept in and yeah. made me think, oh, I know. what if she burned her own house down? Well, let me just tell you, you know, this. To, 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 to talk about, you know, yeah. to be, to be, because well, they, they have raised attention. a lot of money for her. Well, let already. me just, because okay. they raised a lot of money to build a house back. But that's Greg. We're not saying now, that's people what don't happened, sit but, here and but, say that we said that the woman burned her house down. That's not what I'm saying. Or what you're saying, Emily but, from but Louisville did. Greg but, is a study in, in mooch housing. No, yes, and it's, it's rampant. It's one of his expertise. And, but here's the that deal. That What a weird, <laughs> by the way, by, by the way, what a weird human phenomenon, uh, Moonchild. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> then by proxy. Moonchild by proxy. Oh, by proxy. Further. That, that's wicked. Uh, but if you were, say your job is, hey, Greg, you investigate where the house is burned. That's what I do. Or, and I go with this one. I go, you know what? This Roy Moore thing, like you said, you know, it could be some, it, we've determined that maybe somebody did say it. Idiot. It could be some of the idiots. But I also have to go, but also, I mean, I got to look. It could also be them. Now they I did, mean, that's that. Twenty-one minutes past the hour, of the Rick and Bubba Show. Eight six six. We be big as our number as we make our way back. So, Bubba, thank you for the gift of the video, buddy. Yeah, you you are welcome. Now, I had the hose laying up for the three trees, and mm-hmm. I watered them, and I, I left it laying there, and then yeah. I was going to go back and cut the water off. Yeah. To make this story even funnier, I'm I'm. You know, trying to shake Wait a minute, it did off. Did you just say make it funnier? <laughs> yeah, trying to shake it off. All I right. see the camera. I realize I've got a video of it. So I'm making my way back in the house. I forget to cut the water off. 
You were, too, you were so shook up yeah, by the whole thing? I did. I did. One of my neighbors, and, and thanked him very much this morning for cutting the water off. I left it running. Well, you just had to leave the area. When something like this happens, you have to you, <laughs> you have to, to go. leave. You got to leave the area. The last down. three falls I've had have been in this backyard. One on a slick rock. This slick one. Slick rock. And one I got tangled up in the boat cover and fell. Picture it. <laughs> hey, boat I, cover took listen, him down. I'll have to find it. I think I have the boat cover. Oh, Bubba, please, right, dude. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Like and boom. boom, he's down. Yeah, so uh, but, safe. I think he hurt that move right there. Yeah, and then okay, a little better. Yeah, I was checking the hip to be sure. It was a little better. At first, you know, I thought she was down. You know, when you're elderly, your hip's the first thing. Oh, yeah. Did you when you got up? Did everything feel okay? Yeah. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Bubba, did you just call yourself elderly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look. Y'all, the, the sound, sound of, of the leaves. leaves. <laughs> well, Bubba, Bubba, to his credit again, he said, uh, be sure you pot it up because you'll be able to hear the leaf. I mean, he, 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 brought, he brought it in with a bow on it. I mean, he, uh, he came in yeah. with yeah. a gift. Uh, that's awesome. It, and oh, what man. is it that we love so much? And it's really not great. It's not. It's not great. a great thing about human beings, but we love people falling. We do. I know. And, and, uh, we, we used we, to watch, uh, and I dare you, I dare you not to laugh when you see somebody fall, oh, especially if they're a little rotund. Our family, when the kids were at home, we watched America's Funniest Home Videos religiously. Oh, it's a, oh. and the kids when they were little, they called it the accident show. That's and, what and, they called it. And I will still watch. Hey, let's watch the accident. That's if, why it's still on. Oh yeah. If I swing by, I don't. It's not appointment TV. That's now, right. But if yeah. I swing by and I see it, I am there till it's over. Yeah. yeah. No doubt. Hey, no hey, look can, how many hey, years it's been on. Because it's funny. Hey, can we watch it again? About three hosts have died. Can we watch it? Can, yeah. can we watch it again? Uh, yeah. Alfonso Ribeiro. Look, we can just pull it up anytime right. if we need yeah. to. And, I, and this is it. I mean, until, this until, the time. Music I, until, until later in the show. when Until <laughs> later. Yeah, I've got a little music this time. <laughs> until, until later in the show and when I have to have it again. But right now. Let's, 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 let's see. Okay. through the leaves. <laughs> Looks like a big I old bug. The camera picks up good. Then. It really does. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and to put this in perspective, Rick, and I, I, I have to tell, I have to tell myself this too. Ten years ago, October, I'm playing for a national championship in tennis in Tucson, Arizona. Right. Ten yeah. years later, I'm stumbling in leaves. <laughs> Good night. I, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm glad you're okay, buddy. Hey, I'm fine. Yeah. So and I'm Didn't glad hardly leave a mark. Right. And, and I'm and I'm glad the uh, I'm glad your neighbors That's cut true. the water off. But after yeah, that, you're done with the water. Well, the trees ought to be watered for right. a while. <laughs> That does show, dirt left. That shows you your mindset. You just walked on past the the, the turn off. Just saying, yeah. I'm done. Rick, I was just trying to get back inside and you know take inventory. Sure. The uh, that yeah. Well, I, I hate you had that kind of way. Is that would the rest of the weekend go okay? Um, Besides that, was that day this the fall? Um, and the wall. You know that. Yeah. I, you know, I really wasn't attached to any football games too tight. You know, yeah. I tried to kind of let go of that. Well, uh, yeah. Hey, let me tell you what I love how'd about the Vikings. Do uh, they, they won? won. Oh, they, they won, won again. Yeah. Yeah. Watch out! Did you know <laughs> they won? By the way, didn't know. By I the gave way. a PSA this morning to Bubba the deer no population idea. in the state of Alabama because this is about to dwindle. <laughs> yeah, because nobody's playing for anything at this point. Right, you're right. Yeah. That's true. Deer, look really. out! Yeah. Can I tell you this? Am I? Did I have this right? Because I, I I had an active weekend. I'll run that down for you. The highlights. <laughs> but somebody walked up to me last night in South Georgia, and said, do you realize, now I'm not sure how this game I'm watching on my phone is going to go, but I believe that there's a chance that when tonight is done, and I don't know how it turned out, so maybe I'm wrong on this. It may not have happened. He said that Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady will both be 3-6. and six. 
Yeah. Tom Brady won. Uh, yeah. And Rick, Aaron y'all lost, lost to the Lions. I'm not y'all. I'm not y'all. <laughs> Yo, guys. He just he put you into it. <laughs> I like when Bubba like he didn't know that the Vikings had won. You <laughs> hear about the Vikings? Yeah. Hey, yeah. how did that happen? Well, he, you know what, what he's Do being. Y'all know if the Vikings won? <laughs> he's trying to be. He's trying to be smart. <laughs> I get it. He's trying to be smart. <laughs> what is this video of Kirk Cousins in the ice bath cutting up or something I just saw? In the what? I don't know. One of them ice baths. Yeah, oh, Bubba, are you ready to it. say that you're wrong about Kirk Cousins? Uh, right. How you like that? How you like that? Remember the time he came through mm-hmm. the locker room? Hey, yelled Kirk, at hey, Kirk. Talk, talk to me in December. Kirk, Kirk Cousins is what yeah. eight and one. There's no, there's no awards for looking good in November. Well, how know? about this? Kirk yeah. Cousins is eight and one. And you're laying in the lease. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> how you like that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I hope I hope he does really. good. I think he's a good guy. Well, been, but he really is somebody. We've been you in a get we've been in a book with Kirk Cousins. Well, y'all got the, you got the bills. You've been a book. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're in a book. With That's Kirk a, you remember when Lance Ingram did the book with the had hundred. I'm mad at you because I wanted to see if he could come up with. Well, it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, that's why I, I, I just believe said it. we're in a book. With I know, but I wanted to know if you knew the details, like the name of the book. Right? Yeah. It was. Let's see. Bubba, you were clear. Lance Ingram did it. He's the author, and it's called. Uh, let's see. What is it? Look, uh, he don't know either. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, he, no. He, he's going to make sure he gets it right. Right, yeah. yeah I really don't remember the exact name of it. Yeah. It was something I think about, it's Bubba, uh, Rick, and Kirk. Uh, <laughs> no. It's, uh, there there men, he goes. Men of God give their, the put in home. their two cents. That's it. Did Bubba. you just. <laughs> that's it. Uh-huh. If that's not. How about this? If that's not the title, it should have been. <laughs> I'd like to see you get on board. I don't know He's not Kirk an ice bag. I really had a headline. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to say the name of the book? Do we want to say the name of the book? Yes. What is it's it's Warrior. No, that, no, that, that, was, that was his first book. United for Victory. United for Victory. United for Victory. That's it. That's it. That's it. United for Victory. Okay. What did you say? I thought Warrior. I thought it was Warrior. That was his first book. God put in there two cents. Or his Bubba cut subtitle. It's called United for Victory. Subtitle. Men of God put in there two cents. That's so good. You know you have to have a good subtitle. That's it right there. Y'all, I can't remember that stuff. I just took a tumble. I know. You know what? We're we're thankful that you're not hurt. Yeah. Yeah. No, we really are. Yeah. No, I, I'm like a, I'm like no, a, man, straight up. Straight I'm like up. a bumble. Sad I about to say it. But yeah. yeah. Can, can I ask you a question? Let's say you fall and you are hurt. Yeah. And you're laying there. Yeah. Did you have your phone with you? What was uh, the plan? Yeah. yeah, it was you in my okay. pocket. Was okay. Betty if I, there? If I didn't smash it. Was Betty there? Not at that moment. Oh, no. You didn't have anybody there? Oh, no. What if he'd have been no. stranded Of course, the sale signal so bad. There, Bubba would have been stranded. Somebody anybody. help me. I tell, you who won't, I tell you who won't find you is the mailman. Don't have to worry about that. Where's Coach good. Pearl? Help me up, Coach Pearl! <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Bruce! Bruce! <laughs> They're not booing, he's saying Th- Bruce! <laughs> Thanks to you guys, I haven't seen Coach Bruce, Pearl in a long time. Help you, Daddy Bruce, I'm down! <laughs> Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. That's an option. Now, I don't know if it's true right? or not. Now, somebody said they found When there's a murder or a disappearance, who do they look at first? They look at the family. No, they right? do. Yeah, now, the now somebody said, now, I don't know if it's true or not. They found horse tracks around it. <laughs> but, but now, <laughs> I, I, I don't <laughs> now, now, <laughs> You need to leave. No, no. That, that could be. That may not be true. This is all allegedly <laughs> reported. <That's good>. <laughs> <laughs> Where was Sassy? That's all I want to know. Rick, Rick, get Sassy in here. We got to talk Just to him. Just a just a piece of like an old vinyl vest it looked like. I don't yeah. know. I'm just saying you got that is an option. Is just, that is, is, is an option. Is it just me or is Roy's vest smell <laughs> No, no, no. no, no You've been, no, you been building no, pressure. No, Rick's true. joking. I'm kidding. Oh, I know it's too soon. It's trouble. not yeah. as soon as Adler was. No, Adler oh, was like the votes yeah. weren't even counted. Boy, Adler. finally, boy, finally the they early got finally got wind of that, didn't they? Well they got mad over that weekend, didn't they? They did. Started Thanks, shooting Adler. Email. I told you it was too soon when he was doing No, it, it was. It yeah. was too soon. I knew it was too soon, too, and I just I just thought I just was looking Well, we it. had confidence when, that he knew what he was doing. When he came in on, when, he, not when, right. when he came in on the horse, I thought this is fantastic because <laughs> yeah. yeah. that was funny and I don't care anybody get mad about that, that just funny. needs to laugh. <laughs> but then there was some commentary in it that was way too soon. Yeah, of course, my, of course my dad never says anything about Adler stuff. 
called me right after the show, and that's the favorite one he did. Yeah, yeah. I had oh, no, no. a lot of that. I no, got I'll, some of that. I got some of that, too. I know. I, I had but, people that really kind of surprised me. I know. They said, no, they, <laughs> they, 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 said they couldn't breathe. I know. <laughs> that it had them down. I was a little surprised by it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Guys, but, I mean, it, like I said, the polls had just closed. When he, right. It was I mean, way too soon. <laughs> no no question. And I'm really in sort of the but almost too soon mode. <laughs> but I ain't gonna let that horse comedy go. That's just too That's good. Too no. good. Right? Anytime right. you bring Sassy into the conversation, oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> Rick Sassy's a mess. <laughs> and you know, if you don't want it brought in the conversation, stop running right on. Uh, there you go. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, uh, the yeah. fact that he almost <laughs> fell off of it while leaving the pole, <laughs> it got a little out of control. Yeah. <laughs> you see how she got her name, didn't you? Did a little sassy. sassy. She is sassy. But again, Beautiful. I'm not saying the woman burned Several her house down. Water. But if you're investigating, I know, I know. It, you <laughs> and I saw, I saw. I'm I'm look. I'm gonna tell you something. I I don't want to out you right here, but I'm going to. You love the horse humor. I've always loved horse humor. Oh, everybody right. knows that. Yeah. yeah, I don't anybody. I love <laughs> <Right>. horse humor. <laughs> you know why? Because I, I don't like. I'm scared of horses. Today. As a matter of fact, I want to thank you for riding up on a horse today and teaching us about diabetes. <laughs> 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 Have you checked your blood this morning, <laughs> <laughs> Wilford? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. <laughs> Doesn't he ride up on a horse now? Yeah, I think he, uh, he got yeah. tired of chasing Tom Cruise in the firm. Is he alive? I don't know. Rick, uh, here you go, Rick. Bob, hey, you're Bob, I don't think he is. Can I tell oh, you? I can't comment on. No, it he was I just knew. in those commercials. I think if he's I knew, alive. I can't comment. He was just doing commercials. I'm going to Speedy. They're not live. Yeah. <laughs> You'll bring her. Right? I know, <laughs> <I'm saying>. but, <laughs> hey, hey, Speedy, Princess Leia was in Star Wars that I saw. <laughs> right, right. Too. right. But I mean, yeah. I haven't seen a story that he has. Speedy, passed. they don't stand out in the field and go, "All right, we've got another break coming up. We got to do another diabetes commercial." Yeah, I know, but somebody, I haven't seen him. Took the satellite. I haven't seen him. Wilfred on that horse. He is alive and well. 83. 83 I right. love Wilford Brimley. And he is on a horse in the commercial. Rick, I love him. I don't know anything. need to apologize I don't know anything about him. Today. I don't know anything about him. He may be a raging, goofy lib. Look, I don't know. Look at Bubba. But when I see Wilford Brimley in any movie, I'm <laughs> yes. going to sit down a minute and I'm going to listen to him. I love that man right there, and I wish I was on a horse next to him. Rick, when he played the Maybe great Pop Fisher in The Natural. Oh, my god. You don't gosh. get no better than that. You know, my mom always wanted to be a farmer. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. My daddy wanted me to should've, be a baseball player. I should have been a farmer. Uh-huh. Suit up. Oh, so, my goodness. I gracious. bet Wilford would love Shooter McGee. There you go, Bubba. Oh, yeah. This is you, Bubsy. I wish I was out on Wilford. Bubba Brim- the farm. I wish I was out. <laughs> <laughs> There's Bubba. <laughs> well, you know it wouldn't be me because I wouldn't be on the horse. Do a few simple things now. I'm not perfect, but I try and watch my diet and exercise, and I check my blood sugar. And I get all my diabetic <laughs> testing him. supplies from Liberty Medical. If you're 65 or over and on Medicare, call Liberty. They can help you live a better life. Hundreds of thousands of people Don't trust Liberty. Delivery? They're the nation's oh, leader in home Don't delivery of diabetic testing You supplies. know what? I check my diabetes. I ain't even had it right. because I love him. Fill out your insurance forms, even you, bill Bob. Medicare or your insurance company, and you pay no money up front. Oh, and they carry all the brands. If you have diabetes, you check your blood sugar and you check it off, and there's no reason not to. You can call Liberty. No, we got to split. They can help you live a better life. For more information, I love how he rides off. He's in water. I don't look like Adler. Adler, where's that cowboy hat at? I don't look like Wilford Brimley. Good Rick, well, Rick you just, you just your outfit. You get a mustache. Well, he, he has a blue vest on minus. Yeah, but the same color. style. Let me tell you something. He's worn that one before, too. <laughs> Rick, you get, you get a white mustache and get a cowboy hat on, we got some. Uh, but you're right. Yeah. He's the best spokesman in the world. I love him. Rick, he could talk me into one of them reverse mortgages once I get on <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you could. You know what? I, I... It is 35 minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show. Thanks for being with us. Uh, our number 866 we be big cleanpods.com slash Bubba with the Rick and Bubba show. A whole new way uh, to handle the cleaning around the house. It is revolutionizing the industry and the industry's taking notice and uh, it's a smarter clean that they deliver. What do you mean Rick? Well you order packets of, of concentrated pods Uh, They send you five commercial-grade spray bottles. Uh, Drop in the pod, whether for cleaning glass or cleaning countertops or floors or whatever you need. They have a variety. Uh, And uh, you drop that pod uh, into your spray bottle that is now yours, and all you do is add water, shake it up, and go. Uh, I want you to think right now. If you're, I don't know if I don't know about this, Rick. Well, right now I'm going to ask you a question. You just bought a new spray bottle of cleaning. Uh, from the grocery store, did it cost you two bucks? No, it probably did not. 
It was more than that. And with the price of everything going up, it's a more efficient way to do it. Uh, a lot of the harsh chemicals of the past are gone. It's a better way to do it, and it does the job. So uh, any bundle that you get right now from cleanpods.com slash Bubba, uh, we will get you uh, 10% off in free shipping. Uh, so put the look. You have everything to gain, and 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 if you're right now, so I'm still skeptical. Well, then try it. Just, just go ahead and try it. And those who have tried it are loving it. And right now, you get 10 percent off and free shipping with anything that you get at cleanpods.com/bubba. A smarter clean, and it delivers the job at a lot less money. Uh, so so do that now, and uh, and and jump into the new way to clean. All right. So Bubba, uh, we talked about the weekend. You you've you've brought a piece of gold for us. Thank you for that. No problem. Um, the I have nothing to compare to that because that's going to be the gold of the day. I've even even have listeners saying that they would like for us to loop that on the screen behind us in the studio so they can watch see it behind us no matter what we're talking about. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so anyway, um, active active weekend. Uh, we talked about this. Uh, Speedy, you know, who loves this kind of stuff, even saw me. Um, I, it's one of those weeks where you watch the week progress and you realize starting on Thursday, mm-hmm. uh, starting on mm-hmm. Thursday, uh, things get real active. Uh, so I, I gave you the recap from, uh, mom's birthday. That was, that was going to be Thursday. Friday, um, I, um, ended up having a, you can't have nothing, had an air conditioning unit with issues at the farm, mm. had, had to go do that, had to get back in time for the men's chili supper. At my home church, uh, we're, we're, we're doing the men's discipleship strategy from themanchurch.com, and Rich Wingo coming to speak to the guys, and we decided that we would have a chili um, supper, meaning the men would bring in their chili recipes. Yeah, but you ever notice, Bubba, with you and me, and this has happened to us, Speedy, Greg, Helms, Adler, we've all been there. You know, when, when you're when you're kind of the person they, they have to say, hey, you're here, you're kind of running this, we want you to kind of keep it going – you know, we're not real good at getting all the details of the things they want us to do. We just kind of know in general what's expected right, of us. Right. So I'm not speaking. All I've got to do is the church announcements for the men's ministry, introduce Rich, and make sure that the chili supper's, you know, like it's supposed to be. And But there's people there at the church that were doing a magnificent job of getting everything set up, and they really, really did a good job. And I was so thankful. Um, but, you know, things sometimes can surprise you. So... One of the things was when I got home from the farm and said, hey, I got to get to the church, Sherry said, well, hey, take this chili with you. And I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not bringing chili. I said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the, you know, as far as the lay leadership of the church, right. um, I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not doing chili. No, we had, we had somebody in our class <laughs> oh, no. that said that because of their digestive problems, they can't handle anything real spicy. Mm-hmm. So for them, I have made a bland chicken chili that is not spicy. Oh, well, how and, nice and I told them, to no, no. Is anybody ever, <laughs> when's the last time you tried to ride in your truck with a crock pot full uh-huh. of chili? Uh-huh. <laughs> it's not fun. It's you not better wedge it in between something. Yeah. Yeah. No, anybody no tried way. that lately? Yeah. Lock her down. It's almost impossible. So we're getting out packing. Uh, 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 yeah, we're getting out. You know, we're, we're getting out tape, packing tape, <laughs> coming over the top of the top. Oh, but no. chili is a liquid. Yeah, it, it is. And, so, and, and, the, and you know, the broth will get up there on the top, and yep. the meat and everything starts settling to the bottom, oh, yeah. but you have to yeah. stir it up. So now that broth, it's very, very thin, sloshy, and trying to. To keep it from being able to get through the top of the crock pot is uh, is almost impossible, and we're getting old towels and packing around it, and it's in the floorboard of the of the passenger side, <laughs> and I'm in you know lift kit, which is not exactly the smoothest riding thing on the planet. I mean, it's awesome, but it's yeah. not it's not you don't get in it for a smooth yeah. ride. Yeah. No. and and I'm like you don't get in the back seat to cut diamonds. No, I said I said <laughs> like no. those commercials I used to have for Ford. I said, you remember that? Yeah, I said Sherry, by the time I get to the church, all the chili's going to be in the floorboard. And she's like, well, I don't know what to tell you, I, you know, because she and I were teaching on Sunday, and she's like, I'm, I got to get there. Our, our thing we're doing on Sunday, you just got to get the chili and go, and you know, just work it out, you know. And and so I'm like, oh man, and and so I knew we were gonna have all these chilies. And as I'm riding, I begin to smell the the chili in the truck, which yeah. means just it's coming out yeah, onto sure the towels and into the floorboard. By the way, have you ever tried to get chili out of the grooves Ooh. of the of the rubber floor mats when it drops down into the grooves? That's tough, right? So there. anyway, we get oh, there, right. and then I do that little walk over to the table. You know, trying to hold it and, and, and set it up. And just, How did you look doing that? Yeah. Is this a worst case scenario for you? Yeah, I'm huh? like, I'm like, I'm supposed to be like running this tonight. I'm not one of the chili guys. Right. Matter of fact, I'd never be a chili guy. I'm not the guy that brings chili. That's just not who I am. I don't, I don't like dealing with this kind of stuff. And so, 
but she's doing something really sweet. Of course, he didn't come. But anyway, oh, uh, yeah. saw that saw that oh, coming, no. saw that coming a mile away, saw that coming a mile away, <laughs> and uh, so so anyway, uh, so now I'm stuck with the chili. Nobody wants. All right, so wow. so anyway, um, so so I get there and I'm early, and you know I'm going to meet <clears throat> Wingo, and we got, I'm going to try to help set up and and all this, and I get there, and now I get there, it doesn't start till six, and I'm there at four. Oh. And I get there, and somebody's already there, and he's out there, and I see him like he's really working on stuff. He's cutting up onions and all that. I thought, this guy's going to make his chili right here. And so I walk over to Mike, and and I even told myself, Rick, don't let the chili supper get out of hand. Don't don't start going to do a bunch of chilies and all that. You're going to well, get in this service. You're going to get in this service, and – and the devil's gonna come call. Oh, okay, well, I got you. Be careful with the chilies. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and just don't Somebody's eat it. And just, and just don't eat a lot, Rick. Right. Rick, Rick, you don't need to be eating a lot anyway, Chubbs. So don't. You trying to do better? Hey, hey, Greg, Greg, you trying to do better? Don't let this get out of hand. Yeah. Rick, now, you got twenty chilies. Now we all know this, and I've told y'all loud and clear, and all of us have it. All of us heavy people who try to do better. There's certain foods that are not good for us, but they just own us. Oh, they yes. own us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and we can't get them off of us. We try to avoid them as best we can. But if that food shows up, it owns you. Mm-hmm. It, it's like being in baseball, and there's a pitcher that you just can't hit. Yeah. <laughs> you don't. You something about his delivery. You, I can't yeah. touch this guy. I can't even foul one. Mm-hmm. Well, there's certain foods that have that kind of hold on fat people, and so I walk up and I said, "So you doing chili?" He goes, "No, I'm not doing chili." I thought, uh oh, there's a new food in town. Mm-hmm. I said, so what is this you're working on over here? He goes, you ever heard of Johnny Cakes? Johnny Cakes. And I said, uh, no. He goes, and of course, this owned everybody when I announced it later. He goes, well, some people call them hoe cakes. I said, let's stick with Johnny. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go with Johnny. And uh, and I Johnny, said, it is. And I said, I, yeah, I'm. Should have <clears> told <throat> me that. I said, I'm kind of familiar with that, but what what are we talking about here? And he goes. You want me to just break it down for you? And I said, yeah. He goes, it's cornbread. Oh. And I thought, oh, gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. He goes, he goes, I got loaded, and then I just got the regular. I said, uh, what? He goes, well, they're going to be like pancakes, but it'll be like pancakes Ooh. that are cornbread. Oh, man. Look oh, at that. Buddy. And, and oh, I, That looks so and, good. And, and I was like, what now? You're making a cornbread <laughs> pancake? He goes, oh, I'm making several. I said, would these be sitting here for us to dip in our chili and eat? He goes, exactly. Oh, really? And I thought, it's over. <laughs> I thought, I yeah. thought, I thought these Johnny Cakes can do with me whatever they want. <laughs> and and I, I'm like, I'm like, I, I said, this this will own me. I, like I won't. Look to that, guys. Guys, that's pretty impressive. Guys, guys. <laughs> Hey guys, hey guys. Hey guys, guys, hey guys, hey guys. So then, then 22 chilies show up. <laughs> okay. Johnny and your, cakes and your, are there. Okay. Yours ain't getting touched. Uh, and so, and the Johnny uh-huh. cakes are down there. I'm trying not to bring a lot of attention to that. And so, and the guy really worked hard on too. And for me to take them for myself was wrong. But eh, f- well. the people eventually found them. But anyway, so, <laughs> what's that down there, Mike? Soon? I have no idea. Uh, but anyway, so uh, there's a griddle over there. No, nah, I don't think that's what that is. That's probably out from the last gathering. All right. So, anyway, um, so then it happens. The church staff comes over and hands me this sheet of of all the chili numbers and hands one to Wingo and then says, try to find one more. Y'all are judging the chilies. We have three prizes we're given to in, in these categories. I said, no, no, you want me to take a taste of 22 different chilies? Uh-oh. And, uh, and, 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 that, get and then get, I, I said, but what, what, what about Johnny Cakes? You know what I mean? <laughs> and I said, that, that, and, and Wingo looks at me and goes, Rick, I'm speaking. I'm not, I can't try 22 chilies. And, and, and I said, I, I didn't know, I didn't know about this part. He goes, did you not, did they not talk to you about this? I said, I'm sure they did. I don't think I was listening. <laughs> and I, and he goes, were you and I, are, and so Wingo and I, then finally I grabbed the third and it's the. It's the guy who replaced Brody there, uh, Jared. I think's his name. Okay, he's the videographer. Rick, can I Brady. remind you of something? Yeah. West Alabama. I know. Fair. No, no. There was a guy standing out there. And he goes, "Y'all gonna try all these chilies?" I looked at him. I said, "Let me tell you a little story about me and Bubba." Uh, it happened at the at the West Alabama Fair. Was it State Fair? Yeah, what it was? West Alabama something I, fair where we tried spam dishes. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you and remember it's what about happened? Twenty three of those. Mm. Yeah, I do very well on the way home. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> that's the, that's the last time I had to pull over on the side of the road for that. So when we come back. Um, I'll tell you, and 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 I look and I said, I said, buddy, the only way we're gonna get through this, I mean, we're literally gonna just have to get a spoon of each one. We had to do the hottest, most creative, and best overall chili. What? And uh, and and do you realize there was a guy that made his chili with the wagyu meat? 
Mm. And I thought, that's really stepping up. I mean, that's that most expensive meat in the world. We'll be Rick back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I, don't, I can't tell Dave Ramsey. He made me buy a whole life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Think about Loa trying to make up for it. Fires to the end zone. Touchdown! Alabama wins! Y ahora sí despertó el público. Taigo Baloa con el pase largo. Tiene a su hombre. Touchdown! Alabama is el campeón! Three receivers right, one to the left. Straight back to pass. Going deep. Throwing it down the far sideline. championship down the left sideline and wide open behind the defense one true freshman to another third down here's Tua stepping back loads up looks long throws end zone touchdown, touchdown Alabama Devontae Smith touchdown Alabama and the Crimson Tide has once again ascended to the top of the college football mountain. 16 yards, second 26 on the 41, they say. Tungo Vailoa going downfield. He's got a man open. Oh, my God. Touchdown. Alabama has won it. We just lost him in the secondary. Too deep. Chase, I've done the best. Oh, boy. They get excited. excited. They do, buddy. Well, well look, the Latin people are very fired. A lot of passionate. A lot of fire. Yeah. And, Rick, let's be honest. If you've, you've had to sit through a lot of soccer games, that was exciting. Well, it was. Well, well, well just said. Just be honest. And once that. again, Bubba and I said, when you listen to the Alabama radio network with Eli Gold and you go back to the miracle kick and all this, color guys, and when they see it happening, they can't be quiet. No, they'll, they can't. They'll, <laughs> they'll jump the play-by-play guy. Yeah. Touchdown! <laughs> <laughs> they blocked it, Eli! <laughs> You're all over there. Eli's done all this training. He's like, thanks, buddy, for taking away the national championship game winning pass from me. Right. Georgia Radio didn't have any of that, though. No, they didn't. They were like, wow. So that I, the happened. Georgia one was pretty. It was real, is what it was. <laughs> yeah. it, was yeah. it was so real. Yeah. I, I mean, that is a great way to put it. So real. The well, last one was the coach's film room yeah. uh, that was on Coach's ESPN. film room, then the SEC network, and all oh, that. Yeah. So we got a bunch of them. Sure. It, it, I, mean, I hate to say it, I kind of want to hear some of that again. We may have to hear that again later. It was it, <laughs> it was a game for the ages. If you're people who have to get up at the time we get up, you, oh you kept gosh. waiting for the tide to go away so you could go to bed. Right. You right. kept waiting for the, you know, and I, I said this uh, earlier, and, and, I, and I know I've already told all the guys, so they're going to have to hear it again. You know, I, I've always been very impressed with Coach Saban because I think he, he – anybody that thinks if he's not the best college football coach – so far, at least you put him up there with the best, no doubt with that. That the move last night, because when you, even though the quarterback for Alabama Hurts is a phenomenal player, an incredible athlete, and it seems to be a fine young man, he in the games that Alabama has lost with him at quarterback, and there'd only been two. Mm-hmm. Think about that. Out of what twenty <laughs> um, seven? Right. Is it looked just like that game last night. Auburn was able to do it and Clemson last year was able to do it to a degree. To say he was able to be, you know, go down and score the, you know, everybody forgets Hertz did score the what should have been the yeah, national the championship winner. winning yep. touchdown, but he did it with his legs, mm-hmm. and said when he throws the ball, he he struggled, you know, being accurate, and 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 he also if he doesn't see anybody downfield, and you get him going towards the sideline and kind of corral him, he either runs out of bounds or throws it away. Well, that was happening again. It, it looked just like the game they mm-hmm. lost in the Iron Bowl, and and Nick Saban said it is not going to happen again. Now, we may lose anyway, but we're not going to lose yeah. this way. Right. And so he made a change and, 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 and put somebody in there. He said, if we can't throw the ball down the field, we're going to lose. Yeah. 
And uh, and so he he puts um, the fre- a freshman in, and there were two plays. One being the one right before he threw the touchdown pass, and then of course the interception, mm-hmm. where you thought, okay, Saban, you brought the freshman in to, and, to get the drive you needed. Right. Now get him back out. Yeah, you know what I mean. He he looked like a freshman on that particular play. But but I think Saban thought and looks like correctly our offense in this particular game against this defense. I know how this ends because I saw it in the Iron Bowl and I saw it to a degree against Clemson last year. It's not going to happen again. If we lose, we're going to lose a different way. But, and there's a lot of coaches that would not have made that move. Yeah, they, well, would, it, they would have stayed with what they've been winning with and they would have lost the same way what, they lost the game before. What right. would they say, Rick? We're going to stay with the, the one that brought us to the dance. Right. And, but We came up with the plan that we would just get a spoon and we would try each one of them and never commit to – too much of any of them, uh, but being very, very careful along the way. I did see a few guys during the service have to get up and excuse themselves, which I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> um, and um, you know, at one point, I think uh, uh, Wingo, uh, must, he was mistaken that a guy was breaking wind. He thought he said amen. And oh, uh, But anyway, so um, <laughs> so we're, we, ju- we judge and we get that done, and uh, we, we, we handed out the prizes. And 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 it's and it Who happened. Um, you know, I can't remember. It was just numbers. I think number five won most <laughs> unique because this guy said, "When you take you, when you take my chili, put these pickles in it, which I'd never seen." Oh and he had a little jar of pickles, <laughs> these kind of spicy pickles. Oh, yeah. And I must say, it was incredible. Yeah. And then I think maybe the Wagyu guy may have won. I mean, if you go to that extreme, he won something. And then we had one guy, I think it was 22, that was blazing hot. I mean, it was, it, 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 when you see caution on the ticket in front of it. Well, and, did, I mean, one bite of something like that can. Yeah, I know. It was dangerous, Bubba. I mean, I was living on the edge. And I, for some reason, and I know you've made these kind of comments, but only the big community. And, and if you're a true grubber, do you think these things happen? And you're going to completely understand me. But the audience will think, what is he talking about? You can't back that up. For some reason, I thought the Johnny Cakes were giving me some kind of padding. <laughs> I, I, thought, I, 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 thought, I thought they were acting as, as that they were helping. It's like the, bread to soak r- it up. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so, so I didn't – you know, I told you Johnny the Johnny Cakes. Cakes owned me. I mean, they absolutely owned me. To the level, when you have the kind of accountability around you like Rich Wingo, because, you know, Rich, you know, he's straight to the point. And so, and he did such a good job, and all the men there. I mean, they were still talking about it yesterday at church. How much they were impacted by his message, and um, so anyway, just a great job. And so I'm sitting there, and I didn't realize how many Johnny cakes I'd had. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 so all of a sudden, I turn around, and I'm talking to him about a chili. Look, and I've got one in my hand folded up, and he goes, "Hey, how many of those you had? Have you had enough Johnny cakes?" <laughs> and I said, "What?" He goes, "Johnny cakes." Hey, you got to stop with the Johnny Cakes. He goes, how many of those have you had? I said, I, I, I don't know. I said, they, they can do with me what they want. Yeah. I, I really don't have any idea. He goes, is that a loaded one? Do you know, have you now gone to the one with onions and all that? <laughs> and I said, have you had a loaded one yet? He goes, no, I haven't had any of them. He goes, how many of those have you had? He goes, I got to tell you right now, you got to be done with the Johnny Cakes. I mean, there's people upset with you. Yeah. This guy can't keep up with it. Okay, we got that you like the Johnny yeah. Cakes for the great, for the good, good night. <laughs> So I don't know how many of those. You know how you just, you yeah, know, like, yeah. like I woke up the next day going, I don't know how many Johnny Cakes I ate. I have no idea. <laughs> so then the next day, Saturday, you know, this was the day. And thank you. Uh, you know, our audience, they don't forget anything. No. And all, they won't let you forget All anything. weekend, they would email me, you're probably at the wedding, so you're not seeing this. But, wow, what about that play? You know, this kind of yeah. stuff. Oh, and, yeah, um, yeah. Kind of like good. we did you when you had that one that missed the Alabama-Tennessee game. But uh, but you know what the uh, it was uh, it was a beautiful beautiful wedding uh, it, it felt good because this was a wedding where uh, Brooks Big Love Burgess we didn't realize this did you know that that Big Love Burgess Brooks has not been home since he graduated L- last May I mean this past May so we he has not been home and I didn't realize that we went to see him once but mm-hmm. I didn't realize he'd not been home. Yeah. So, uh, so these were all his, uh, a lot of his buddies he hung out with in high school. So they all got to see each other for the first time since they'd all graduated college and whatever. And, uh, so, it, and I got to see a lot of these, these, they're not kids anymore. They're young adults that I had not seen in, in a long time. Used to be off the house all the time. So I really, it was a, it was a wonderful thing. We had a great time. Uh, Sherry was, was pretty as ever. And of course, the problem you have with your kids, if they're at the wedding or in the wedding, is you know, Sherry and I, we gonna dance. 
Okay. Oh yeah. Oh. When when the DJ starts and the DJ he he noticed me pretty pretty quick. You gotta yeah, drop it like it's yeah. hot. And and Sherry and I are at the table. And what I like because one Sherry Burgess, she can dance. Okay. Really. And what I love and and she had decided to wear some shoes that that give, gave her a little lift. But I said you're gonna be able to handle those. You know, walking through gravel. You know, with the parking lot. And she goes, I don't know. It'll it. it so we we brought backup shoes. But what's funny is to watch, so, you know, because especially Caucasian people, <laughs> dancing for us is something we have to kind of crank it up. Mm-hmm. We, we are now beginning, we're about to start to dance. You can see us winding it yeah, up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so. Building to the crescendo. Right. So, so you could tell that Brooks really didn't want us to dance, uh, yeah. but we were going to. But, and, yeah. uh, and I said, oh, your mom and I are about to hit the floor. He's like, Dad. He goes, Please don't. he goes, the wedding party is going to, we're all out there having fun. I said, oh, we're coming. I said, don't think we're not going to the floor. As soon as I, you know, finish this little bit of plate, because, you know, I ate a bunch of Johnny Cakes last night. So <laughs> I am not eating a lot tonight because I'm trying to get back on top of it. But as soon as I finish this little small plate, I'm out there. And your mama, your mama's ready. I said, I'm, your mama, I'm, I'm about to release her to the dance floor. And I'm going with it. <laughs> and, so, and so he's like, are y'all really? I said, absolutely, we're going to dance. So what's funny is to watch Sherry, you know, because she's she's she. I, I'm I'm behind her going to the floor, uh-huh. and Sherry has this little move she does that when she hits the dance floor when she's cranking up for yeah. her first uh-huh. move, and all of a sudden I'm watching those heels, and all of a sudden they're just walking around, all of a sudden they start picking up a little rhythm, you know what I mean? And they, and they do that little that little walk, hey, that's me, and the, and of and course I'm dancing, and of course Sherry says I have this same move, but it's a good move. I mean, let me stay where I'm comfortable. Let me let me okay. get right in here, right. Yeah. you know. And she told me that she goes, now stay off the hip thing. Don't don't be out here. Oh, I mean, this yeah. is a wedding. This is holy, <laughs> right? You know, I said, well, sometimes my hips, I can't, I don't yeah, know I what they're gonna I do. I can't control yeah. my body I, I when, they, when the beat takes well, over. But, what am I yeah, supposed yeah. to do? I'm not doing a dance with a name, so yeah. I, the beat, just like Johnny Cates, takes me where it wants yeah. to go. Yeah, you I'm know, not driving the bus. I'm riding. <laughs> right. You know? If that bass jumps down here in these hips, I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> it's like an adventure. You know, what am I supposed to? Hey, hey, oh, that hips feeling it. Yeah, and so I could literally see. Have you ever looked over at your young adults? eyes and this is gonna happen for Adler and Hams when it gets there and they'll almost plead with you with their eyes yeah, please, please leave yeah you know what I mean yeah, yeah they do yeah and they'll, they'll one eye will say I love you don't take this personally the other eye saying please leave for me <laughs> for me do it for me Dad. <laughs> you know and finally I was like well I guess we'll wrap it up and then I love the fake oh y'all going oh and I, I said you are so glad we're going <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, you can't. I mean, the 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 air you're gonna breathe when you see me sh- that door shut behind me. You know, and he goes, "No, I, it was good. I'm glad y'all were here." And and th- the dancing, thank y'all for. You know, that was fun. Awesome. I said, so, "We didn't embarrass you out there, did we?" <laughs> and he goes, "No, it was great. Just, but that was plenty <laughs> like that." And I said, "Well, look, when the, I said when the dancing queen gets ready to go to the floor, I'm going with Watch her." Out. Yeah. And so, um, so we we had a good time. The wedding was great. And then when we come back, I'll tell you the final uh, part of the weekend leg was Sunday. Um, it's not a good, it's not good news. But the way it was handled, uh, and, and the and the position I found myself in is going to own you. Oh, now again, nothing compared to what Bubba brought today because the, we'll we'll thank him for that for years to come. Right. But um, I mean, that's Mr. Allen level, don't you? It think? is. Yes. Yeah. It's it's fantastic. Oh and the fact that you could have hid it from us and you didn't, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. you've endeared yourself to me even more. Look, falling's funny if they don't get hurt. It is. It is. <laughs> Top of the hour. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Times that get your foot stepped on. It, it was incredible call. I mean, I, I'm thinking too. I, I thought if Hertz comes out in the second half and does not move the team that he might put him in, but to come right out and say, hey, we're making a change, enough of this, and uh, even with his mistakes, um, to do that. And and I thought the, the guys calling the game, he, he's played some this year, but it's been meaningless snaps. It wasn't yeah. when the game was on the line. So, you know, props to him, man. And, and can, you be any, can you be any more impressed with him just as no. a – a human oh, right, being, right. and uh, and the way he handled himself all the way around. Hertz handled himself with class, yeah. even though you could still tell tell because he's a competitor. It was tearing him apart. Yep. Uh, and uh, you know, somewhere there's an Alabama kicker that's like, wow. I mean, and and you know, and here's and I had two fold on who, that. Who didn't get to start? I was screaming at the TV for two reasons. I was saying, if you want Alabama to win, and I really, honestly, with not trying to do anything, not trying to do any proper marketing, whatever, I really didn't care who won the game. 
I, you know, I'm not some rabid fan for either team. I, I love great football, and it was a great football game. So I was in a great situation. I could actually enjoy the game. Mm-hmm. Right. But then I started thinking about the Czar Trophy. Yeah. And I started thinking, <laughs> right now, the Czar Trophy is going to be won by Adler, Bubba, or me. Yeah. And so for me to win it, Alabama needed to say our t- kicker's terrible and go ahead and punch it in. Mm-hmm. If they had gone ahead and scored in regulation, I would have won the trophy. Yeah. If, 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 the, if the kid doesn't throw the touchdown pass, Adler wins it with the exact score. 23-20 Georgia, mm-hmm. and then the the fact he threw a touchdown, Bubba got it within one point. Yeah. So Bubba is the – he will continue to be the czar. But Thank right you. there at the end, there was like three three plays that were going to decide who won the trophy of three of us that were still I in know, the game. Yeah. I know. So it was um, – you know, you, it's weird when you think about the czar trophy and you find yourself transitioning to that at the end going, all right, I think I'm just going to try to win the trophy. <laughs> yeah. I know. You know what I mean? You yeah. start thinking about that late in the game. Hey, hey, how close am I? And when the kicker missed it, I said, y'all should have go ahead and tried to punch it in. I would have won the Czar Trophy, and you would have won the regulation. I think Coach Saban's style works so well for the college athlete. Not sure it works for kickers. Yeah, yeah. But he needs, a, he needs like a Latino kicker that doesn't understand Bubba, English. Rick and Bubba. Breaking down the national championship game uh, last night. What a game. Georgia and Alabama. Uh, and Saban even said that after. I love his first line. Was that a game or what? You know, he, he said, I'm asking you a question. <laughs> <laughs> was that a game? And it was an, an incredible game, and it'll be one that'll, that'll last, uh, you know, and we'll always remember it and refer back to it. And uh, Alabama, again, uh, dominating this era of college football, taking five of nine possible championships. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, really and, um, and so, a uh, great game last night. Here's Coach Saban right after the ball game. Here we go. Oh, was that a good game or what? The resiliency of our team to come back in the second half. Tua did a great job, gave us a little spark. Defense picked it up to overcome the adversity of missing the field goal in regular and then go and win the game in overtime. It's a great football game. You got to give Georgia a lot of credit. They really played well in the game. But I'm so proud of our players for the way they come back in the game after the first half we played was not very good. Yeah, and it, my, I, I love watching football with my wife. I truly do. We, we have a blast with it. Now she's oh, she's strictly big games, big games only. Right. And uh, and so we're we're sitting there, and uh, Betty didn't even know it was on. Really. And, <laughs> and Sherry said, she goes, Coach Saban just he looks miserable all the time. She goes, mm-hmm. is, is he enjoying any of this success? And I said, Well, that's probably what makes him successful. He's never he never thinks it's the way it needs to be. Yeah. Right. And she was so happy to hear him say he was happy after the game. Right. Because she's like, I just want him to be able to enjoy this little. He does <laughs> never he looks like he's just fighting the whole time. You're right. You know, and I said, Well, because he is. Uh, yeah. I think that is his happy place though. Fighting I do, all the I time. Do too. I think people don't You're right. realize that. You're right. Is that is statement. his happy place. Right. Yeah. Is he, when he's he, fighting. He's down in the weeds getting after it. Yeah, Let me tell you and, something. And I think he hates losing more than he loves winning. Well, you know, right. That, that, it, it may be. He, first time he looked a little because I'm going to tell you what. That move to go to the backup quarterback. I, I think, I is, think Dickie Dymeyer said, it, said yeah. it best last night. Yes, he did. Yeah, he I totally did. agree. And I'm going to tell you what. Because <laughs> you, you easily could have a, a backup <laughs> freshman go in and, and be a little, just a little antsy, uh, you know, and throw a pick or throw a pick six and the game's over. You know, mm-hmm. it was it was amazing. Well, and I even because I'm not to the level, you know, Co- Coach Saban is 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 great, and I am not when it comes to coaching football. But I, but I, I even as just the typical fan, I thought absolutely the right thing to do because you got. I, I'd heard that I didn't know I'd never seen this this young man play, but all my Bama fan friends says he he's an a very accurate, very good passer. Right, and I'd heard all that. I heard all that. I didn't think he should be playing ahead of Hurts. Don't misunderstand me. Mm-hmm. But I'd heard about. And so he said, we got to be able to throw the ball if we're even going to run the ball. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And so I thought, well, you did what you needed to do. It, it, at times he looked a little freshman-like, but he got you down the field. Freshman to freshman, by the way. You know, 11 yeah. was a freshman, too, on that first drive. Right. Well, the whole end of the game seemed yeah. like everybody was a freshman. So Alabama goes down the field and scores. And then there was that side of me, because you want to get back to your safety place. And I was, I was hollering at the TV, all right, now take him out and put Hurts back in. Don't just leave him in there. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's a the spark you needed. You, and, got, uh, you got the mo and, back on and, your and side, I, and Saban was like, "No, I think this is where we need to be." The whole, even when he threw the interception, I thought, "Well, that'll do it." Yeah, two I mean, cause, out because that that interception he threw, God love him. That 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 was a freshman deal. He, I don't know where he was throwing. It. No, it was, was he yeah. trying to throw it out of bounds? I don't know. The receivers were blocking, and I, I told <laughs> I told JC was that his attempt to throw it away, and he just didn't. That's get what it high I thought enough? at one time. I don't know. Yeah, but don't he, know. it doesn't matter. I mean, he made and and for him to get sacked in overtime when he got sacked in overtime, I thought, okay, yeah, there there it is. We have a sports czar again 
Adler has done it again with the exact score, yeah, 23 yeah, to 20 yeah. Georgia. And that dang son of a gun goes in there playing mm-hmm. high school ball last year and lines up, looks off the safety as beautiful as you've ever looked <laughs> off the safety. Chris yeah. Adler- back six minutes past the hour from the no-name studio on the bleeding edge of technology from sweet home alabama to the world a brand new rick and bubba university the podcast is out uh you can get that now uh as we talk to former air traffic controller and current pilot tom messer about some of the biggest airline stories in in history uh, and uh, talking about the current state of airlines and things like that. So uh, enjoy that if you haven't caught that uh, yet, wherever podcasts are available and on the Rick and Bubba YouTube channel. Gang's all here, and uh, we're recapping weekend stories. Bubba brought in a piece of solid gold today. I've been recapping what, what was a very, very active weekend. Uh, so I finally have gotten to Sunday. Uh, so Sunday, Sherry and I taught Sunday school together on Sunday morning. Uh, had Brooks home, so he, he was there in the class with us, and young Broderick joined him. Now both sons were there. And so um, uh, I was I was needing to, to leave uh, and go straight from church to the airport uh, to board a plane to go to uh, South Georgia, Americus, Georgia, Central Baptist Church. Uh, they had honored me with the opportunity to bring the message at their big outreach event with their fall festival. They're one of the churches that, that do the man church curriculum, but this was nothing to do with that. This this had to do uh, with just they do this giant thing. They do a midway with rides and food trucks, and they have this beautiful big field right by the church. They set up a really big-time stage with lighting and sound, and they have music, and they have the midway. Then they oh, shut the midway cool. down for the headliner, which was Mac Powell, uh, who was the headliner, and then they do a firework show right after the last note of uh, of whoever the headliner is. Uh, really, really big time set up, and they do a masterful job uh, putting this together, and it really uh, garners a lot of fruit because it's something that brings people in that maybe are not churched, or you know, and it's a great outreach, and, and I was honored to be part of that. Well, they asked me if I would also MC the day, and I said, sure, I'd be, be, be honored to do that. And, but, uh, but, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking to uh, uh, Steve, who does the, the men's ministry there. Uh, and matter of fact, he's, uh, he told me that he's got golden ticket seats coming up this coming Friday. Right. So we'll see them again. But uh, he and uh, his sons and then I think uh, somebody else from the church. But anyway, so I was talking to, to you know, try to get the day started. And uh, so our first, uh, mm-hmm. our first musical act is, you know, which all festivals have to have, especially a fall festival, is a bluegrass band. Got to uh, have yeah, it. Yeah, Lonesome, Lonesome Bluegrass, <clears throat> Lonesome Road, something. And now, now every single bluegrass band, as we know, must have uh, a guy at least 70, at least, mm-hmm. who's slender and tall. Right. Probably goes by nickname Slim. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, can play the frets off a of guitar. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, and they're going to have that that omnidirectional microphone, you right. know, that anybody can step up to. You just get the it. whole crew. And 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 of course, you know, he and 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 he's going to he's going to be in the middle of it all. Okay, yeah. and then and then around him are, are your various musicians playing various bluegrass instruments. Well, the banjo player, well, he he's definitely one of us. Uh, he, uh, he's had, he's got some weight on him. Okay. Uh, he's not overly tall like Slim. Um, and, and as we know, uh, to, if you want to have the bluegrass look, you probably want to try to get some jeans on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, big people in jeans. It's a bit of a battle for us. It's not our best play. Hmm. We're not the most comfortable in jeans. Okay. But I'm up here. I got my boots on. I got my jeans on, got my cowboy hat on. And, uh, and I, and, and, and I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a large person. And he had a capo that I guess he would use on because he played guitar as well. And he, they were getting ready to get started, and they were sound checking, and they were doing all this. And it's a lot of instruments. It's a lot to do when the bluegrass band is serious. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I heard the sound of the capo hitting the stage. What? 
and they were getting ready to get started. And, and, and I've been there before, Bubba, we have, when a large person has dropped something. Uh-oh. Yeah. And they got tight fitting jeans on. <laughs> oh, no. And, and he looks down at that capo, and, and I could tell in a moment, and, and I started <laughs> to make a move to get it. But I was, We're talking about a guitar clamp. Yeah, I was yeah. too far away, <laughs> that clamp that they put on the neck of the guitar. Yeah. And nobody in the band helped him. And I watched him look down at it, and he kind of kick looked, it a few times. Yeah, he he, he started it. trying to move <laughs> it with his foot, yeah. and Pick I thought, with his and I thought, God love him. If he bends over to get this, he may pass out on the stage because that's what's happened to me. You know, the greatest line we ever heard, Greg, was from Lavelle Crawford, mm-hmm. who's a large man, and he said, "When large people, when we tie our shoes, you get mad that you got two feet." That's right. You know, <laughs> at, at two feet after and, getting through and, that one, so, you can't believe so, you got. So he he did the classic thing that we do if we got a little weight that's about us in our tight fitting jeans. He backed his butt out like doing a. And look, right. and, it just, and it just starts trying to come down like one of those things they used to have at Cracker Barrel. Yeah, yeah. you know the the uh, the. And I thought, God love him, the and, little uh, bird that kept drinking. Out of the yeah, right. This and could he, be bad. Yeah. I'd either have to help or leave. I don't know. Now, some, something else happened that this, I did. Nobody go, hey, buddy, let me help you. Yeah, with that. I kept saying, hey, pal. I told the guy on the stand up bass, hey, man, he was on the whole uh, completely other end of the stage. I said, I want to help banjo out a little bit there, and and eventually there he he was able to retrieve it with some help, but. Bless him. Uh, but look, I understand. And then there was something else that happened that I'm literally in a battle on whether I should discuss or not. Uh, there's, oh, there's that's two, not it. There's two. That's <laughs> that's not it. Oh, <clears throat> come on, Rick, fire let's, it up. Just go for it. I know how think you about st- the audience. I know how you struggle with secondhand embarrassment, oh, and this my. is going to be. This may Red. force you to leave the room. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> well, Andy Blanks was with me from Team Man Church. Sorry, Andy. Andy Blanks claims that he has secondhand embarrassment worse than Speedy. Wow. Ooh. And I will say this: I have to agree with him. I'm sorry to say that. Okay. Even though you got it bad, because oh, I, wow. I, I, I was possible. I saw Andy Blanks physically leave a room <clears throat> twice. Physically Ooh, leave. Really? I've seen him leave a church service. There you go. I'll okay. just say it. I have seen That's that. Pretty big. Sure and I knew. I knew exactly. No, 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 no. He has no, to go. No. He can't do no. it. No. Okay. Yeah, he can't do it. And the one I saw is when the guy wasn't coming in on the. On, he, he he couldn't figure out how he was supposed to come in. He wanted to be counted in. He was a great singer, but he didn't know how. That guy's come a long way, by yeah, the way. He has. But this was when he first started, and yeah. he couldn't come in, and Michael Adler kept trying to start over. Oh, he'd do right. it again. He couldn't come in. Then he'd do it again. He couldn't come in. Andy, I look, boom, he's gone. He got, up, he got up out of his seat in the church and walked out. He said, until this gets resolved, I can't. I, can't, I, I, have, to, I, have, to, I have to go. And so I brought this to his attention. He says, you realize you're about to lose me on the merch. I, I, I may have to go back to the airport. Please, you, you can't do this to me. So I'm sitting there, and a and the guy turns around on the stage, and he's got a mandolin. And he turns around to me, Rick, don't do this. I'll do it. He turns around, and he gives me, and he talks about he's a fan of the show, which thank you very much. Oh, I appreciate I that. Listening. That's where I have a little bit of a dilemma here. <clears throat> well, he knows and, how we have fun with each and, other, right? And he said that he We spent 20 he, minutes making fun of Bubba early for right, falling. Right. He, yeah. Video. He, yeah. And, and on the our show, Bubba actually brought it to us. Right. Uh, but the, uh, you know why? Because I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, you thought this is really good. <laughs> right. We don't take ourselves overly serious, and I hope this person we does. Uh, yeah. Um, well, he tells me about how he's – a little older than Bubba than me, but and just now he's always wanted to be in a bluegrass band, and for the last ten months he's learned to play the mandolin. Okay, okay so he's new to it. And this bunch, oh and this bunch wanted it allowed him to be with them, and he's <clears throat> played a few gigs with. You them. don't have time to back oh, out wow. if okay. you feel like you need to. Am I too far in now? So this ain't his first mm-hmm. one. Am I too far yeah. in? Past uh, here you are, but this okay. is your opportunity. I think. Would y'all like me to continue? Yes. Yeah, I want you to continue, yeah. but I'm thinking about I'm thinking, about, I'm thinking about you <laughs> and your new friend. Right. Let her eat. So, I mean, I don't know. They I stomp I, the gas. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get this thing going. So, they're doing the sound check, and everybody's got a mic that, that is not hardline. You know, if they don't have a direct box, they have a mic that they walk up to to pick up their mm-hmm. instrument. Okay. And everybody's got one, except him. Man, there's a reason for that. And, and so, I was, and, and he noticed it. And he turns around, and it's like he's supposed to be the last guy, and they're ready to go. And he goes, hey, where's my mic? Oh, and he starts looking around for it. You okay, Speedy? No, because so, I feel sorry for him. And then Slim, from the other side of the stage, now there's no way he can get to the mic that Slim's pointing to. It's all the way on the other side of the stage, and you'd have to go through yeah. Slim to get there, and there's no room. He goes, well, just you know, listen over here. Try to get on this one with so-and-so if you, you, you want to. Hmm. And I was like, oh. And, and and so so he's got his mandolin and he's like looking around and I realize that he's not gonna be in the mix. Mm. And, and 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 it was it was it was he's so just playing to air? 
Yeah, and and the, and he's got he, some, did you hear and he's got some out there documenting like you know <clears throat> th- this big moment. No, they're not. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> you see yeah. This? And, and and so and so it became. Is this yeah. like Barney Five? Yeah. 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 yeah, and so yeah. I, so I, Greg, un- unfortunately, yeah. in my cruelty, I bring it to Andy's oh attention and tell him the whole story. Oh. So now Andy is locked in to this. Oh no, he's walking. And he's around. moving around trying to find a mic oh, so he gosh. can get in the mix and just play. And and then and then when they were. Uh, and then, it, it, then it happened. I said, "No, I think he's all right." I said, "I think I hear a mandolin." <laughs> well, I I, I I didn't pay attention to stage far left. There's another mandolin player who's on the direct box, and he's wailing. Right. What? And uh, and and then, and I thought, <clears throat> I, I hope he tells whoever's just documenting that that was him playing, because I mean, the yeah. person won't know. Yeah. You know, they were and, documenting uh, for the band or just for him? Just for him. Oh no. <laughs> so so anyway, <laughs> so anyway. Um, I didn't know what to do with that, and it, of course, I became upset. How long, did, how long this go on? An entire set of a bluegrass band. Yeah, figured out. Maybe About he was forty minutes. Wow. Maybe he was practicing, and they were just easing him in. Like a fuck. I swear, huh? I got to go, Speedy. Mm-hmm. Huh? And but then, he, and he then, was unaware. And, of and it, then on the so. omnidirectional, when they'd all start seeing background, he he would ease over too and be in the back trying to. So he's like, not looking over shoulders, Rick. <laughs> yeah. Is he really? He was. And I looked, and he was gone. And I said, what happened to Andy? And he said he went back in the building. And I, I, he said he won't come out till the set's over. <laughs> yeah, so, I feel you, Andy. Uh, uh, we'll be right back. Oh, no. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. George in cover two. But, I mean, he, yeah. looked, he looks that safety off as smooth. He looked it off like he was, he'd been playing at, in a big-time game. Uh-huh. This is like his 10th big-time game. So yeah, right. He looked that safety off so smooth. And threw that pass like like he was trying to throw it in a barrel. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean for six to another freshman, right? And you know, keep in mind too, Alabama doesn't have you know Cotton's not playing. They're great guard. You know, they got a guy having to fill in there. You get your tackle hurt. You got to bring in a freshman to fill in for him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, there was all kinds of things in that game. It, it was an uphill climb because you get to this point of the season and both teams are banged up and they got people, you know, whatever. But um, well, you just Rick, but you know, on that one play, I mean. Playing defense, whether you've played it in the yard or whether you've played it in the NFL, you can't let a guy run by you like that. That can't happen. Well, he's well, supposed he, to have he's supposed to have the safety over the top. Yeah, and the safety balked when 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 the when a freshman yeah. l- looked you off. He looked yeah. him off. You realize he didn't go back to the left till the very I last know, minute. That's right. I know. You, when you see that camera angle behind him, you realize how how good he sold right. that. Yeah. yeah. So he knows where his guy's going to be. But so the cornerback right. is really saying, "I'm good" because we're in cover two, but but we're cover two. Falls flat if the safety leaves. Yeah, but <laughs> the mm. safety cannot let a guy get well, loose. No, no. I mean, the middle is his, is his second coverage. You yeah. cannot let that guy run. Wide. I, don't, I mean, I don't Rick, he, over he ran by he ran by that cornerback like he was sitting still. Freshman, by the way. <laughs> oh no, I oh, know. Sure. Well, you know, but, this, well, but like Rick saying, that, that cornerback's letting him run by because he thinks he's got a safety mm-hmm. over the top, and he wasn't yeah. there. No, well, no, he wasn't. That's why his well, hands. Well, that's why his hands uh, were in the air when he caught it. He's like, "What do you?" What matter of fact, you, you know, we can all say this because we're not out there. <laughs> but there is a mentality that everybody knows. Okay, at this point, after the big sack, the only way we lose right now. Is to let somebody get behind. Yeah. 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 Hey, <laughs> can I ask this too? Because I the freshman freshman thing, the s- number six, did he play a lot throughout the year? I don't know. And here's the reason I ask: Is this one of those things too? The reason this happened is because them two were partnered up every single day at practice, and they knew how to do this. You talking about he works connect. with that same quarterback? Right. Every, right. Possible. I mean, I don't know. I'm just. just the but way, think, I want you to think about. It. I want to really get in your mind though. You're a f- true freshman. Mm. Now, he really was. Now, the kid for Georgia has played 15 games. Yes. <laughs> but this kid has not played in a meaningful situation yet. Uh, He's gotten sacked and just gets up and does that. Yeah, uh, unreal. Uh, like nothing. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I didn't hear so, that. Uh, I had a question. Um, would, do you ever figure out what number 48's problem was last night on our on our team, Alabama. I mean, he—he he wasn't happy. No, he wasn't. Yeah, you know, I think I mean, he, he's going to be in a lot of trouble it, when Saban goes back and watches the broadcast because you know, in the heat of the battle, you know, obviously Saban wasn't getting all the information. But you know, he punches the guy on the field, and the mm-hmm. way they didn't catch that really, I didn't see what that was tied to. I just saw the the punch, and then he goes over on the sideline when everybody's getting on him about doing something bonehead, and then he gets to one fight one of the assistant coaches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and exactly. he he got back in the. <clears throat> game, I believe he made a tackle on one he of the did. kickoffs. He, he did. The next, the next yeah, and he was just—he was grinning from ear to ear, and I was just 
Well, yeah, that... you guys had any idea what in the world that, you know he had done. Well, well if you're going to punch somebody on a football field, you need to be in a pile to do it. Uh, that was pretty <laughs> steep. Well, Plus, if you're wearing a helmet and pads, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. right. You're going to get a penalty, and, it's, and, and it, you don't forget it's legal them. to hit people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can go back the next play yeah. and declete them. Yeah, it, it used to drive our dad yeah. up the wall why anyone would fight with football pads on it. Yeah. Just in yeah. and, and, and a game sense. that allows contact, it just was weird. But the thing he's going to get in trouble about that was bonehead on the field is he got on the sideline and when everybody started trying to get on him about it, he didn't want to hear it and it escalated and he got madder and madder and and then he ended up yeah, trying to was... trying to fight on the sideline. Now he's gonna he's gonna have a meeting at Saban's office over that, uh, and we'll see where yeah, it lands. He was... Huffing and puffing and walking yeah. finally. I think he just walked finally back to the back and sat down, and then somebody was trying to calm him yeah, down. He was that. still fussing. Because Saban got on him right at the beginning of all that. Yeah, yeah, and then he Saban walked away, and then he didn't know what happened after he left right. involving the assistant and yeah. some of the other players. Yeah, now, he let, won't be happy with that little melee that almost broke out. Does anybody know what happened to the <laughs> Alabama player that passed out on the sideline? Yeah, what yeah. was that deal? Greg was trying to find I out earlier. Uh, Thank you, said it's, it's that he's okay and it was not football related. So he's yeah. sick. Maybe he was sick or something. Maybe he had, had this flu. flu that's going got around. dehydrated. I don't know. Something. But I'm gonna tell you, the flu is just. Uh, we got we got one at home with it. And we're all on Tamiflu. So mm-hmm. I, if I start hallucinating, everybody be ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go to John Ozark. Uh, John, go right ahead. How are you, sir? Pretty good. How about y'all? Great. Um, I wanted to comment on number six, uh, Devonta Smith or Devonta, whichever. Mm-hmm. Uh, he. He actually made the game-winning catch against Mississippi State in the final seconds. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, see. Thanks for that memory. Yeah. Yeah. For, for I'm sitting speed. here looking at his stats, and he has. Uh... Let's go phone trolling. All ten lines are available at eight six six. We be big. So I do want to thank everybody. Uh, it was a great event, Central Baptist Church, America's Georgia. Great to see Mac Powell again and hang out and get to meet so many of you. And excited about the people who made a decision for Jesus last night. And uh, that's fantastic. Got to have some incredible conversations with people. And thank you, Central Baptist Church, for honoring us and trusting me with that. I do have another story from that event. We'll get to it later on involving Gary, the bulldozer man. HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. Uh, Blazing Silverman will take your phone calls right now. All 10 lines are available. If you move, you will get in. Uh, But I want to tell you about HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. What a great, great company. We love the people at uh, at uh, HelloFresh.com. And, uh, and, man, the the job that they do, uh, getting a delicious food on the table for you and your family, and, uh, and you can uh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Bubba right now. We're talking about 20-minute meals, easy cleanup options, 20% less than if you were shopping at the grocery store trying to put together a, a meal plan. Uh, there's always a priority when we're around the holiday season, which is about to start with Thanksgiving, roll Christmas, and New Year's. Uh, this is the time. Saving money never been more important than right now. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Bubba, and we will get you a savings. You ready for this? If you were just using it straight up, you're going to save 20% on your total food bill. But now we're going to get you 65% off HelloFresh. Uh, so go to HelloFresh.com slash Bubba, 65% off and free shipping, and pick the meals you want. They send them to you. You prepare them. It could not have been easier. And these are delicious dishes. HelloFresh.com slash Bubba, a better way to get your meal planning and preparation done. G- Let's go to Greg in Alabama. He gets Greg. us started. Gregory, you got 30 seconds on the Rick and Bubba show. Go right ahead. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, buddy. I was talking about that Johnny cake. I was down here in lower Alabama over the weekend and had some crawfish mm. embedded in cornbread with jalapeno peppers, mm. and then they covered it with a spicy gravy. Ooh. Son Ooh. Of heaven on earth. Oh, man. I'm telling you what. Now, that's a, you got to have a strong stomach. I, I want to try one of Johnny Cake. I, let me tell you. Johnny Cake. Let me tell you. Come, Johnny. <laughs> Andrew in Tucson, <laughs> Arizona. Uh, uh, go ahead, uh, Andrew. Hey guys, so I forgot to change my clock, uh, you know, on Friday, or on Sunday, sorry. And uh, guess what happened? What? Not a thing. Not a thing. <laughs> All right. Not a thing. No big deal. By the way, I've noticed this uh, <laughs> this this outstanding high quality uh, new board we have here. Mm-hmm. It didn't change. I, it freaked me out just a minute ago. I looked down <laughs> and it's an hour off. I thought, are we in the nine oh. o'clock hour? Oh no. Uh, yeah. So this clock did not change. 
You know, I did um, all I could. I talked myself wow. off the off the roof this morning yeah. coming to work that I was not going to rail on the time change for two hours. I know. We're not going to do it. I'm going to try not to. Yeah. I, I hate this time change. Yeah. I, I hate it. Hate I, it. Hate, hate it, it. Hate it. If I could take it out and whoop it, I would. Charlie in Georgia. Charlie, welcome to the show. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Um, first off, I just wanted to let y'all know just, you know, kind of how happy I am whenever I listen to y'all in the morning. Y'all y'all do such a good job of making me feel good. But uh, anyway, Thank y'all you. talk about the babbling bee all the time, but have y'all ever caught the videos from Funny Maine and SEC Shorts uh, the Sunday and Monday after football? Not not Funny Maine, but SEC Shorts. I've seen a lot of their work, and I think they're very funny. Yeah, they do a good job. They are. And y'all, y'all should check out Funny Maine. He is totally out there. I, I've watched some of his stuff in the past. We've, but had, him we've show, had him on the show. Yeah, I knew that. I was just saying, but I don't, I don't, I, I don't know how to. I haven't watched any of his stuff, uh, but I, I really enjoyed when we got to spend some time with him, though. Uh, but SEC shorts, yeah, very, very funny people. We've tried to get them on the show and on the podcast, but uh, it, it hasn't worked. Uh, let's go to Joey. Joey's out on the road. Joey, hey, Joey, jo- hey, Joey, hey, Joey. <laughs> Welcome to the hey, show. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, I just wanted to call and ask. And I've heard y'all mention a couple of times over the time y'all been on the radio and stuff that y'all are about railroad stuff, modern trains, or watching a long train come by. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? What's that? I, I, I do not understand the question. I'm so sorry. Are you saying we've said we like trains? Come out. Yeah, a couple of them, maybe Greg or somebody has said something about it. Y'all don't mind seeing a you know, ten thousand footer come by or something? Well, I don't like being blocked in traffic, but if I can just sit like at a picnic table and watch a train go by, oh, I yeah. love doing that. I love trains. I, I mean, I really do love trains. I just I like don't want to be blocked on. by them. Now we did yeah. have some commentary when yeah. supply issues were a really big problem, and they still are. That we wouldn't complain about a long train coming by again because that's how we get a lot of supplies in the store. Was that it? I don't know. I, I don't. I know. like trains. Yeah, uh, I've I always love, liked trains. I like, I like trains. I'm I pro train. trains. I like the song "Train I, Train." I, I have, wish I was a conductor. I, I like. I have yeah. a toy train, and uh-huh. every year at Christmas, I get it out and put it together. Yeah. I like a few yeah. songs by the band Train. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, they were nice people. I think we have a lot train. of different trains. Yeah. Uh, how about this? I I actually uh, I like any song that references a train. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do. Uh, John in Little Rock, Arkansas. John, go ahead. Hey, guys, um, I'm not going to play the guessing game with you this morning, but uh, <laughs> oh I'm wondering if you guys are going to have Master Build in again this year. You know, I don't think. I won one of y'all's uh, Master Built turkey oh, cool. fryers. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think Master Built, uh, I don't think they uh, signed up for another advertising came, campaign with us for this year, so I do not think so. Yeah, I think John uh, had he sold sold, yeah. sold that company. <clears throat> he stayed on uh, in an advisory role, but. They uh, they've decided I think to go some other direction on that. So. Yeah, so they and, and we hate it. I mean, yeah. we we love those guys. Oh, we used to eat that turkey. Rick and Bubba out just standing here holding our holding our fryer with no friends. Greg, yeah. would you like them if they didn't bring food? I like them better that they do. Okay. But they are good people. I like how they make it. I noticed we were all talking about the people, and then you jumped in on the turkey. Real quick. Well, I mean, you're talking about the product. That smoked turkey is pretty good. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I tell you what's good is that mac and cheese. Yeah. Smoked mac and cheese. Greg, you say don't do this because we don't have it this year. That's okay, true. so just take that down. I'm going to try to find that Johnny Cake guy. Get uh-huh. Johnny and bring yeah. his cake. Him right him right How about here. if I got him up here Ooh. and had Johnny Cake guy here in the parking lot making Let's this Johnny Let's do that. Cake. we got to have somebody out here cooking. I'm Y'all glad, be afraid to eat it. I'm glad Master Bill's not coming back, frankly, because there's that one time I was in the ladies' restroom and then the lady, that, the rep that was with Master Bill, she was on the outside waiting for me when I got out of the bathroom. It's been awkward ever since. Rick and Bubba, <laughs> Rick and Bubba. had like one catch a game and they've all been for right. massive yards okay and so he's a speedster he yeah. didn't fly well i think greg and i greg was talking about it in the break too and i think a lot of people i think you realize though if we want to get real here and there's no doubt it's still impressive when freshmen make plays and Al- here's alabama playing three freshman receivers and you know they put freshmen in the game in the national championship game bringing a freshman in to play tackle and then georgia has freshmen at quarterback and freshmen all over the field I think you got to understand we're living in a different time. Coaches don't look at freshmen the way they once did because they're not going to keep them very long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times, you know, freshmen used to have to wait to get on the field because some guy played four years. Now, a guys playing two years. 
you know, and, and he's gone. And they know these freshmen, if they're as good as their build, they're not going to be there very long. So there's really no no need to waste playing time because you're not going to have them for four years. Right. I think it's a different mentality with freshmen now. Rick, do you remember when we were growing up, you could not play on the varsity team when you were a freshman. They had a freshman team. Yeah. Yep, they and they played about four games a year, maybe five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but that, that's. Ham, so, see, Ham's is too young. He doesn't ever remember that. And it. it, it no, it, we just didn't have enough kids. Everybody had to play. Do you remember yeah, some of the smaller schools? I mean, you just yeah. don't no, have he's that. talking about college. I'm oh, talking about college. Oh, oh, college. Okay. Yeah, freshman. Well, I'm We're sorry. Talking college. It used to be freshman college teams. Yeah. And they'd play each other. Okay. Well, he you, said when we used to play, and I thought we were talking about when we yeah. all used to play. I didn't realize you were talking about college. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry. When we were, Same here. When we were kids. When we were kids, yeah, they had to. Freshmen weren't allowed to play. And like the off week of your team, they would actually broadcast the. The, the the freshman team or the baby whatever that, I remember they used to refer to him as the baby this or the baby that yeah something like that I remember yeah. that so but mm. and then remember Notre Dame used to have a rule that freshmen could never play they still have that but you no, could you, no, you, you couldn't redshirt them oh that was it it's different you yeah. couldn't redshirt them you couldn't redshirt a freshman that's, that's right. right I knew they had some freshman yeah, it, whether play or not you couldn't be redshirt is that still the, the I don't same? know surely they've changed that <laughs> we continue eight six six we be big Austin and Prattville Austin Austin welcome to the Rick and Bubba show how are you Good, how are you? I'm, I'm great. great. Hey, uh, I was just wondering, uh, how come Alabama and Georgia even played in this so-called national championship game? I thought UCF already won it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, look, UCF, they, they can definitely have fun, you know, with the undefeated season. It's great, you know. You, you but but and it, and they they did a great job, and they deserve all their props. And they were a legitimately good team, and they proved that to some degree against Auburn in in the Peach Bowl. But the the body of work. Um, and there's nothing to do about it. They got to play the schedule they've been given. But they didn't even play a team that was in the top 20 until their conference championship, and that team was number 20, and that was Memphis. Now, right. and then, and so, so when they got to the Peach Bowl, they had one win over a top 20 team, and it was the number 20 team. And Memphis was pretty good. Hey, they but, lined up and beat Auburn, but they beat and Auburn I, straight. I give up. you props yeah. for that. But it, Auburn also had lost uh, two games, so I mean, it's not like they. They didn't line up and beat Georgia or and, Alabama. And while the Auburn win was impressive, come back the next week and play yeah. the Alabamas, yeah. the LSUs, the Mississippi States, the Texas A&Ms, it's a little different. It's a little different deal. Because yeah. a lot is. of your yes. good players are not there because they're hurt. Yeah. And, they're and, wore down. And I've noticed, because I've been through all this, where teams somehow don't get to do something they think they should have gotten to do. Right. Right. They just declare that they would have won those games. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, uh, it's like, well, we would have rolled through the SEC. Well, mm-hmm. that's easy to say if you don't have to. Yeah. Now, this year, you know, was probably if you were ever going to try to get through the SEC, this was the year to do it until you ran into, you know, Georgia and, and Alabama. But – but it's uh, or maybe maybe try this one, Rick. Play Georgia twice. Right, yeah, and and, and that's and, and Auburn showed that was tough. And if you that's, look, uh, what a what a schedule, all of them, man. It's mm. it's just a grinder in the SEC. I really keep saying this for for Alabama. It's such a weird place. I think Auburn was very beneficial to Alabama because I mean you, you're sitting there watching this Georgia game. First of all, Alabama still got to go to the national championship because of their body of work uh, and the way that Auburn and Georgia played out, which I don't have a problem with that. I think they should have gone, but uh, but then. They also, in this game, the game started looking just like the Iron Bowl. And with Jalen Hurts, it's almost identical. And, and Saban said, I've already seen how this turns out. It ain't going to happen again. Mm-hmm. Well, what you you're saying, what? too, is what if these two teams had played in the SEC championship game? Would it have been the same? Where was Alabama? Where were they injury-wise? Yeah. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, but I mean, if you look at the body of work though, too, because I know you got to be good and lucky. I know how yeah. this gets on on uh, on rivalries. Alabama beat LSU. Auburn didn't. Uh-huh. Alabama beat Clemson. Auburn didn't. Right. That's right. So you right. got you got to factor all that in. If you're gonna tell the story, you got to tell the whole story. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, eight six six. We be big. So it's not like they were just kind of falling into it, you know, with with no resume that had anything on it. No, I'm just saying it felt good for them because I think that week oh, no, off no, helped no, no, them no, no, to no. Get some I'm talking to back. some of the other things I've got yeah. in email and stuff like that. Where somehow, you know, oh no, we got to tell the, the whole guys, story. Guys, Auburn right. does. They can't stand this. And why would right. you like it? No, okay? you shouldn't. If you should not like a rival, it. if you like but, it. But hey, some of you just hush. Let them have. I mean, let me. All right, 35 minutes past the hour. A Rick and Bubba show. We're back. 866-WE-BE-BIG is our number. Well, uh, the, one of the 
people say this all the time, but definitely a historic election coming our way tomorrow. The midterm elections. Too much time on my hands. Too much time on my hands. And I don't know what to do with myself. Well, let's start with Trump. Um, we, um, I started seeing people uh, as I was kind of trying to gather myself to get back to another week, and I saw people being critical, saying. Uh, Trump should not be trashing DeSantis. I'm like, is he trashing DeSantis? What? Uh, I, I I don't I didn't know that took place or or why that took place. But you said that there 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 was rumors that DeSantis was going to join the anti-Trump part of the Republican Party, and apparently that's turned out to be bad information. Uh, but uh, but at a at a rally in Pennsylvania. Uh, he took a shot at DeSantis, right? Yeah, he did. So here, here, yeah, we'll get, oh, you're going to go right to it first? Yeah, here it is. Okay. Trump at 71, Ron DeSanctimonious at 10%, Mike Pence at 7. Oh, Mike's doing better than I thought. No. Trump at 71, Ron DeSanctimonious at 10%, Mike Pence at 7. Oh, Mike's doing better than I thought. Okay, so Trump, um, Trump calls out him, there having a little mm, fun again. Ron De Sanctimonious. Yeah, interesting. Um, and so Bubba, talk. What's going on here? Well, I think uh, Trump is just doing what Trump normally does, having a little fun with everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, the media has just been clamoring for a DeSantis Trump brush up, and uh, this is, uh, you know, they're they're loving this a little bit. But there's really no evidence that DeSantis is looking at even running for president or working against Trump. Uh, the statements I've seen from DeSantis, he says, I support Trump and would support him again. Yes. Yeah, so uh, but what Trump is doing is is he begins to I'm, I'm going to try to handle this as kindly <laughs> as I can. As he begins to mark his territory, right? Uh, right your right. urine's gonna fly on everybody. And well, uh, and, well, let's and, look uh, at this though. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say mm-hmm. that Trump does have seventy-one percent support, mm-hmm. and DeSantis has ten, and uh, Mike Pence seven. Well, that ten and that seven is seventeen percent. Um, you got to have that seventeen percent to win in the general election. Now, you might can win the Republican nomination, but right. just like before. There's going to be a, you know, Trump is polarizing, love him or hate him. Right. And you're going to have to have everybody on board, which is what he had in 2020 to win. You're going to have to have that very slim group of people in the middle who is not a card-toting Democrat or Republican come out in big numbers to support you for you to win. And this kind of debate uh, doesn't really help him out. It's unnecessary. There, there was no need for that. No, and just it, tell everybody you got seventy percent of the vote. And move on. There's no sense in this point in the game to take a shot at anybody. Well, think about this too. Think how volatile. Think seven. about how volatile Florida is, and yeah. how beloved right. DeSantis is by the Republicans in Florida. Yeah. Do you want to offend them if you trash a guy that they're holding in very high regard? Because you can't win without Florida. No, no you, you can't cannot. win without Florida. And you peel a few off that say, ah, I'm not sit it out. I don't, I'm not fired up about it. Mm-hmm. That can hurt you. can hurt you bad. Well, what you don't want... you got to be coachable, Rick. Yeah, and he's not coachable. <laughs> but one thing I will say about Trump, as much as the good job that he did, and he did do a good job as president, let me be clear, I know that. And I certainly would take his economy over what despite we have. Despite what the press De- tries to tell you. Yeah, despite all the other stuff. But I will say in this case, I think this may be, it's not just one of these things that you go, ah, I don't really like that. It's not It's not good. Th- this hurts the, 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 the odds of us taking back, as if you're a Republican, and I do vote Republican now because they best represent, uh, I think, the best path to having a healthy country. I certainly don't worship it, and I don't, it's not... Uh, it's it's not imp- it's more important to me than my faith, but I have been afforded the right to to try to get the best set up in this country I can, and the Republicans offer to me the better the better platform. 
Uh, and it's really not any more complicated than that to me. And it's not even a difficult decision. Yeah. But not even close. But but this right here does not help, and you don't want Donald Trump to be, become the Ross Perot of of these upcoming elections, where he's pulling people away and yeah. upsetting other people, and there's not unity in the party. That's it. You got to have a unified well, yeah. front. This guy hasn't even announced that mm-hmm. he is. Beloved man has not even announced that he's running, and you're taking shots at him. Mm-hmm. And you said DeSantis said he wasn't; uh, he was going to yeah, vote for that's, him. That's what I've seen. DeSantis yeah. is running for governor. He he's hasn't said anything about <clears throat> running for president. His opponents have tried to make that an issue. Uh, I don't think it is an issue right now. I don't think DeSantis wants to wade into the waters while Trump is still out there. That's right. And DeSantis is young enough, he can he can sit out another cycle if he needs to. Well, probably the wisest plan for the Republicans, if if Trump could ever be coachable, is for Trump to embrace De- DeSantis, ask him to be his vice president, go back and try to win in 2024. He only has four more years. Then you hand it off to DeSantis, and he gets eight more. I mean, to me, that's I, I don't that, think that's DeSantis a, wants to be VP. I think right. he wants to be governor well, right now and finish yeah. the job he started yeah. there. I'm just to, saying if I was the coach of right. the Republican I team, that, that's the strategy I would lay out. Yeah. Yeah, I Googled uh, the word sanctimonious, and it, it was it was a cut down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is. Hey, you thought he was bragging on it. Yeah. I, I, but this, who knew? But I, I will say this. <laughs> and something good. And I understand why – people desire trump i got it i i get it i really do <clears throat> but i will say when you you know just like looking at any team you got to also notice the problems this is the kind of stuff where he messes up yeah, yeah. Th- this is the stuff he needs to stop doing well it hurt him last time yeah. with that with that uh, suburban mm-hmm. suburban mom we've right. heard a lot about that who have the little kids and they can't really justify teaching their little kids not to be bullies when they feel like it trumps one. Right. Even though him being the bulldozer is very entertaining. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, effective. On a lot of fronts. And yeah. effective in a lot of areas. Right. When you're talking about a place like Washington, D.C. Yeah. Oh, my uh, gosh. So what do you think about next? You want some Biden stuff? Oh, listen, Biden had a Biden had a uh, a record setting weekend. Right. <laughs> he come out and he's dogged coal. He's dogged power plants. I mean, the one thing, and we have to admit this, that Joe Biden has done well, is he has declared war on American energy. He has. And he has been a spot on on that. Yep. And of course, we're all paying for it now at yep. the pump. He's, he's been, and at the grocery store. He, unfortunately, he's been successful. Yep. Uh, here he is letting us know, 1A, Adler, letting us know that General Motors is com- committed to going all electric and catch the year that he says by the year they're going to yeah. do it. So sure. here, here we go. Well, she left that meeting and she dropped the suit. Called me up and said they're going to go all electric by 3035. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not worried about it. No, you know what? <laughs> I think they, they may be all nuclear by 30, mm-hmm. 35. Yeah, we've yeah. Got, surely we'll have something they, better. They may it. have the, uh, what was that they had in the Back to the Future where they put the garbage in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The <laughs> flux <laughs> capacitor. Yeah. No, yeah. it was the thing yeah. on top that fed it. Was it was called the. Uh, uh, it was some kind of tr- garbage disposal that yeah, gave it power. Yeah, it had a cute name <laughs> for it. Well, right. we're going. We don't need roads. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. One B, and I just defy anybody to even figure out what he's talking about here. <laughs> all right, here, here, here he goes. He he's rolling on about Syracuse and IBM here. Okay. I was just in Syracuse, New York, where I went to law school, and the company called Micron is investing one hundred billion dollars to manufacture chips, the biggest investment of its kind ever in American American history. Hundred billion dollars. Before that, I was in down in, in, uh, in a little further down in, in the middle of New York <laughs> in an outfit called IBM. They're investing in these chips for, for serious. Anyway, I won't go through them all, but <laughs> guys. All righty. Uh, I'm going to check that $100 billion number, too. Yeah. He should have stopped. That's a lot. That, that he, place he, down he, south, south from the, here. A little <laughs> IBM. You ought to heard of it. Right. He said an outfit uh, called IBM. IBM. We had no idea. Who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's discovered this little but outfit named IBM, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, they're serious and I, I'll wow. yeah, right yeah. Yeah. I ain't going to get into all that because I'll actually have to remember. Right. So. No, I can't. All right. Now he's going to try to give some sort of support to John Fetterman, but I don't. I don't well, know. Get what, them two together well, in the conversation. That's, that's, yeah, I started to say there's a pair. If you want to know what it'd be like, check this clip out. <laughs> All right, here we go. But John Fetterman vetoed. But with your votes, John Fetterman will be in the Senate. 
But John Fetterman vetoed. But, but with your votes, John Fetterman will be in the Senate. Okay. Uh, All right. So why, why don't why don't we, why don't we do this? Y'all, we, can, there's look, so much can I, here. Can I say this? I think it was the, one of the guys from Arizona running. We're in desperate need of a youth movement in both parties. Okay. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not a bad need, right. thought. We're, right. we're up against the break, but would you would you like to? Have you seen this video of John Fetterman's rally off Please, to a great start? Let's hear it. Let's have, say have it. you oh, seen the? It's gracious. all visual. Let's, it's all visual. Uh, it's two A, and then we can do two two B. Hang with us, yeah, right, yeah. and and two C. But but because I want you to just hear hear Biden, then get to Fetterman because he you know they, he tried to give him. So here, watch the flags in the background when Fetterman kicks off his rally. Watch this. <laughs> Boy, that, thing, that says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> Sometimes God I'm just gets him off. Sir, Pennsylvania. Sometimes God just gets involved. Yes, he does. Every yeah. one of the flags behind him blows <laughs> down. Hey, hey, he got his hoodie on. Yeah. I'm right. running to serve Pennsylvania. Yeah, right. just wiped the flags out. All right. 2B. The cr- and there goes the country. Hey, Greg, 2B, the crowd doesn't even know how to respond. Uh, he gives them something, and the crowd is confused. They don't even know what they're well, supposed really, to do. You try it's hard to follow. Out, do you cla- I do you- run on Roe v. Wade. I celebrate the demise of Roe v. Wade. Oh, I, I run on <laughs> Roe v. Wade. I'd have to leave. I celebrate the demise of Roe v. Wade. Oh. I celebrate the demise Wait a minute. of Roe v. Wade. <laughs> Wait a minute. He, su- he actually supports it, but he just said he celebrated the demise of it. <laughs> and then he got hung up. Andy and I would leave that. Right oh, wow. Yeah, you would. Yeah. Okay, I, don't see, I don't see how you and Andy can even come out in public. Right? No, I don't. There's I mean, so much going all right, on. We still have Fetterman yeah. trying to get, be interviewed by The View. Was oh, please. Oh, bring it just, on. Don't, that was a good please. One. Just, all right. just sit tight during the break. Yeah. Get, this is crazy. And there's some more Biden uh, that has said something so bad that now Manchin's upset with him and says something that we got to draw a line. It was Mr. Fusion, oh, too, Rick by the Bubba, way. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. It sounds silly at some point when you bring these kind of things. Let up. me tell you something. I laughed my head off, and I forgot who put it out. And was it one of y'all that sent it to me yesterday? When there was an Auburn fan, and it would apply to any in-state yeah, rival. Yeah. But it was hilarious. And it said, <laughs> "Saying you're pulling for Alabama because they're in the state of Alabama <laughs> is like saying you're pulling for the devil because he's in the Bible too." Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, now that's a rival. So that yeah, that's honest. funny. That's honest. That's, funny. that's an honest thing. Was that you, Adler, that said that? We Auburn? I don't know. Said it's great to be <laughs> an Auburn Tiger. Now, you run. How about this? Auburn won the Iron Bowl. That's that's a fact, too. You yeah. state champ. You know what I mean? That's a fact. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't get by UCF. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Now, I didn't know Adler could If you had waxed little UCF, little. that probably would have been our, you know, that would have yeah. been great. Sleepwalking in that yeah. one was not good. <laughs> could have made a bigger, better argument about being there. But really good. Yeah. Gus <laughs> needed another bowl win. You know, the one over Memphis is, is the only one he's got on the shelf. He needs another. <laughs> you know? We'll be back. We'll take more of your phone calls coming up. Alabama, the national champion again. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. To the show, uh, just to make sure, because of the way these uh, tickets are now, just to make sure that there wasn't any confusion and he was right. good to go and understood everything. And, and that's when he let me know that he, he couldn't get away and he, he made a good deal with a friend of his that could go, but his friend was <laughs> was set up and ready for the deal. deal. Yeah, I want to know what his definition yeah, I, is. See, I, I just want to play this promotion out and friend. see if it was worth doing. Was it good? What Did everybody, are they well, happy I'm sure his it? friend had a blast. Because um, right before kickoff, those tickets were still sitting there at a pretty yeah. good price. Yes, they were. About three grand uh, I know nine low other, end. I know nine other people probably interested too. Right. <laughs> so, but, it, well, you know, we looked at the giveaway that way based on the value of the tickets. 
we were going to send you to that game, or are you about to make yeah. uh, you know mm-hmm. several thousand dollars? Either way, it's a win. For Either you. way, yeah. it's a great prize. Yeah. To win, win, win. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and so we'll uh, we'll try to find him today, but we do know that he did not go and he did sell him. Ricky, we, we go do, you to, want, do you want to talk to him or just if you can find you him? Want, yeah, Ricky, I'm texting give us with a call. Him uh, tell him to call us, or you can call him if you want to. Uh, let's go to uh, let's go to right, Justin Ricky. in South Carolina. Justin, welcome to the Rick and Bubba Show. How are you today? Hey, Green Acres, guys. Uh, uh, glad you're working. Right. And I roll tied to you. Hey, uh, yeah, I was going to say you guys might have touched on this, but uh, Bo Scarborough was screaming out, you know, F Trump. What, yeah. what, what was that all about? Uh, you know, Greg had to inform me about that. I did not know about that. I saw your call on the on the board, and Greg said they've addressed it and, and that Scarborough is trying to claim he was saying F Georgia. But uh, well, Rick those, Trump and Georgia sound a lot. Yeah, they alike. clearly yeah. sound the same. So does he? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's he, a common. He, Greg, what, Greg, what Greg seems to think that Scarborough is not telling the truth. He absolutely said F Trump, well, right? One of two things is happening: he either doesn't like Trump, or well, he was right. saying this like, "Get him off the field, let's play ball," like mm-hmm. that kind of mentality. Well, then, one of the two. Well, was I it think before he, I, the game, or I didn't see. Yeah, the they were coming out of the tunnel, yeah. walking out of the tunnel. Yeah, and he didn't know that was the microphone. So I didn't see it either. But shocking. But I think I can answer your motivation if you were saying. Let's get on with the game. Yeah. I think that would be just my answer. Right. The fact that I'm trying to say I was saying Georgia means I probably meant the other. Probably. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Because so. he could have explained it like I did just then. He could have. Yeah. And people would have said, oh, okay. Yeah. That's, just guy, that's just a guy fired ready to play. play. Get him <laughs> off the field. I, I got to tell he you. He really is just saying after president. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get him hey, off the field. I got to tell you. But, but uh, uh, there's, there's yeah. absolutely. I tell you what Scarborough should have worried about is maybe that freshman taking his job. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. 22 was running hard. We've got these. Like, like somebody let a horse loose. <laughs> yeah. We've got they've been right in the pasture. They've been stung by a bee. I'm telling you. <laughs> we, we played the censored version in the kickoff hour. Uh, but well, yeah, I just, let's li- stick with I that. Just, I just listened to the uncensored version. Oh, you did? Okay. And there's no way he said Georgia. Okay, so, I, I mean, so now I'm, he's a liar, too. I'm, I'm listening. to. I mean, you can clearly so hear you heard what he said. So you heard it about it. Uh, now the uh, – The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. You know, uh, we're back. Uh, let's get eight minutes to the top of the hour. I sure am excited about hunting season, getting ready to get started. Um, headed to the farm again this weekend. Going to stay the weekend. I'm excited about allform.com slash Bubba because, you know, we, we got furniture from Allform that we have there in Camp House, and I just I, I love it. And uh, it's really great. It's all customizable to best fit your needs. And uh, it ships right to your door from the factory in beautiful North Carolina. Uh, you, you know, it's no supply chain or labor worries there. You pick the fabric. You pick the color. You pick the leg types um, uh, plus sofa sizes and shapes to make sure it's exactly what you want for your home or wherever you want this off uh, for your office or, uh, in our case, you know, maybe a a place you get to go for weekends or take vacations. Now, you're going to love all the fabrics. They're spill, uh, stain, scratch resistant. Uh, They they really do have something for everybody, something as simple as a small piece of furniture all the way up to an eight-piece sectional sofa and everything in between. Go to allform.com slash Bubba. Uh, the furniture arrives fast. The shipping is always free. It's got a forever warranty, free returns, and a full refund. If you don't like it within the first 100 days, it arrives at your home or office or wherever you send it. Allform.com slash Bubba will save you 20% off anything you buy. And then don't forget that forever warranty. That's the kind of quality we're talking about. Allform.com slash Bubba, 20% off anything in the store. That link also at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors button. So Fetterman, we're, we're getting ready for the big uh, midterm election, elections tomorrow. Dr. Oz versus Fetterman. Uh, Oprah's gone with Fetterman, showing, I guess, probably because of how impressive he is. Uh, but uh, So here he is attempting to, uh, to be interviewed on The View, and we understand that he's had difficulty and a stroke, but he's the one that keeps saying that he can still serve with no problem but what we're saying is it doesn't look like he really can. And so here he is attempting to be interviewed uh, by The View. Both our doctors believe that we're fit to serve. And all of our doctors believe, both from June and also in, in October, all agree that I'm, I'm fit to serve. I, I feel that uh, we're, we're uh, running a very transparent rate about our health ratio, uh, issues. excuse me. And, and I believe that, uh, that I was proud to, to show up 
Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't that's why it's, it's, it's uh, you know, w it's really what I chose our, our career, my career about here. Dr. Oz chose to to really uh, fight for his uh, bank uh, account. Okay. Well, of course, that definitely. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, w w without a doubt, it, it's important to kind of walk the line between, uh, uh, to, yeah, to walk that line between, uh, you know, I've always believed that the choice is always believed uh, excuse me, uh, between a woman and, and, their, and their doctor as well. And he spent, I believe, over $20 million of his own money and enriching, excuse me, enriching himself. Okay. He spent money mm -hmm. enriching himself. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I'm a mess. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. He's re he, hey, he's ready to go. Yep. Um, Got his hoodie on. He's Pennsylvania, ready. go out and make it happen more. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Biden, back to Biden. Another, um, have you seen this one, Bubba? Hmm. I know he had a banner weekend. He yeah. declared he was going to shut down all coal plants mm -hmm. and drilling. And uh, he is really, really fired up mansion from West Virginia. Well, watch, watch this little stumble here. It's not as good. Prescription drugs for seniors, no matter what their cost, 2, 10, 12, 15, boop, stepping on them. It's a, it's black. Anyway, prescription <laughs> drugs for seniors, no matter what their cost, <laughs> Two, ten, twelve, fifteen. Boop, stepping on them. But it's black. Anyway. <laughs> he got the stumble. What is he talking about? Golly. He looks down the stage and sees what, a piece of black tape or something? Uh, he must have stepped on a cable or something. It's Lost black. his balance. I'm looking he down. It's black. It's black. It's black. Mm. Oh. Mm. Bubba, this is the one oh. you, you're talking about with Biden. One F. He's going to uh, uh, talk about, he's been talking about this. And he double doubles down here, and this is what got Manchin to finally say, "What? Hey, we we, we got to do something." So, uh, so here here's Joe Biden. I was in Massachusetts about a month ago, on the site of the largest old coal plant in America. Guess what? It cost them too much money. They can't count. No one's building new coal plants because they can't rely on it, even if they have all the coal guaranteed for the rest of their, the existence of the plant. So it's going to become a wind generation. And all they're doing is going to save them a hell of a lot of money and using the same transmission line they transmitted the coal-fired electric on. We're going to be shutting these plants down all across America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy, he really just builds confidence. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> mm -hmm. He does. Yeah, boy. Boy. He does. So Manchin, who, of course, West oh, Virginia. Joe Manchin has demanded an apology. Demanded yeah. an apology. Right. And then the White House put out a statement saying that uh, the president's words were twisted up. Yeah, he twisted them up. How, how we twist it up? We're going to shut them all down. How, do, I, how I, can I, you I, twist up the phrase, we're going to shut them all down? Yeah. That, There's that, no way to twist that. Um, the, I, I think the line that transmitted the coal-fired electric on. We're going to be shutting these plants down all across America. What, what's hard? That, how, how's that? We're shutting these plants down all across America. The reason, the biggest push on the inflation right now is the fact that we're having energy problems. And it's all self-inflicted by Joe Biden and his party of left-wing libos. Mm. I don't get it. Just don't get it. Um, I understand. Nobody wants pollution, Rick. We've no, talked about oh, this a hundred times. Who's for, where's the but, people love pollution? But let me tell you, he, Oscar he, the Grouch. He's he's also Joe. He lives in a trash can. You know, we've seen him quote about shutting drilling down. Oh yeah. Half of those barrels of oil go to plastics. Half of it. No, no. If you don't have plastics, you don't have battery cars, guys. No, you don't. You're gonna drill. You're gonna drill, and you're gonna drill a lot if you want battery cars. Yep. Sorry, Joe. I know it's a great thing to scream at a stump speech, but you're just wrong. Real short-sighted. So tomorrow, big day, America. Get out and vote tomorrow Ooh, while move. you still have the opportunity. Top of the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. The edited version here uh, with the big... Yeah, you can't tell. Nothing. With the big bleep in it... Um, it uh, you can't re you can't really tell. But it a couple times is that you explained it over and over again. That's me. One time. I, uh, yeah. I hear nothing resembles Georgia. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I, I hear nothing with two syllables. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Well, I mean, Georgia's even more Georgia. difficult to say after that. Yeah. You know Let's what I mean? come up with something that rhymes with Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Trump really flows quite well with it. But, I mean, right. Georgia really right. doesn't. You know I what said mean? junk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's come up with that. Part of this junk. No. But, no, but, no, I said the Georgia was talking. <laughs> let's jump on them. That's what I said. Yeah. But, but you're right. I mean, if he, if he's going, if he's coming out of the tunnel, going, hey, let's let's, let's get this thing going. President's holding the, everything up. Blank Trump. Let's go. That would be one thing. Or but, just do what Helmsy did. Hey guys, I was ready to play. Yeah. I knew we, that's, I, all that's this what I'm pre, all this pregame stuff had us all antsy, ready to go. Uh-huh. And somebody said we can't go out there yet. Trump's on the field, and I just screamed out, "F <laughs> Trump, let's play." Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Not right, but that that no, would make sense. I get it. I do too. That's probably what happened. But 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 I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, nah. probably not. Probably not. Know. Well, we also have seen that. Know. We've also seen that pretty loud and clear. Sure. You know, so. Seen signs. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, there was there was somebody told me there was supposed to be some sort of Trump protest. Oh yeah, they, they were. They, they were going to dress in white and <laughs> we just wave didn't flags. Know Bo Scarborough was part of. Well, he, was, <laughs> yeah. he was dressed in white. They didn't know white. <laughs> yeah. You're right, right. But, but yeah. this one group took a knee. Bo outside. was leading it. <laughs> it is funny to watch because you would think the typical Alabama fan. I'm not mean everybody. I'm talking about the typical. Yeah. You know, is probably a huge Trump fan. Huge, and they're cheering for you know probably a team that's probably. Highest percentage of them hate Trump. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, uh, but you know, once that uniform I, was on, Braden all, all came in last out. night and he goes, I can't believe there's not any booze. I said, buddy, this is SEC country. Mm-hmm. Trump knew what he was doing. There were he some, in his state. there were some mixed in, but it, yeah. it just turned into noise, really. Yeah. You, could, you couldn't hear a defined yeah. boo. It was, I, I, Bubba, you, you kind of touched on this. I, I thought it was unprecedented for a president just walking on the field during the, National I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was, too. Yeah. No matter if it was yeah. Trump or whoever, just any president. Well, that, I think cool. that's, a, that's a Trump thing. He goes, you know, national champion means the best. I'm yeah. the best. I need to be there. Now, yeah. I could, I mean, now, when I couldn't get in the stadium because of all the security, I'm not loving it. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. Can you imagine for Secret Service what a nightmare? Yeah, I started oh. seeing people. Public pe- address announcer tonight here in Atlanta, Mr. John Magrino. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, as we honor our nation, please rise and welcome members of the ROTC units from the University of Georgia and the University of Alabama, joined by our President Donald J. Trump. We got a mix. There's a mix. I would think fans of both schools, overwhelming Trump fans. Yeah. Families of players, anti. Well, there was two things. All right, so the announcement, there's one reaction, and then all of a sudden they see him, and then there's another reaction coming up right here. There. So when they put him on the big screen. Yeah, if I, I can't tell what that is. If I could have seen Cliff Sims playing the drums, yeah. I'd have been, uh, it'd have been awesome. I, I wor- <laughs> Cliff <laughs> Sims, I think, was disguised as one of the Marines there with the white hat on. He was right at the end of the flag. <laughs> I was very concerned for you, Speedy. Very concerned. Because at one point, it looked like they were confused and didn't know where to go. Well, yeah, well there was the ROTC. Yeah, the uh, ROTC looked guys, a little confused, a little and they were uncomfortably talking to Trump about it. I'm not sure where we're supposed to stand. Right. And I thought, I hope Speedy is getting going and getting his snacks ready for the game right now. Right. Uh, but uh, He went off scripts, what he did. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. weren't planned for that. No. And Zach Brown did a good national yeah. anthem, the choir with it, and all that was great. Yeah, and, uh, oh, it was pretty cool. And, but, again, I go back, and I'm sitting here yeah. looking at him. I, I don't think – I mean, Trump, he would sing some, he would hum, and then he'd look around, and then he would sing a little bit. I don't think it's that he didn't know the national anthem. He's taking the moment. I think take. he's just kind of, yeah. I don't know. Are you I mean, required was, to know the national anthem? Yeah, I, don't know. I, don't know. I don't know, but I, I don't think. think it's good. I guess what yeah, I'm saying I is. I just wanted to argue no, required. No, I mean, listen, no, 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 listen no, no, I'm no. just glad. Unless you're hey. going to stand out there and act like you're singing it. Now, yeah. then you need to. Hey, I'm not going to sit like I do. I'm just church, glad he was. Sing a few lines I and then hum a few I'm glad he was just standing for it. You know? Well, that's true. That's such a pleasant surprise. It really, really was. So so that went on. I do not, I don't understand the halftime show. Oh, and wow. I'm not talking about the style of music because people have different music and they like different music. And uh, I understand, whatever. I understand hip hop and rap. And this is a popular artist. That's not what I'm talking about. I don't understand how you have a halftime show for a game that's not at the game. People kept when you know, you know, you go download your email from being gone. I think I had, you know, there were thousands of them, and it takes a while. And I kept getting this email of people saying, "I know you're on vacation, but please mm-hmm. tell me you've seen this video." You know, the Antifa bunch. You know, I I, I caught they're they're very much. Um, anarchist type deal you know they're, they're they're not really revolutionists they're anarchists which is a completely different thing oh yeah they just want they, free they just all. want chaos Mass confusion now speedy i don't know what hmm, country this signature takes place is in. that 
Mass I, confusion. Yeah, I don't know what country this yeah, is well, in. Well, it's actually in Portland. I is thought. it in Portland, Oregon? Yeah. Is it in our country? Oh, yeah. At one time, I didn't know if it was in our country. Oh, no, yeah. yeah. So yeah. There, there's well, some, that's still debatable, Rick. Well, that's right. true. Well, there's some Christians that are out openly, you know, around Christmas time and everything, and they're openly, you know, worshiping, and, and they're kind of having a march, you know, talking about their faith. And this Antifa person decides that he's going to really let the Christians have it. And, uh, it's actually called March for Jesus in yeah. Portland, organized by uh, Patriot Prayer uh, in Portland. Yeah, and that, so yeah. and the Antifa guy's really going to let the Christians have it. And he's yeah. really they're going to come do a, a protest against their march, um, and it goes really really bad for this. You want to pick it up with them marching, and and you see the signs of of everybody marching, and and we'll stay with it. Yeah, yeah. and I definitely okay. want to hear his comments about the march. Six minutes past the hour from the no-name studio on the bleeding edge of technology. It is another Rick and Bubba show. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler, all here. Blazing Silverman, Rick and Bubba intern, banging out a degree in common sense from Rick and Bubba University. And welcome back, Bill Bubba Bussy. There he is. Rick, glad to be here, and thank all of you for joining us. All we ask for is five hours Chip. each and every day. Get you five up. Get you five up. Get you five up. We're huh? going to overtime, baby. Huh? Get you five up. Sorry about that, Tabama fans. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about these two races. Um, and we got a couple of ra- – we'll do the Arizona gubernatorial and this Joy Reid comment. So, Joy yeah. Reid um, – this statement from Joy Reid, do you just listen to this? Yeah, right, let's just, this just, let's just she's, she's framing let's this. Let's just hear it in and her own in words. Into the bigger point. Okay, here, <laughs> here we go. The only people I ever heard you, hear use the word inflation are journalists um, and economists, right? So that is not part of the normal lexicon of the way people talk. So it's interesting that Republicans are doing something they don't normally do, right? Which is not use the, com- the common tongue, right? Not use just common English to sort of use do on their campaigns like they're doing with crime. But what they've done is they've taught people the word inflation, right? Most people who would have never used that word ever in their lives are using it now because they've been taught it, including on TV, including in newspapers. They've been taught this word, and they they sort of wrap this word around whatever it is that they really want to vote, you know, the reasons they really want to vote. That makes no sense. Joy, uh, uh, speaking of how common, insulting is that? How speaking of common tongue, how confusing that was. Oh my gosh. Um, you know why most people, especially younger people, are not familiar with the word inflation? They've never had to live with it. Yeah. Oh. And thank to the current administration for bringing back something that we hadn't had to deal with in a long time. But, I'm, I'm no economic genius, but who doesn't know the word inflation? Yeah. I, I'm an idiot, <laughs> well, how about and the, I've known that word since high school at least. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's I'm a straight, up, in high school. straight up idiot right here. <laughs> call it what you want to call it. Bottom line, it costs more for goods and services than it did yeah. and, last year. And, but, your and it's continuing account, to go up. I mean, it doesn't matter what yeah. you call it. Your savings What's account, your right? retirement account right now will buy about 80% of what it would buy two years ago. There it is. Yeah, that's but, the bottom line. But I'm going back to her. It's, you it's can like call a, that it's like a robber. Or it's like a criminal in the night. I'm going back to her larger point. <clears throat> None of us know the word inflation. We've been taught it by Republicans. Word I've heard the word inflation time. since I was a kid because, you know, that would have been the last time it was a big topic, <laughs> uh, and and now it's a topic yeah. again. But I heard I heard new? new I heard the TV talking about inflation. I heard my parents talking about inflation. Now we haven't been taught the word inflation. <laughs> Most people got raises with their jobs to keep up with inflation. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. this is not a word we've been taught, Joey. I don't, I don't even know what you're rambling on about. Right, and plus, when it comes to teaching people new words, I, I believe that the people on the left, oh, uh, like oh, they, them, the and yeah, the heteronormative yeah. and things like that, yeah. those are words I didn't Cis-gender. know. Cisgender. Cisgender, yeah. yes. The, uh, well, those are words that? I didn't know. The left will take you to their uh, their reprogramming school and teach you all sorts of words. Oh, yeah. yes. Well, well no. a, a lot on the left think they're in trouble. They're showing you this by their Hail Mary approaches and passes the last few days. I mean, we've seen it. On the view, we've seen it. You see it 
with the politicians. I mean, they're going back to a lot of their old standard things, you know, uh, uh, drumming up race issues and, and, and other things. Now they're just denying that there is inflation or that people are making the word up. I don't know what's going to happen in the election, but there is a, there's a lot of people on the left think they're in big trouble. Arizona gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake, hilarious. She takes a shot at Hillary Clinton, and uh, <laughs> let me tell you something. It is a doozy. Mm-hmm. But I was a little concerned today, I'm going to be honest, when I saw Hillary Clinton bad-mouthing <laughs> me, and she, lo- she looked angry and actually scared and, and uh, just uh, completely unrelated. I want you to know, just in case you're wondering, I'm in perfect health, my brakes on my car are in good shape, and I'm not suicidal. <laughs> And we're going to win this thing on Tuesday. That's good. So good. It's fantastic. Well, that's I wish, a good one. I wish I could vote for her myself. I, I, I may vote. <laughs> I may her. drive to Arizona and cast a vote. Well, well, that was yeah. good I, I might go to a drop box and vote for her. I'll uh, <laughs> give it to a mule. Uh, oh, good night. Gosh, yeah. that's good. Hillary Clinton's mad at me. I'm not suicidal, and the brakes on my car are in good shape. That is fantastic. Man, that's good. Stuff. Uh, Arizona, let's go down to eight two. So uh, Arizona Latino Republican uh, is going is is talking uh, with Pete. You say is it? How you say his name? Hedge Seth. Hedge Seth. Hedge Seth. Hedge. It is. They're it's talking on. to Pete. They're mm-hmm. talking to Pete on, on Fox, Fox News. News. Pistol Pete. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they're just sitting. At, they're just Pistol. sitting at a booth, and they he starts talking about Latinos and and uh, how conservative they really are as far as their families. and Sure. Their, yeah. Well, the, the Latino population is going through what a lot of people in America have gone through. They they got pulled into this. The Democrats are the only people that care about people. Republicans hate everybody except themselves, and they'll kill you and murder mm-hmm. your children. We had a guy say that. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then finally the Latino people start looking at the way that the things they hold dear, uh, their mm-hmm. their character, morality, right. and they're like, you know what? I, I don't think we belong with these people. Yeah. Uh, the the way they see the world is not the way we as Latino people see the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, here here is a, um, a Republican in Arizona summing that up perfectly. What big issues are you talking about that are important to you, Pete? I'm part of Catholics for Carry. I'm part of uh, Latinos for Carry, and I'm part of Cops for Carry. On the cops for carry, I don't know one street cop, any line cop that's going for the Democrats with this whole defund the police nonsense. I got two sons that are working the streets right now, one in Kansas, one in in Phoenix. Night watch street cops, they, they took after me, after dad. Every line cop is voting for Kerry and the Republican Party because we want to fund our police. Number two, Latinos. In the Latino soul, we're conservative. We believe in faith, family, freedom, hard work. When you talk to any Hispanic and you line up the two platforms, they say, hey, I'm a Republican. Number three, on the Catholic side, so I got three hats. On the Catholic vote, the church has given us a criteria of five things called the five non-negotiables. Said, you cannot cross these lines. When you look at the Democrat and the Republican Party platform, The Republican Party platform is congruent with Catholic moral teaching on family and life. The Democrat Party violates all five non-negotiables. You cannot be a Catholic and a Democrat. And there you go. And and that's the— Tell your president. Well, that's right. Yeah. Uh, And the Speaker of the House. Uh, And others. Uh, Schumer, I mean, the list can go on and on. But um, but if you just listen to that— and I know he's talking about Hispanics, but it's really the same thing for people of faith in general. When people start talking about this and that, you go, well, look, when you sit down and look at the two platforms, certainly there's no perfection in all this because we're talking about fallen human beings. But when, but when I look at the platforms of the two parties, there's non-negotiables that the Democrats violate. So I guess I have to go the other way. And, and it's not perfection over here, but it's not where they are. Uh, you know, I, I can sleep better thinking I have not compromised uh, these principles that are dear to me with this party as much as I would have to compromise them to be with that party. That's really it. And 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 so uh, the, the, he summed that up pretty well. And I think you're seeing more and more Hispanics going, That's, I'm having a harder time justifying being here. And, and a, lot, a lot of people go through that. Um, so there you are. 
Uh, Joy Reid went on to say mm-hmm. that uh, if the Republicans keep teaching people words like inflation, she's going to consider that a microaggression. So no. watch out. Oh, yeah, I'm nice. sure. Oh, wow. There you go. There's another word we were taught. 15 minutes past. More Rick and Bubba coming up. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. There's a little boy with trust Jesus on his... You saw that flag, right? There's with the cross on it? That's a known white supremacist symbol. Yeah, so them going the around, flag. pushing their Christianity on people who aren't even necessarily Christian, their obsession with their holiday, their obsession with freedom of speech marks that they want to hurt people. All of you guys coming down here. This is uh, new for uh, this march for Patriot Prayer. Is, is and so the Patriot Prayer guy's talking. Now Antifa's going to go over there, and they've got some guys. Because over. they are more obsessed with their rights than they are the basic decencies that people deserve. All right, These people have a disdain for human rights. This day ain't a dead day. This ain't no funeral. This is a party for our Lord and Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Communism will win. Communism, like Communism will win. That will happen. It will win because we must go down to a single class society. Now, after capitalism, in its late stages as it is right now, we will move down to a one-class system called communism. Democratic and anarchist communism will be the ideology of the future. I'm right over here. Right, now you watch can this. Come and get me if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy just got hit by a truck. Uh, after, after dogging the Christians and saying we're all going to become communists, and and then one buddy, him, he got jacked up. Yeah, wanted a godless society. He didn't get run over. He got knocked up in the air. So so his buddies went over there, and he said he's going to go across the street so he could protest right at him and got hit by a truck. I bet he's glad there's a capitalistic hospital nearby. Yeah, we got to go Look, back to that. You mind? No, no. The, the, can we go so, back? so he, so he says, "I'm not. I did not laugh at that. I am. I am shocked. It was caught on video." Good <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> There's another angle. Yeah, and a different. One. I don't know where you I found it the other day. Just clicking, but basically, see, it skips to here. Oh, my gosh. Y'all, the statement before he gets hit, you can come get me if you want. I know you said that, but (laughs) I I think it's worth hearing again. Please listen. Everybody. The ideology of the future. I'm right over here. You can come and get me if you want. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, snap. (laughs) Listen, all all the the guys doing the marshal, you're just like, oh, man. Of the future. I'm right over here. You can come and get me if you want. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I tell you, he, he he knew a lot. He wanted a godless society, but even in his godless society, you got to look left, right, and left again. Yeah, yeah. you, you know, know what? I mean, yeah. just cause one lane stopped, both didn't. <laughs> but what had happened? Hey, that's gonna leave a mark. Yeah. The guys doing the march actually went up to him. Yeah. I mean, they weren't gonna fight him, but they went up to him to debate him, and those guys started backing up. And you know when you got that look on your face when you kind of anyway. So that guy moved across the road, the one with the speaker. Yeah. And this guy was going to run over with him. And while he's across the road, telling everybody to come over and get him, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And, and then his oh, buddy. Y'all. But there's another view that they actually come up to him and engage him. And then they, they're they basically trying to get away from him, even though they're, you know, they're not threatening him. Get me if you want. <laughs> oh, my goodness, y'all. I guess I'll be on related links the next right. half hour. Look, every now and then God shows his great sense of humor. Yeah, he does. He does. Yeah, he's just, yeah, he, just, he, he gave him a wake-up call. Mm-hmm. At least he didn't run over him. Yeah, and, right. and I, I know I think the guy lives, but, I mean, he tries to get up and can't get up. Yeah. And so his legs yeah, may be broke. I, I'm going to say that hip might be broke. Yeah, yeah, legs be broke. Yeah, here comes the medical thing. <laughs> now, now you hear them singing out. Now, that may have been before. I know, but it's great editing. I know. It makes it look like it goes back to that. <laughs> and it goes back to him laying there, and it goes back to him saying, hallelujah. Of course, some of them uh, some of them over there in that parade came over to, to make sure he was okay. Let's, you know. Yeah. I yeah. saw some of them right they over. They did. They did. But there was yeah, a the, moment, though, when. The editor when, was having a little fun. Yes, he that. was. Yeah. But there was a moment. After, now, first of all, <laughs> saying things like the, the cross is a racist symbol. Oh, and, yeah. Greg, uh, that was the Christian flag they were carrying. Yeah, right. He said it was a race Ooh, white wow. supremacy. Right, good. white supremacy. He, I think he's. I don't there think he, I've ever seen that one. But, well, oh yeah, they, they, <laughs> that's, the that's one of their normal lines. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, so, and we're all going to be in a godless communist society, and uh, wow. 
and then he decides to step out in the street and gets nailed by a he truck. Did, yeah. uh, Twenty-one minutes past the hour, the Rick and Bubba Show. We're back. Thank you for being with us. Well, Bubba, it looks like Mattress Mac has done it again. Mattress Mac has done it with the Astros World Series Championship to the tune of seventy-five million dollars in payout. Now, from what I'm reading, they think this may be the largest payout in sports betting in American history. They're right? saying historic, and you're right. They're checking to see if it is the big one. Now, this is the Texas furniture store owner who has – we've talked about um, a, a couple other times, and and he he just uh, – he, he, he goes all in. Uh, he pl- put down $10 million in bets on the Houston Astros to win the World Series – and he will he will get seventy five million back. He started with a three million dollar bet, then went back and added seven more to it. Mm. Mm. Uh, wow! And this is to cover his losses on the furniture he sold, uh, the three thousand right. dollars or more. Is that what it was? He's given. Is it half off? He's given everybody. If you buy three thousand yeah. dollars, it, it's it's half off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's using this winning to cover that. Yeah. Right. To promote his mattress business. Correct. Correct. Here he is uh, winning it. This this moment he realizes he gets it. Yeah! Wow. That was the big three-run shot, right? Yes, sir. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. And down comes the confetti, I think. So that's Mattress Mike? That's Jim McInvale is his name. They call him Matt. There he is. I wow. guess that's what. Don't lock him on the field. This. How old is he, by the way? Uh, old. I don't know how old he is. Though. Old enough, he ain't never going to spend seventy-five million dollars. I like the way he celebrates a yickety yak. I know. That. Yickety 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 yak. I thought that was the confetti moment, nah, but it yeah, was. It, it was, was a three-run It jack. was. That was did a th- you, did but you I'll tell you one the, thing. He knew it was over yeah, right he there. Did. did you love the little flashback to the milk carton days for the Astros on the side of his I jersey? Did. Did you know I, did. I did. Did their jerseys have that? Because I didn't see any. Yeah, it did. Yes, it did. did. I, I did. It did. His I, did. They did. I saw That's it. That's good. Because, of course, like you, it caught my eye. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we remember the old milk carton days. Yeah, that's good. That's back when they are in the National League. It's still strange to me they're in the American League. To me, they're not. <laughs> yeah, I know it. They do the same way. Yeah. So mattress smack, uh, he gets it done. Seventy-five million. How about that? What a business man. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. And lucky. Yes. Lucky. Uh, all right. So what was the other thing you were telling me? Rick, about? Uh, yeah. big study. Well, do you want share or do you want the the, um, the cannabis study here? Uh, cannabis. You know, don't they kind of go together? <laughs> I mean, yeah. 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 in a weird way. I mean, don't you? Don't you? Still, don't you have? Um, don't you have to be smoking dope to date share at 76? Yeah. Rick, big study. Okay. Big study on cannabis here. And this is going to be shocking results, okay? Mm-hmm. I want everybody to pay attention. Mm-hmm. Cannabis appears to be as bad or worse no. than tobacco No, far as heart problems yeah. when you smoke it. Man, really? Man. Who would have ever Cannabis thought that? was found to increase blood pressure it's and heart natural. rates like cigarettes. Scientists in Canada warn it could increase the risk of heart attacks Recreational cannabis is legal in 19 U.S. states, but remains illegal in the United Kingdom. Hmm. Um, Rick, I got an update here, and I'm not a research scientist. I'm not a doctor. No, you're not. Lungs are made for air, not smoke. I'll... It doesn't matter if it's tobacco smoke, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. cannabis smoke, uh, leaves in your yard smoke, mm-hmm. pine straw smoke. smoke. It's not good. Smoke is not good for lungs. Lungs want to breathe clean air. Yeah, yeah. inhaling smoke into your lungs, as you said, doesn't matter the source of the smoke. Doesn't matter if it's leaves you're burning in the yard, tobacco, cannabis, uh, Big Chief, the devil's lettuce, doesn't matter. It's bad for you. (laughs) Period. It is not the way to go. No. 
So, uh, so uh, cannabis, it looks like. You know, and, I've just saved mm-hmm. how much money, you think, right there? $100 million, yeah, you 100, think, in 100, studies? $100 mm-hmm. million. Dollars. It's all bad for you guys. Yeah. Smoke, lungs don't go together. There's really no part of the human anatomy that desires and needs smoke to work. Mm-mm. Just not there. No, smoke <laughs> machines are cool. Uh, but uh, real smoke it's, is not. It's not good for you to breathe it. Yeah. Now, that's water vapor. I don't know that that hurts you as yeah, much. Yeah, that's but. right. Uh, <laughs> so now, uh, we now to the share story. Which, well, Rick, she's timeless. She is, um, she is, she is a timeless. She is 76 years old. Mm-hmm. 76. She is confirming she is in a relationship with a new, uh, they're referring to him as a toy boy here in this story. Oh, my. 36 years old. As she brushes off the age gap and says he treats her like a queen. I bet he does. Yeah, he's probably treating her like the queen of England. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm 36. I know. You're yeah, dating wow. Cher at 76. How? That's me dating a 76-year-old. Mm. Um, Good-looking couple there. How old was Cher during the Sonny and Cher so- show? Was she like 15 or something? Uh, I mean, uh, what uh, uh, how old was I, she I, then? I do not know. <clears throat> I mean, she has been around for a long time. She has. Uh, I don't. I didn't. Now I'm mm-hmm. looking at stuff about this person, this 36 year old. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says he once dated Kanye West's ex, Amber Rose. I don't know who that is. You don't want to know. Okay. Um, <laughs> and and, um, and has a three year old son that, with Slash. No, that can't be right. What? A three year old son named Slash. Okay. Oh, bad. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got another story we got here. A story here. Slash Electric Alexander Edwards. All right. That 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 was some fans are concerned, Rick, w- about this new uh, new relationship and shares life. She says, "I'm in love, not blinded by it." Right. So everybody, she's kind of giving you the old mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers. Everybody be cool. Everybody well, be cool. You know what I say to her, her seventy six mm. year old self, forty the, year gap in their age. The same thing I said to these old men when they marry young women. <laughs> Good for them. If, if they if they if they can pull it off, she's only dating this guy. She's not married to him. But if they can pull it off, mm-hmm. you know, more power to the senior citizens. Yeah, she said, "Life has no number." Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> if I could turn back time, and, uh, I and a lot of, yeah. lot of, lot of I lot of was help. fifty when he was born. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's a pretty good share. That's a pretty good share. Yeah, Thank you. Man. Yeah. Well, and you know, you somebody cue it. up, Gypsy. What was the name of that song? Gypsy Tramps, Tramps and, and Thieves. thieves. Yeah. Gypsies, Tramps, Tramps and Thieves. I, I will tell. No, 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 no. I will tell you this: advantages for this young guy to be dating a seventy-six-year-old. You know how you always have to watch things that you, the girl in your life or the woman mm-hmm. in your life wants to watch. I mean, by by seven thirty, she's asleep. Yeah. And he can watch whatever he wants. That's yeah. A good point. You know what? And yeah. most ball games are just now getting started. Sure. Right. And she's asleep. She's gone. I mean, if she's not staying. I mean, she's still like outperforming, isn't she? Yeah. I, I'm sure. Shouldn't she like open up for the Rolling Stones? Oh yeah, there you go. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I don't mind that you're thirty. <laughs> <laughs> that was, was a cross between auto Cher team. and Bill Elvis. Auto team. <laughs> I was on TV in the '60s. <laughs> <laughs> That's so you good. Got it. <laughs> I'd like to see Speedy try it now. <laughs> There's a man with thousands. Miss Piggy. Yeah, Miss Piggy. You can do voices, just the wrong one. Yeah, oh, yeah. he has a voice. You're Kermit. <laughs> that's not <laughs> good. <laughs> oh my god! You got it, buddy. What's this thing? I was, I was trying to do that. Doesn't yeah, that's sound good. Like that's good. It's by the way, yeah, if you hit yourself, it hurts. <laughs> yeah, watch out. Do y'all realize how much money this guy's saving Man. on senior citizen discounts? Oh, I, know. Oh, I mean, yeah. when he goes dating her out, oh. I mean, she I mean he's, cost, get, he's getting ten percent off right off the top. She doesn't cost anything, and she, you know, she paid for that grill he's got in his mouth there. Sure. Why right. do people think that looks good? I don't understand why people think having diamonds in your teeth is good. Yeah, so you got yeah. diamonds in his teeth. Mm. From what I can see. Maybe he's just got braces because he's still an adolescent. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that could be it. I, I can't tell. He's got some kind of Invisalign something on there. Though. He does. We'll be back. 866, we be big. Uh, another story from the weekend involving Gary the Bulldozer Man. Uh, when we come back, more Rick and Bubba coming up right after this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
too late. I'm there's a kinda... capitalistic hospital nearby. Right. We also found out that when you hit your brakes, you don't stop immediately. You hear no. the brakes squeaking, but he can't get stopped in time. But he not. He went airborne, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 feet maybe. At least. All set when he quit rolling. Bub, I believe that falls under. That's going to leave a mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, exactly. don't, ooh, that hurt. That may leave a limp, Rick. Democratic and anarchist communism will be the ideology of the future. I'm right over here. You can come and get me if you want. <laughs> <laughs> See, he got left over by himself, and his buddies were away from him. He's trying to get over there with him. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bubba, do we want to talk about at all, or no, what you and I may do today? Or it looks like we're going. Well, to. Rick, do we can, want to talk about can, that? Can Can I talk about this this uh, this this gator footage and video of them frozen in the pond, which I think is amazing. I ne- I never knew. Wait this. a minute. So your response to me talking about you I and know. me hunting this afternoon? Where there'll be bodies of water is let's do an alligator story about how they survive in ice. Yeah, I and mean that's what you want to tell me right before we go. Well, the footage of this is just amazing, um, and, and it's a story uh, in the Charlotte Observer about alligators being frozen in the swamp. You know, they've had to, we had this big Arctic cold blast, and we've had you know teen degrees for several days in, in a lot of places. <laughs> And look, look, Rick, look at the alligator with his snout above the water Please frozen look at that. in there. Greg, have you seen this? Now, what the wildlife people are saying is this is the, something they have seen multiple times that the alligators apparently know the water is about to freeze and become solid, so they put their snout up above it so they can get air, and then they allow themselves to be frozen in the water under it. Please look at that. Because you, you wonder if I'm an animal that needs water, but I, I, I need to get up and get air, and everything freezes, how am I getting up and getting air? And they'll lock yeah, them. Yeah, but I'm froze now. Yeah, but they don't care about that. They can breathe. Well, they can, they can somehow hibernate to survive the winter and wait till the ice thaws out. But they have to have air, even hibernating, so they get their snout up above the ice so they get just a little bit of air in there, <laughs> and that's how they survive. Is that not wild? That's crazy. That's crazy right there. Come on. You know what? So there's another one doing it. I don't like that at all. Mm-mm. How does a cold-blooded like animal stay in water that cold? Well, I mean, it how does it? How does a cold-blooded animal survive? Uh, you know, just cold air in general. I well, mean, they normally they, hibernate, <laughs> don't they? Right. Well, that's but, what this. They say these I mean, gators are, are putting themselves into a hibernation form mode, of just, hibernation, just but, in the water. But they get their nose up above. Mm, I think that one made it. And Rick, I don't know. I don't know how cold the water gets. But, you know, they, they talk about Eskimos, and when you build a, uh, an igloo, it pretty much never gets below 32 inside the igloo, no matter how cold it is outside, because the ice is such a good insulator. So Do we still I, have I don't igloos? Know. Uh, yeah, the Eskimos. Well, if you're an Eskimo, is, you build Is there any Eskimo that says, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm anti the housing, I'm going back to the ice Eskimo. Well, they, I'm going back to the igloo. They've, they've fixed it up. I mean, I they, do, the, they do two levels now. Yeah. <laughs> igloo fixer upper. I've watched yeah. uh, the what is it, Alaskan State Troopers or something. They deal I with that every shows. now and then. I they, love those shows. They live in like shanty towns. Well, I haven't seen that. I'm, Greg, that's not always true. No, okay. I'm just saying a lot of them are. Bad to drink too. Greg, <laughs> Greg. I'm just saying from the show. I saw us on the show. Get a little rowdy. Not one igloo. I haven't seen an igloo yet. I haven't either. I think the igloo's outdated. I kind of like to go in an igloo. Now we build them in the yard for fun. I don't do play in them. I don't do igloos. How about this is a good time if you got uh, your gator numbers are a little higher or you don't know what they are. You can go out and count the snouts up above the frozen pond. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, that's one way to figure out how many. How about this? Bring some duct tape with you and get rid of some of them. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and mark them. Oh, grab right. an air. Grab an air. I don't think so. <laughs> that's one way to go. I, I think is. we've let the alligator population oh, get way out of hand. Out of complete you can't even drive on the interstate uh, in Florida without hitting one knocking right. front. They shouldn't front be alligators. They shouldn't be alligators in Birmingham, Alabama. We got them. I know. We got them. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we shouldn't have them. <laughs> I'm, I'm thumbs down on it. I'm anti. And I'm not talking about Florida fans. <laughs> no. <laughs> talking about the old gator. That's right. So I uh, go stomp through the water today. Great job, yeah, boy. And the water's warmed up a little bit today. We're going to be in a little warmer situation. Yeah, yeah. My it's wife, out. my wife, you know, it's so funny. Cause my wife tries to figure out what our deal is with hunting. Like the time I killed the biggest buck I've ever killed. And she says, why are you still going? <laughs> you're never going to see that deer again mm-hmm. in your That's lifetime. Something. I mean, what's the odds you ever get? Yeah, you never it, know. It, she, you, aren't you done? I said, no, it ain't about that. And so today she goes, so let me get this right. We have flu in the house. We're all on time of flu. And you, we're trying to make sure none of it, you, nobody else gets sick. And your answer to that is go sit out outside today for hours on end. 
And I said, yeah, but I'll be well insulated. Rick, did you tell her it's warmed up a little bit? I said, it's warmed up a little bit, and I won't be around all these germs. I, I think you getting out, being isolated is more important be than anything. Absolutely. It's helping the and family, you tell that you getting to, out. And you tell that to me when you're driving us home and I'm shaking. And a little cold air, right. you know, kill germs. And- <laughs> 35 minutes past the hour. MyPillow.com slash Bubba, now more than ever, even though we, none of us knew the word inflation until the Republicans taught it to us, uh, think we are, we're, uh, we're, we're so goofy we didn't really understand it, uh, according to Joy Reid. But um, yeah, I think we know what it means, uh, and we have used that word and understand it. Uh, and uh, that's the reason why uh, we really appreciate when people like Mike Lindell uh, take their company uh, and they, uh, they give us discounts. Uh, they say, hey, now more than ever, guys, uh, it, let, let's go out there and let's, let's help the American people uh, by dropping the price on our products to be uh, the, uh, more affordable than ever. Uh, and I'm talking about things like MyPillow Giza Dream Bed Sheets as low as thirty nine ninety eight. dollars uh, I'm talking about we have uh, My Sleepwear and Loungewear 80% off. Come on. Uh, hey, 80% off, uh, which is insane. Uh, down comforters, throw blankets, 50% off. Uh, bath towels, 50% off. Uh, hotel quality six-piece towel sets, 50% off. My slippers, $49.98. Uh, my sandals, uh, right now, $19.98. A lot more savings there, too. Why don't you go and check it out yourself? Just simply go to, um, uh, to mypillow.com slash Bubba. Mypillow.com slash Bubba. Great product. Start with a great company. And Boy, Lindell and the gang absolutely are. Uh, so um, we uh, we you know we we've been talking about the weekend and all the things that went on. We've got, we've had some great stuff. I hope if you missed it, uh, man, there's been some some gold today. Uh, and uh, we'll we'll talk to you by phone here in a minute and kind of recap everything we've been through. But um, one one story uh, still brewing uh, from um, from the um, the weekend happened last night. Um, hmm. it even seems it wasn't that long ago because I don't think it was, but, um, <laughs> it really wasn't. So if you've ever dealt with the outdoor concert format, uh, it's, it's, it's noisy. It, it's loud. Uh, you know, there were a fire, there was a firework show when I was in South Georgia last night doing this great event, uh, that was to follow. So there were places you couldn't stand or sit because they, they, you know, the firework companies require a certain amount of space. Yeah which is good. Uh, and you know, you've got a midway going, so there's rides, you know, and there's a bunch of, there's families and there's noise. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so, I mean, there's no way to really have a phone conversation if you're there where the bands are playing. And, and of course with me, I was emceeing the thing. So I'm going up and introducing people and reminding people of, you know, what's going on. And, and, you know, one thing I took a little grief from, from team man church, which I think you'll disagree with, they could not believe that I opened up the festival with my first words to the crowd. I told them where the bathrooms were. They go, "You led with the bathrooms." I said, "I got to tell you, if I'm here, if I'm here at this function, one of the first things I want to know is where the bathrooms are." Yeah, that's the very it, first thing. That you was said? my first. I, look, and I'm telling you, I hey, could. How say, you doing? Did you have a I joke with it, or did you just kind of? <laughs> I said, "Let's go ahead and get this out of the way right out of the gate." Let me tell you where the bathrooms are. And it got a, it got a big laugh, but also you can see a lot of deads going. Darn right, I want to know where they are. And uh, so I, I and I, okay. I, t- I took Lady a little gets with it. okay. I, I took yeah. a little heat for that. Let, and I said, I'll tell you one thing. I'll try to picture myself in this crowd, and I picture me over here at the midway with all the rides with my kids. No, and I know I what you pictured, and that is that you normally stop listening to what somebody's saying. So you acted like you were out there. And you needed it first because you're going to stop listening to what somebody has to say. I spoke to the, the me's in the audience. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. So anyway, so so which means I'm I'm really kind of tied up. There's really no way for me to be in any kind of conversations or anything like that on right. the phone. Um. So so I'm 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 sitting there and I'm, I'm I got the next group on the stage and I went back over to the man church <coughs> man church tent and I'm sitting back there with team man church guys and the guys from Central Baptist Church, and we're talking. And, and I look down, and, you know, we're having to talk pretty loud because, I mean, there's a band playing. Uh, and I look down, and I see, and here's, here's the time right here, 5.03, okay, <laughs> uh, which, um, hi, and this is, of course, 6 in Georgia. Hi, call me. 
And I thought, well, that Gary does that. I'm not going to pay attention to he that. He doesn't know what I'm doing, yeah. And then, then all of a sudden, hey, can you call me? And so I put back negative. I'm at an outdoor concert, and it's getting close to the time I'm actually going to do the message. I'm in South Georgia. Uh, I don't think you could. I could hear you. Do you need me? Is this important? My only, if it's if it's important, I can go to this building where the bathrooms are, by the way, <laughs> and I can get off in there somewhere where I can hear you, but I don't have much time. Meaning, it's going to be difficult for me to make the track to this building, and it really should. Uh, that should only happen. If this is something, yeah, is this an emergency? It needs That's my, the bottom line. Me, means my intention. Mm-hmm. Reply. Hey, this is pretty important. You need to call me. Oh. So I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, okay. Pretty so, important. So, so I'm thinking, all right. I haven't heard from <clears throat> Sherry, so it doesn't involve my family. Th- this involves something either in Gary's family. Yeah. You know, uh, this involves. I'm. I'm even thinking to myself, it can't really be anything. Far more, you know, because I don't think it warrants me leaving this scene. I've just told him, yeah, I mean, I could wait till tomorrow, or even I could call you on my way to the to the airport. You know, all this kind of stuff. And so I throw that. Could I just call you on the way to the airport? Hey, you, if you hey, if you can get in that building, call me. Oh, I'm like, oh wow! Man. So now I'm on the move. Yeah. No. So uh, so I get in there, and I'm thinking, oh lord. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I there. mean, I got to. <laughs> You know, I'm talking to myself as I walk the whole field and up the steps into the building you know, where the church is. Mm. Um, pretty good track. No wonder you said where the bathrooms were. Yeah, pretty good track. And uh, I mean, you got you got to be serious about steps. I mean, it's it's up a hill because <laughs> oh, what the, no. well with their field. I is, mean, that's a lot of a lot of effort to make a phone picture, call. Picture picture the the church is up on a hill, and then they did a terrace down to a flat big area where now they've got everything set up. So to get up to the building, you're you're going up steps like you're going to somebody's lake house. Right. You know how you see yeah, these lake yeah, houses yeah. that are sitting up there, and you got to go up a bunch of steps to get up there. Mm-hmm. So, but down here is the gotta level. You got to commit. You got to commit. So so I go. Well, I mean, my goodness, Gary needs me, and uh, so <laughs> I, I go up there and uh, call him. Hey. Hey, Gary. What you doing? Yeah, I, I've already I already told you what I'm doing. Um, what, what, I'm at an event. I, I, what are you doing? I, th- I thought you I thought you just more. Hey, think we got a poacher? And I'm like, immediately I'm thinking this is not a yeah. No, this, this could have waited until today. This could have waited until the, 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 the <laughs> Hey, this makes me so mad. I could spit. Uh, yeah, I, I understand, Gary. I don't like that either. But but I mean, it's not good. You believe that? You know, I said, Gary. Gary, I don't take Gary off speaker. Uh, and I said, I said, I said, I said uh, Gary, uh, that's not good. And, hey, just, I mean, just cut the head off of it. Huh? Left it laying out here. And I'm like, Gary, I, I, I man, that's, I, I do hate that. That's, that's my, hey, hey, you believe that? No, I mean, I don't like that. I, I am upset about it, Gary, but I, I'm not sure. The, you found a headless deer. Is yeah, that what you're saying? Yeah, I, but I'm not sure that the and that's not good. You don't like that. No, you, no. You, 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 I mean, you well, want, it's illegal. You're right. You're right. You, want, you want to persecute, uh, prosecute these people to the full extent of the law and you all do, that. You do. But I don't know if, if that, it, that, that, that this is no, quite. Really, nah. I don't know that this is quite the level of of pulling me away from an outdoor concert for me to go up a hill into yeah. a building right. to call you to, yeah. to, to because I think you're in desperate trouble, you know, or something like yeah. that. And I appreciate his commitment to this, and he does have a commitment to it. No. I mean, you know, and I, I will warn all, he has a real commitment to this. Yeah. And I love that. I appreciate yeah. that. Right. That's very kind of him to 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 consider himself the security force that we need. Mm-hmm. And and he's our, and, you know, and, and that's, man, that's good. And, and, uh, and, but, but the bigger story is, does that, is that, does that it, call it's me? It's different if you're watching right, right, yeah. football on a Sunday afternoon. Right, right, right. Do y'all do y'all think this is a uh, go up the building, come inside, and call me? Well, I mean, no, I mean it's, 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 it's it's borderline, right? It's yeah, borderline. Right. Maybe you, maybe a call after you got done. Now, if he had the guy right. pinned against the car, maybe. Yeah, right. You know, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I was, I was like, if he had and, him tied and, up in the right, barn, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Questioning. right, yeah. And, and and that you know, waterboarding him, yeah, right? Sure. Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. But but how about this? I appreciate Gary. I appreciate Gary's passion. Of course, uh, you I, want that person fighting for you. Yeah, none yeah. of us like to spend the money we spend and work as hard as we work. And 
and people won't follow laws. None of us like that. No, we're all wondering how big the deer was. <clears throat> well, every one of us. Sure, sure. Well, I, I will admit, when the when the game pitchers came in on the way to the plane, I checked them, and oh. I was able to say, okay, he made it, because yeah. I looked at the time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because uh-huh. he's moving like right now, you yeah. know, and all that. But, um, but you know, it, it's not good. I didn't like it. No. Probably we could have worked on that today. Yeah. You know, and and, uh, and clearly it could have been a drive. You know, in the, in the truck on the now, way to the airport. It could you know, be I mean, Bigfoot, yeah. too. Yeah, right. Well, that's yeah. true. Or Grizzly. Hey. Or Gary could have killed it, and now <laughs> he's trying to act like he's doing you a favor. <laughs> that's possible. <laughs> so I do think uh, I do think the neighbors for getting in touch with Gary. That was good. Like all that. Oh, okay. Appreciate that. Oh, really? Yeah, they, 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 they found it, and they alerted Gary, which that's good. That's what we should yeah. do. And uh, so, wow. uh, so you got a poacher. Well, and, uh, you know, they're, they're unfortunately an unfortunate part of a fallen creation. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Talked about it. All right, if yeah. I go down. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Who's driving today? I'm driving usually, unless I get where I can no longer drive. Yeah, Rick has to drive. <laughs> Whenever I'm I, a, I well, there was a debate if we'd take two vehicles or not. Can't nobody, can't nobody I'll go get, to sleep if I don't drive. If I'm driving, I'm fine. Yeah, well, you but, used to ask me. You think um, you could put one of them fake steering wheels over there like you do for a little kid? <laughs> well, so I can yeah. Turn the wheel yeah. and keep me awake. Well, man. another thing is this. I don't mind if you sleep too. We're going to a location that I go to more than him. And and I you know, hey now where is it? Now where we get off on here? Where we, you know, I'd oh, rather I just be the guy driving. I know where it turns. I just rather be driving. I do remember him asking if I was okay driving back from Titans games, and before I could answer him, he was snoring again. Right. Yeah. Well, well I can he'll, he'll he'll carry on, on the conversation now. and snoring. Are hey, you okay? He'll check on you every now and then. <laughs> yeah. When I wake Rick up. And Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Go to Denise, in the great state of Tennessee. Denise, welcome to the Rick and Bubba well, Show. How are you? I'm great, but listen, I, I have just a small complaint. Okay. <laughs> okay. You all are not talking to that weatherman enough. James, James Spann? James. Oh, good gravy, y'all. Does he not have the sexiest voice in America? Oh, so James Spann turns it up a little bit when you're on, when you're listening? He makes my bugs bot. Oh, oh a bug bot. Denise, I do you tell him that. do you get to see him on TV any, or no, is it just here I on the don't, show? No, I don't because see, we live in a cabin in the woods, and I don't even have internet up here. That's so what out. I have is my phone, and I have my radio. So I well, don't know what he looks like, but it don't matter, honey. All he has to do is talk. Well, Denise, I'll tell you this: you could not stand a tornado warning here in town. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. When he when he slips that jacket it, it off and it's suspenders warning. only. In yeah. front of that yeah. Mac computer, yeah. he's rolling around. Denise, it's one thing to hear him talk about a cold front, but that's nothing. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me when see, he I screams, so take cover. Because I told my husband, I said, he was talking, I said, hush, hush, the weather is on. And he goes, when did you care start caring about the weather? <laughs> uh-uh. So there's something about the way James talks uh, makes those bugs oh, bite. Honey. Honey, I'm telling you, those bugs are biting. Well, yeah. uh, Denise, I hate, to, I, I, hate to, I hate to say this, but James yeah. does have a great voice, and I'm sure it moves many, but could it also many. be that what you described, that you live in a cabin in the woods with no internet <laughs> yeah. and, and, and no and, and, and no That's TV? True, right? I mean, yeah, you know, that could be a true story. <laughs> I, I'm a very lonely, cabin-ridden housewife. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, look, we're going to pass know, it. There's a lot of deer and turkey and um, coons and stuff running around, but... They don't sound like old James, I'm telling well, you. Well, <laughs> did you, did you oh say, so you don't have any internet. I was going to tell you to you there because we got some YouTube videos you I, need to I go watch. I don't watch. have internet. I did when we lived uh, down in town, but we moved up here. And, um, man, I really do love it. I understand where y'all are coming from about the woods and the quiet. Love it. Um, yeah. It's just, you know, it's off of a dirt road. Yeah. And I love it. Uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's, I'm pretty isolated. But but I like it. I got my shotgun. I got my thirty eight. I'm good to go. I'm not worried. How about this? Somebody make a note. When James is on next time, we get him to say something special yeah. to Denise. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Please do. Done. Denise, maybe you should uh, get with your husband there and teach him some weather terms. Yeah. Let's say he's not here right now. <laughs> Yeah, well, that or but, buy him some when he that ain't nothing a green screen can't solve. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, 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 yeah, I'm telling you. What, just get him, to, get him to say, well, get well, him to say cold front over and over. <laughs> yeah, well, look, let me tell you something. How about this? Have him come in tonight and say, "Do we have our severe weather plan?" <laughs> oh, wow. hey, well, I'm just I trying know. to help. Oh man, I'm telling you, 
telling you. I thank y'all for talking thank to you, me. Thank you, Denise. And, and, and please do try to talk to James about me, would you? I will. Okay, thank you. You, you, well, you can count on you. We okay. definitely will. Okay. Right. We definitely will. I tell you what, and, and I'm with you. I'm with you, Bob. It's one thing to hear him do the seven day forecast. Maybe a cold front here or there, but it's where when, he really when he shines. takes that jacket off and yeah. says, "Listen up, folks. Yeah, uh, take cover at so and so crossroads." I don't think Denise could That's, take him in tornado weather. No, no, because I mean he's up there for hours, no one ends. Oh so. yeah. And and, yeah. and and when he when he starts talking about the radar, Rick, I know, and he drops it. Colors. He drops it about half an octave. Yeah, yeah. A little passion in there. He starts talking about vortexes and oh, all that. Don't even start that. No, that's not even right. Then one of the one of the things that it kind of gets to me is when he's talking about the debris cloud. You know, that's that's I really listen to that. Oh uh, yeah, I mean that's interesting. <laughs> all right, all right. What is he? What is he doing? He's up to something. I think he's. All right, we're, <laughs> we're gonna try to get a hold of him. Okay. Well, how about Susan? Susan and Destin. Susan. Susan, welcome to the program. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. We're great. Good. Thanks for calling. Yeah, I just I just had to call because I heard someone talking about my uh, crush, James. Ten minutes to the top of the hour, the Rick and Bubba Show. Eight six six, we be big is the number. All ten lines are available. Let's go. Your time on the program. Make a comment, ask a question, bring information to the table. Not designed for meaningless shout-outs or shameless plugs. Don't call us, child. We'll call you. At the end of 30 seconds, the buzzer will sound. Your time on the program comes to a close, and then we move uh, to the next caller, which means you will not have to stay in line very long. So if you move right now, you will get in. Bubba, this, uh, the one thing we didn't get is this Paul Pelosi story continues to be odd. Uh, an NBC reporter tried to report some of the oddities uh, that the police were talking about when they arrived at the home, and NBC pulled their own reporter's story. Uh, yeah, from, it's from, very, it's from, very yeah, strange it was because really weird. We, we had the initial report. Then we had a lot of these fringe reports coming out. And, and one of the things, Rick, we've always cautioned those on the right, let's not become like those on the no, right. No, let's not. Yeah. So a lot of that was unproven and, you know, And we didn't want to speculate and, on it. Right, and all this. So we, we really didn't even go down that road. Yep. Well, mm-hmm. then you have this come out. Right. And it seems very strange that NBC mm-hmm. had a story and pulled it. Yeah, they, they almost um, suggested when they got there everything was kind of calm and that the attacker and, and Mr. Pelosi – were cordial, and then the attacker attacked him while the police was there. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what we'd heard, too, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and that seemed very strange. Right. You know, there's just a lot of strange stories going on right now. Yeah, and, and so. Uh, what, is, this a, is this a. This uh, is this is what NBC pulled after okay. it, it aired. They okay. pulled it. Let's see what they said. <clears throat> this morning, Paul Pelosi is home, back at the house that became a crime scene a week ago today. NBC News learning new details about the moments police arrived. Sources familiar with what unfolded in the Pelosi residence now revealing when officers responded to the high priority call, they were seemingly unaware they'd been called to the home of the Speaker of the House. After a knock and announce, the front door was opened by Mr. Pelosi. The 82-year-old did not immediately declare an emergency or tried to leave his home, but instead began walking several feet back into the foyer toward the assailant and away from police. It's unclear if the 82-year-old was already injured or what his mental state was, say sources. According to court documents, when the officer asked what was going on, defendant smiled and and said everything's good. But instantaneously, a struggle ensued as police clearly saw David DePap strike Paul Pelosi in the head with a hammer. After tackling the suspect, officers rushed to Mr. Pelosi, who was lying in a pool of blood. What we do know is he brutally attacked Mr. Pelosi and attempted to kill him. After spending several days in the ICU, Pelosi, who is recovering from a fractured skull and serious injuries to his arm and hand, is now home where Capitol Police remain on alert. Investigators have previously said Pelosi did not know DePap when the 42-year-old broke into his home. 
why Pelosi didn't try to flee or tell responding officers he was in distress is unclear. Fear takes over. Fear freezes people. This morning, the 82-year-old lucky to be alive after an intruder nearly killed him in his own home. Law enforcement, tell, law enforcement officials tell us the bottom line here is this was a terrifying situation. Yeah. And it's so, so anyway, I mean. Now, why, why would they pull I, that? I, I really don't I, know because I, I, I think he still. I think he told both sides of the story and said, look, even though Pelosi was acting odd for someone mm -hmm. being attacked or somebody that had an intruder in his house, he may have been injured at that point already. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. just might have been like. In, in, right. Shook up. Shook up. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why they would pull that. I don't think that's a story that's huh. doing anything other than reporting the facts. Yeah, it's, it's just like they re, they, re, they they retracted the um, the story that fuel it's fueling conspiracy theories that he calmly opened the door like it, there wasn't right. a problem, but or but, whatever. but then I think they kind of answered that and said, "Look, he might have already been injured. He might have <clears throat> right. been out of his mind. He might yeah. not have been thinking clearly. He might have yeah. been froze froze with fear." Right. Uh, Tim in Georgia, thirty seconds on the phone trail. Tim, go ahead. Good morning. Two hey. things. One, Nancy did it. Number two. Um, I have to tell you this because my wife doesn't listen to me when I say random things like this, but I was born in 1980, mm -hmm. and I always thought of Michael Jackson as just being the <laughs> guy, but YouTube took me back to 1971, and I got to say for anybody that thinks the same way about Michael Jackson as I do, Jackson 5, Little Michael, one of the best singers that ever lived, and if you discounted him, you need to give him a chance. There's no doubt about that. Oh yeah. How the the talent that Michael Jackson had is take all the weird stuff away. Right. Even as a kid, his talent was oh, yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah. And oh, the Jackson we, Five is one of the coolest entertainment productions you'll ever see. Yeah, we used to have the cartoon on on Saturday morning. You had the Osmonds and the Jackson Five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeremy and Jasper. Jeremy, thirty seconds. Go and ahead. Globe Trotters. Yeah. Absolutely. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hey, fr this past Friday I was out and went and stopped by and saw Greg at Hendrix. Oh, yeah. And I got to thinking, you know, the, you guys are always busy. You stay busy. He took time out to say hello and greet me, whatnot. But, hey, what a better way to start your Friday. Listen to the Rick and Bubba show, eat breakfast, to go by, eat lunch with Greg, and, hey, you can drive away with a car. How much better can it get? It doesn't get any God, better. You do. You'll have to do it that. don't Thank get you, no better. You know what? That's America right there. Yeah, I had somebody. That's America. Yeah, that's good why, to see you, Jeremy. That's why promoting was good. I literally had someone email said, I heard you said I could go by and eat lunch with Greg. Where's that? And I told them, and, and people were like, well, we love it. <laughs> what a, a kick off your Rick and Bubba weekend by meeting Greg and having <laughs> pizza? Uh, Good pizza, too. Gary in Prattville, <laughs> I-92. Gary, hey, go ahead. It. Hey, guys, great show as always. God bless y'all. Hey, did, did y'all hear that uh, Elon Musk uh, b uh, suspended Kathy Griffin's Twitter account because uh, he was supposedly doing a parody of him, and then uh, he came out and said, well, she was doing a parody of supposedly comedy and just roasted her. Yeah. He's having a blast. Uh, part of the new policy is that if you're going to imitate somebody, you are or act like you are them on Twitter. You have to declare it a parody. Okay, that's part yeah. of the new rules. Right. Yeah. And she was not doing that, and that's where she got in trouble. Vivian in Lakeview, thirty seconds. Vivian, go ahead. Hi, this is Vivian Hunter. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. And I want to ask people in the state of Alabama to vote yes on Amendment Nine tomorrow to help us reduce our sewer rate from 126 and they're planning to go up to 146 in february we have no control over a private sewer owner and the uh a wow so uh, vivian I, 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 greg by the way you realize that that is pastor hunter's wife i think Really? Yeah, we went to Meadowbrook. Well, how about that? Yeah, uh, uh, I could be wrong, but I think it is. Uh, but yeah, I I, uh, I don't know anything about that amendment. I'm uh, kind of out of the amendment loop I right am now. As well. I need to study on that today before I go to vote tomorrow. Yeah, right. Uh, so can you uh, vote before we come to work? Do y'all know mm -hmm. what time they open? Uh, probably not. They're no. not open at four thirty. No, no unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. It's tough to get poll workers. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, yeah, I, I got a pretty busy day tomorrow. I don't know if I'll be voting or not, but. Um, Rick, got you to start that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to work I better it see in. a picture with a sticker on there that says I voted. Oh, wow. Dawson doesn't agree. 
All right, so uh, <laughs> the uh, all right, well, I'm just you can't at, read your text out loud. <laughs> right. uh, top of the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.